Before my grandpa passed away, he left me a savings of 300 billion, but he didn't tell me where he hid it before he passed away, so I went back home and turned the place upside down. In the end, all I found was a broken wash basin. Grandpa once said this is a family heirloom, always kept in the basement, off limits to anyone. I casually put $5,000 in it. But to my surprise, while I took a sip of water, the $5,000 turned into $10,000, and a few minutes later, it became over $1 million. I was dumbfounded. If it can be duplicated infinitely, won't I become rich? But then I suddenly realized, all the bills had the same serial number. If I deposit them in the bank, I will definitely get caught. Watching the duplicated one million turn into worthless paper, I felt a pang of regret. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Brother Black Tiger shouted from outside, Open the door now. It's been so long, and you still haven't paid back the money. Hearing that voice, my heart sank. I once borrowed 10,000 from him to buy a phone for my girlfriend. I never expected that after a year, the loan would have ballooned to over 10,000. Looking through the peephole, I saw three people standing behind him. I knew that if I didn't pay today, I would be beaten up again. As soon as I opened the door, Black Tiger grabbed my neck and said, Where did you put the money, you punk? If you don't pay me back 200,000 today, don't even think about leaving this place. I was choked and couldn't speak, stuttering to Black Tiger, Didn't I owe you 160,000? Black Tiger chuckled, There are four of us today, each person needs to pay a $10,000 delivery fee. Isn't that excessive? I shook my head, desperately searching my pockets, and found only $5,000. Give me three days, I will definitely pay you back. Black Tiger slapped me directly across the face and said, You still dare to talk about three days? It's been a year since last year, and I haven't seen a single cent from you. I only felt the burning sensation on my face and dared not speak. But unexpectedly, the next moment, Black Tiger suddenly saw the mountain of cash on the table. He grabbed my collar and said, Didn't you say you had no money, then what the hell is this? It was only then that I remembered that I had just copied one. 28 million but the serial numbers were all the same, so I couldn't spend it. But then I thought, since I couldn't spend this money, why not just give it all to them? Immediately, I shrugged off Black Tiger's arm, wearing a flattering expression as if I had just been joking with Black Tiger. My dad just sold the house, and this money is from the sale of the house. Seeing so much money, Black Tiger suddenly felt a little envious, and he suddenly changed his tune, saying, so that's how it is. According to our contract, you're already one day overdue, so now I have to charge an additional $50,000 handling fee. I chuckled and said, Black Tiger, you're too kind. You've taken good care of me this past year. Apart from the principal, I'll consider this money as a token of gratitude. From now on, our debts are settled. What do you think? Hey who looked at me and asked, are you telling the truth? I wondered if he would slap himself silly. I nodded affirmatively, absolutely true. Even if I had 10 times the courage, I wouldn't dare play tricks on brother Hey Who. Hey who thought for a moment and agreed, patting my shoulder, I knew I was right about you. If you ever need money again in the future, come to me. I'll lend it to you at the lowest interest rate. After saying this, he tore up the IOU in front of me. In my heart, I sneered, in the future, do I still need to borrow money from you? With this windfall, even the banks will come to me for loans. As for Hey who, the police will take care of him in due time. Hey who left happily with the money, feeling as pleased as punch finally met a fool who gave away their own demolition compensation. As soon as he left, I took out a lighter and burned all the torn IOUs. But then I started to feel a headache. I couldn't figure out what to forge next. Then I opened my phone to check the information on rare metals. Currently, about 160,000 tons of gold have been mined worldwide. If I get a few hundred pounds, wouldn't it be like throwing a pebble into the sea? I decided to take action, so I brought $5,000 and went to the gold shop. They have a valid license and also support gold recycling. Before I could even speak, the salesperson at the front desk stopped me and told me to get lost, saying I couldn't afford anything here. I was dumbfounded. They're open in broad daylight, yet they don't want to do business? Then I looked up and suddenly realized that the salesperson was actually my crush's close friend. In the past, I would have turned and left, but now I have my own treasure bowl. What do I have to be afraid of? But unexpectedly, Joe Ng didn't even give me a chance to speak. She just pulled me and kicked me out. Just then, a middle-aged man walked out from behind. He was the owner of this gold shop. I came to settle accounts today and coincidentally found the two of us causing a scene here. Seeing this, Zhou Ying felt she had found support and directly told Yang Datong that I was a beggar. In the past, to save face, I lent money to my friend at high interest to buy a phone. Who knew she wouldn't pay it back, and it ended up causing a scene at school. This guy must be here to steal from us. 
First, I'm called a beggar, and now a thief. I can't be bothered to argue. Back in school, Zhou Ying caused a lot of trouble for me. Yang Datong isn't as casual in judging people as Zhou Ying. After all, there's surveillance in all the gold shops now. Robbery is a death wish, isn't it? I pointed to a gold bar on the counter and told Yang Datong that I wanted to buy that one. When Zhou Ying heard that I wanted to buy a gold bar, she couldn't help but mock me, asking if I had paid off the high interest loan. This isn't like iron, where you can buy a few dollars per pound of gold. It's all calculated by the gram, right? I raised my eyebrows and turned my gaze back to Yang Datong, asking, Boss, do you do business? Yang Datong also felt that Zhou Ying's attitude was problematic. If I had come to cause trouble, that would be fine. But if I came to buy something in earnest, wouldn't it ruin your reputation? Without waiting for the boss to speak, Zhou Ying directly said, Just roll, for the sake of our old friendship, I don't want to embarrass you too much. Just as she was feeling suffocated by her own behavior, I directly pulled out a wad of money and placed it on the counter, saying, I'll buy that 10 gram gold bar with cash. When the cash hit the table, Zhou Ying was dumbfounded. In our class group, didn't someone take a picture of him scavenging for junk? How could he have so much money now? Thinking of this, she quickly closed her mouth. At the same time, Yang Datong also breathed a sigh of relief. I didn't say a word or leave just now. He even thought I was a big customer who was keeping a low profile. As soon as I slapped the cash on the counter, he breathed a sigh of relief. After all, this gold bar is just a financial product. He didn't expect to sell it at all, so the boss immediately said, this 999 pure gold is 408 per gram. This 10 gram gold bar is a total of 4080. I took the gold bar in my hand, feeling quite pleased, and directly took out 41 large bills and threw them to Yang Datong. Then I took the order and glanced at Zhou Ying next to me, not taking him seriously at all. Zhou Ying didn't take me seriously either. In his eyes, I'm just a loser. I had to save face and suffer to buy a gold bar for a dollar. I thought I would sell it later, but to my surprise, after I received the gold bar, I leaned on the counter and said to Yang Datong, you support repurchase here, right? Yang Datong said that's right, but the repurchase price is the daily gold price minus 10. Young man, you can also go to the bank for repurchase. The gold here all comes with certificates. I knew he had misunderstood me, so I shook my head and said, I'm not trying to sell this one. I'm asking if Mr. Young buys gold. I have some goods in my hands. In the eyes of Yang Datong, a businessman, the amount of gold and having some goods are two different concepts. He suddenly became interested, thinking he had misunderstood, and quickly said, Young man, how much goods do you have? I smiled and said, I have several tens of caddies. 999 pure gold is easy to test. I can't make a price, I just don't know if Mr. Yang can handle it. I said it very casually, not taking several tens of caddies seriously at all. But on the other side, Zhou Ying couldn't help but burst into laughter. Has your brain been pinched, kid? Do you know how much money several tens of caddies of gold are worth? I'm afraid you've never seen so much money in your life. Taking a lesson from the past, Yang Datong immediately stopped Zhou Ying. You shut up right now. Who taught you to talk to customers like that? Zhou Ying continued, Boss, he's really a miser. Is he just trying to make fun of you? Seeing this, Yang Datong stared at Zhou Ying and gestured for her to shut up quickly. He scolded and said, if it weren't for the fact that Black Tiger introduced you, I would kick you out right now. I waved my hand, indicating that I didn't care. I don't want to lower myself to the level of inferior people. Mr. Yang said, you're too kind. Let's go to my office, have some tea, and chat. I nodded in agreement. After all, once I get through this, I won't have just a few thousand dollars, but tens of millions. As soon as my grandfather entered the picture, I set off ten strings of firecrackers to celebrate. While tidying up, I found a basin that could duplicate items. If you put $100 in it, after a few minutes, it will duplicate into thousands. But the duplicated money has the same serial number. So after hesitating for a long time, I went to a gold shop, spent over $4,000 to buy 10 grams of gold, and then prepared to talk to the boss about gold recycling business. As soon as I sat down, the boss got straight to the point, you just mentioned having tens of pounds of gold. Are you kidding? I nodded in confirmation and said, of course not. I just don't know if Mr. Yang can handle these tens of pounds. Mr. Yang looked me up and down. He found that I was not at all intimidated, as if the victory was already mine. If it's really 999 pure gold, I'll buy it for $350 per gram, as much as you have. I'll buy it at $350 per gram, as much as you have. I laughed after hearing that, stood up, and left. Even though I have the basin, I don't need this little amount. But being too casual would make me seem eager to make a deal. 
Upon seeing the situation, Yang Datong immediately followed and said, 375 per gram, no more. My originally stiff face instantly turned into a smile, and I politely extended my hand to indicate a pleasant cooperation. At this time, Zhou Ying was still puzzled behind the counter, then she saw Yang Datong and me walking out, chatting and laughing. Yang Datong waved his hand and said to him, hurry up, register Mr. Aiken quickly. From now on, he is a diamond member here. As soon as this was said, Zhou Ying was dumbfounded, boss, are you sure? Diamond members need to spend 10 million. Before the words were finished, Yang Datong interrupted. Tomorrow, Mr. Aiken is going to complete a big deal with me, and this diamond card is my sincerity. After speaking, he turned to me, indicating that despite my young age, we are members of the Zhang Hai Jade Association. With this card, you will be eligible to participate in the annual exchange. I thought that this thing would be of no use, and I was about to refuse. Then I heard Zhou Ying saying, Boss, don't be fooled. This guy couldn't possibly have so much gold. Even if it's tomorrow's deal, he is deceiving you. It's better to give a diamond card to a dog than to him. This time, not only me, even Yang Datong's face twisted. He began to regret agreeing with Hei Hu at the dinner table to let him work. He really didn't understand any rules. Fortunately, I didn't plan to argue with her. Zhou Ying, with a smud look, said, You can continue to pretend, but this is not school, it's the society. Who is Boss Yang? If you mess with him, you won't even know how you die. I wasn't planning to argue with this crazy woman, but this guy is really bullying people. I immediately said, in that case, I don't want the diamond card. As soon as I finished speaking, Yang Datong stood up. Mr. Aiken, please don't accept it. I chuckled and said, no need. Your staff doesn't know the rules, I'll teach him. Then I turned to Zhou Ying and said, listen carefully. Tomorrow, I will bring 50 pounds of gold. As long as the transaction is successful, you will give me the diamond card on your knees. Zhou Ying thought I must be crazy. 50 pounds of gold is worth millions in transactions. This boast has already been blown to the sky. He absolutely doesn't believe I have this capital. Yang Datong, who was standing aside, did not stop this farce because when we were inside, he didn't get me to talk about the goods. If this Yi Chin is really here to find trouble, then I wouldn't mind breaking both his arms. I turned and walked out of the gold shop. Just to be safe, I don't plan to make an exact copy. So I have to find a way to dissolve the gold. I was busy with it until the afternoon, and I didn't even feel it because after tonight, I would be on the road to becoming the richest. In the evening, I carefully took out the hidden basin, and then put the gold bar I bought from Yang Datong into it. The basin immediately started to burst like a hot pan of fried beans, crackling and popping. Soon, a basin of gold was placed in front of me, and it was still slowly moving outwards. I weighed all the copied gold once, but due to an oversight, the density of gold was mistakenly multiplied by 183 and if converted to cash, it would be over 30 million. Next, I swallowed hard, then used a blowtorch to burn it all into liquid gold. After cooling the gold I was going to sell tomorrow, I got 15 million, and each million weighed about 3. 8 gene of gold bricks. After doing all this, I stuffed them all into the suitcase the next day and then took a taxi to the gold shop. At first glance, I'm just an unsophisticated country bumpkin, but inside my suitcase is millions worth of gold. In the gold shop, Zhou Ying also got up early, although she was reluctant to come in early. But Yang Datong said he wanted to prepare for today's transaction, and even contacted the appraiser in advance. In Zhou Ying's eyes, all this was just a waste of time. He didn't believe I could complete the transaction today, and I might not even show up. So he immediately opened the class group to prepare to ridicule me. When those classmates found out about this, they all thought I was crazy. After all, tens of gene of gold is no small amount, something most people wouldn't even dream of. I was in the car when suddenly I felt a vibration in my pocket. When I checked, I received messages from classmates mocking me. I looked at this group of poor people and felt a little pitiful, so I casually sent a $200 red envelope. However, it had to be accompanied by the phrase I am a mad dog to be claimed. But unexpectedly, as soon as I sent it, a young man named Jiang Yang instantly claimed it. Another person said, are you crazy? A mad dog wouldn't even give one cent, yet you sold your soul for one cent. It's really shameful to be associated with you. In the next moment, Jiang Yang posted a screenshot clearly showing that he claimed the $200 red envelope. This completely set off chaos in the group. Those who were just watching started to get involved. Chen Gu said proudly, bring it on. Zhou Ying said, this is a show-off, pretending to be rich. I guess what I just sent was his monthly food expenses. Seeing this, I chuckled and sent two more red envelopes casually. Then in the group, I said, yesterday, I made a bet with Zhou Ying. If I make a deal with their boss, he will kneel down and help me get the card. I'll record a video for you when it happens. 
After sending this message, I closed my phone because the destination was right in front of me. After getting off the car, I walked quickly with my suitcase. At that moment, Joling looked up and saw me, then looked shocked and bewildered. After all, she had just been arguing back, and then I appeared here, especially when she saw me carrying a suitcase. I teased, I'm actually looking forward to seeing how graceful you'll be when helping me with the card. After saying that, I cleared my throat and shouted inside, Yang, the boss is here to check the goods. Yang Datong came to the store early today because he had a feeling I would definitely come. So, he found a way overnight and contacted Chief Appraiser Li Xiehong at the appraisal office. Although Li Xiehong is old and just a nominal member in the association, he can easily discern the authenticity of gold at a glance. Seeing the suitcase in my hand, Yang Datong felt reassured and immediately suggested, let's go to the backstage for the transaction. I waved my hand, not agreeing, but instead pointed to the sign of the 110 online monitoring. Then I pointed to the camera and finally said, in this transaction, we both have security. Yang Datong nodded and said, no problem, then turned to close the door and draw the curtains. Seeing this, I placed the suitcase directly on the glass counter, and when they made contact, a crisp sound rang out. Yang Datong and Li Xiehan didn't think much of it. This only proved that there was indeed a considerable amount of gold inside. But Zhou Ling, who was standing aside, was frightened, and her heart rate increased significantly for a moment. If I really brought so much gold, Yang Datong wouldn't let me off easily. As soon as I threw the suitcase onto the table, I was dumbfounded because I had actually forgotten the suitcase's password. Yang Datong urged Mr. Aiken, why haven't you opened the box yet? After learning that I could endlessly replicate the gold in my hands, I immediately dissolved 200 kilograms of gold bars. But just as I was about to go and cash in with 50 kilograms, unexpectedly, I had forgotten the password for the suitcase containing the gold. The shop owner's face turned black with anger when he saw the situation, thinking to himself, is this kid playing me? Seeing that I couldn't open the box, Zhou Ying was overjoyed and mockingly called me a pauper. Hurry up and open it. It's just a broken box, find a knife and open it. Yang Datong also agreed with this idea, but he was about to speak. I shook my head to indicate it's not possible, I have an emotional attachment to this box. Zhou Ying laughed so much that she couldn't close her mouth. Why don't you say you have an emotional attachment to that gold? Suddenly don't want to sell it? After showing off, I said to the boss, I was right, he's clearly playing you. At this point, Yang Datong's face was full of black lines, and he glared fiercely at Zhou Ying. However, Zhou Ying completely didn't realize that murderous look, and instead arrogantly said, I told you earlier, you deserve it, a chun. Today, as long as you kneel down and apologize to our boss, then I'll forgive you after I take a video of it. Suddenly, I remembered the password, raised my hand, and immediately unlocked it. Zhou Ying didn't believe that I really brought the gold, she just felt that I was stalling for time. With a click, the spring popped up. The smile on Zhou Ying's face froze. Next to him, Yang Datong's expression also began to soften. Li Xiehong also looked over with an expectant expression, and without saying a word, I opened the box. Neatly arranged on the old newspaper were 15 gold bars, and due to the substantial quantity, they instantly emitted a dazzling sparkle. Seeing this scene, Zhou Ying's heart skipped a beat. He never expected that I actually had real gold in my hands. At this moment, Yang Datong gradually broke into a smile. It turned out to be a false alarm after all the fuss. I looked at Yang Datong and apologized lightly, sorry for the delay just now. Let's quickly complete the transaction now. I can't wait to get the diamond card from you. My words reached Zhou Ying's ears, and he could already imagine what he was about to face. So, he started to back out, but he knew that with Yang Datong here, he couldn't escape. Yang Datong didn't beat around the bush and politely asked Li Xiehong to help with the appraisal. In fact, even without the appraisal, he could tell that it was genuine. After all, he had been in this business for decades. Who couldn't tell real gold from fake? Li Xiehong first took a careful look then lightly scratched it with her fingernail. Finally, she threw a dollar coin on the ground, and with a crisp sound, it stuck tightly to the floor. After the appraisal, he nodded affirmatively at Yang Datong. After Yang Datong looked at me, he felt a hint of curiosity, but still followed the normal procedure. I asked Zhou Ying to go to the back and bring out the electronic scale used for weighing precious metals. Just as Zhou Ying went to get the scale, Yang Datong is trying to get information out of me again. Mr. Yi Chen, can you tell me where you got this batch of goods from? I have never seen this kind of stuff before. Before he could finish, I interrupted him. Don't ask what you shouldn't ask. If Mr. Yang is a straightforward person, I'll buy this batch of precious metals from you in the future. After all, with the Philosopher's Stone, I can endlessly duplicate these things, but I am well aware that sudden wealth can be fatal. When Yang Datong heard me say this, he was instantly taken aback. 
Although he doesn't care about circulating 10 million gold, the problem is that my apparent indifference has become the reason for his wariness. On the other hand, Zhou Ying didn't find this matter so easy. Her legs were trembling when she went to the back to get the scale. Yesterday, he said he had never seen so much gold in his life, but in reality, he hadn't seen so much even during his internship here. He thinks I must have stolen it, otherwise how could I have so much merchandise? Seeing her taking a long time, Yang Datong shouted, Have you broken your leg? It's taking you forever to get the scale. Zhou Ying realized and quickly brought the scale back to the front desk. After calibrating it, she pushed the scale towards Yang Datong. Yang Datong weighed the gold bricks several times, and the total weight he obtained was 50. 9 billion caddies, which is 29,455 grams. Seeing this number, my heart was in turmoil, but my facial expression remained calm as water. But Zhou Ying, despite being mentally prepared, was still so surprised that she couldn't close her mouth. After repeatedly calculating, Yang Daton pushed the computer towards me. Confirming the price we previously discussed, it should be 11.04 million. I nodded, took out a bank card from my pocket, and tossed it onto the counter. The money has been transferred to this card, I said. Thank you, Boss Yang. I hope we can have even more pleasant cooperation in the future. Yang Datong nodded repeatedly, opened his phone, and transferred this huge sum into my account. After all, he didn't care about this money at all, because from this transaction, he could earn over a million. I quickly received the notification of the transfer and smiled at Yang Datong, saying, Thank you, boss. Yang Datong said, You're welcome. If you need to deal with precious metals in the future, feel free to contact me. Although my shop is small, it can accommodate as many people as the entire Zhanghai Jade and Stone Association. I nodded and then looked at Zhou Ying. I remember Boss Yang mentioned getting me a diamond card. Right, Yang Datong? I quickly added, of course, I'll arrange it immediately. By the way, do you remember what we discussed yesterday, Zhou Ying? Figure it out yourself. Zhou Ying now regretted and wished to slap himself twice because he had spoken out of turn in this bet, but he didn't want to keep his promise. I took out my phone and looked at Yang Daton. Boss Yang, the quality of your staff here is not good. Yesterday, he promised to kneel down and get the card for me. What's going on now? Yang Daton understood that I wanted him to handle it personally, otherwise, we would never be able to cooperate again in the future. So he immediately said, get down and handle the card quickly, or you can forget about graduating in the future. I still have some connections with your school's board of directors. When Zhou Ying came to work, she knew that Yang Datong was no ordinary person, so she used him as a stepping stone to catch this big fish. But unexpectedly, Yang Datong had no interest in her. Immediately, he brought out a form and a pen, and bent down on one knee. He knelt back and forth seven or eight times, all of which I recorded as a video. When I shared it in the group, my classmates went wild. A guy said, Yi Chen actually sold so much gold. Otherwise, Zhou Ying wouldn't have cooperated with him like that. Another classmate said, you're too much. We're all classmates. How could you do this? Without saying a word, I sent him an exclusive red envelope. After he claimed it, he instantly retracted that message. Next, there was a series of password-protected red envelopes. You had to say Zhou Ying kneeling down was really elegant to receive money. In no time, nearly $10,000 worth of red envelopes were sent out. Just then, Zhou Ying crawled over while kneeling and tremblingly handed me the membership card. Even though we were only an arm's length apart, I accepted it. Are you planning to make me reach out? Zhou Ying originally wanted to get angry. Yang Datong stared at her with his two eyes fixedly. So he had to continue crawling on his knees in front of me and once again handed me the membership card. I felt very happy watching this, but I didn't have any further desire until the last video was sent out. I picked up the membership card and extended my hand to Yang Datong. Yang Datong understood what it meant and flattered me in a way that didn't befit his status. Later, I left the gold shop with my suitcase because it held sentimental value for me. My father bought it for me with his hard-earned money from the construction site when I started my freshman year. I carried it back to our rundown house, and I feel it's time to get a new house. My parents left it for me to live in so I could find a good job and work hard to pay off my debts. After that, they both went to work at the factory as laborers. Even though I have money now, I still plan to keep it a secret from my parents. I deposited 100,000 into each of their bank accounts. Shortly after, I received a call from him. My dad on the other end roared, What's going on, son? Why did an extra $100,000 show up in our bank accounts? You little rascal, did you go out and borrow money from someone again? I gave my parents $200,000 as pocket money, but they still scolded me and called me a little rascal. All because I took out high-interest loans to impress my crush and ended up selling our house. Little did they know, 
I had just sold 50 kilograms of gold and now had over 10 million in my bank account. My parents thought I had taken out high interest loans and scolded me to quickly pay them back. After thinking for a moment, I immediately explained that I hadn't borrowed money from anyone. The government had implemented policies to limit high interest loan rates, and Black Tiger was ordered by the court to return 300,000. The two elders couldn't believe it, and quickly asked me if it was true. I nodded and continued, I didn't lie to you. After giving you 200,000, I still kept 100,000. Next, I want to do some business. What do you think? Upon hearing this, my dad was not happy, quickly transfer that $100,000 to me. Keep the $300,000 for marrying a wife. Now you come to the construction site with dad to work as a security guard, so you don't cause any trouble for me again. But my mom is a reasonable person, and she directly said, don't mind your dad, this old man. You keep the money for your own business. If it's not enough, tell mom. Understand? I said. My eyes were a little moist, but I held back my tears and hung up the phone. Then I paid off all my credit cards and online loans. There is currently 10, 9 million left in my account. I then looked at the 120 pounds of gold left in the cabinet and roughly calculated that it's worth around 20 million. But these goods can't be moved from Yang Datong's place because if so much gold appears in a short time, it will raise suspicions. However, Yang Datong is worth dealing with. After all, he only took the profit and didn't cheat me. Especially since he gave me the diamond card from the Zhanghai Bathroom Association. Next, I plan to buy a car. After locking up the gold and the wash basin, I left. I went to the mall and first bought a Huawei phone. Then I inserted the SIM card, and the phone kept vibrating. At this time, the class group chat exploded, everyone was discussing the videos I had previously posted. Even the counselor came out to mediate because the video was forwarded to the school group, causing a huge impact. My private messages were also flooded with greeting messages, and the key is that I don't know any of these people. After clearing the messages from strangers, I found a few familiar avatars in my private chat list. Joeing said, wait for me, you beggar. How dare you make me kneel? Manager Yang even fired me. This matter won't end like this. I just took a glance, then swiped left to delete. This guy will definitely stir up some trouble, but I am fully prepared. If he wants to retaliate, it's like hitting a rock with an egg. The next message made me fall into contemplation. A certain Wu Yue said, have you repaid all the money? I see everyone in the group is talking about you and Zhou Ying. He found your goddess's boyfriend and said for you to kneel and apologize to him, otherwise he will disable one of your arms. Seeing this, I just laughed. Although Zhou Ying is not capable, her best friend Su Xiaoga's boyfriend is quite powerful. After all, he is the young master of the Li group, Li Xiaoqing. Then I thanked Wu Yue and came up with an idea. I still remember that Wu Yue once transferred his monthly living expenses of 2000 to me and told me never to touch loan sharks again. So I immediately transferred 150,000 to him. Not long after, he sent three question marks and said, Brother Chen, what do you mean by this? I solemnly told my brother that I will not forget you when I become successful. If you return it, it means you look down on your brother. I will handle it with Li Xiaoqing. After this period of time, let's get together. Wu Yue felt unable to refuse, so he could only say to Brother Chen. Carefully, after sending him the message, I sent dozens of password red packets. Each password was Li Xiaoqing is a useless person who relies on his father. In theory, no one should claim such red packets, but under a heavy reward, there must be someone brave enough. In less than 20 seconds, the entire class group was flooded with this message. After watching the excitement for a while, I directly blocked the group messages. Then I continued to stroll and arrived at a Volkswagen 4S store. As soon as I entered, a well-dressed salesman came up to me. It was the end of the month, and he wanted to boost his performance. He immediately led me to a new La Vida. This car is priced at 120,000 yuan, quite suitable for your temperament. What do you think? I nodded and muttered, it looks quite good, but it's a bit cheap. What is the acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour? As soon as I finished speaking, there was a flash of doubt in Feng Jun's eyes, and I began to feel that I wasn't here to buy a car at all. Asking about the acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour for a car costing over 100,000 yuan is no joke. Do I need to use this car to participate in a rally? And at that moment, a fat man walked into the 4S store, indicating to Xiao Feng. Come over quickly, I'm here to see the car. If everything's fine, I'll drive it away today. Upon hearing this, Feng Jun immediately ran over. The Passat flagship version you're interested in, I've already applied for it. As long as the approval comes from the leader, it's impossible to escape the original factory maintenance. Seeing this, I chuckled and said, What's the matter with you? Are you saying the customer is God? 
how come I came first, and you're ignoring me? After all, there's nothing wrong with me wanting a more expensive car, right? But before Feng Jun could speak, Mr. Zhang next to him became unhappy. Feng Jun, what's wrong with you? If you don't have time today, I won't bring up the car. Feng Jun's face turned black upon hearing this, then he turned to me and said, God also makes a distinction between the rich and the poor. You can't even afford a car worth a few tens of thousands. Mr. Zhang is getting a Passat for over 300,000 yuan. If you can't afford a car, don't embarrass yourself here. I chuckled and said, embarrassing? I can complain about you if you continue like this. Suddenly, Mr. Zhang said, young man, don't be ungrateful. If you want a freeload on free coffee, come back when we're not busy. Now Feng Jun is going to process my documents. You stay quietly on the side. All right, I find this a bit funny. Just now, I didn't like what I saw. But your car is not bad, the front grille is quite sexy. As soon as these words were spoken, the two of them almost couldn't help but laugh. Feng Jun said, do you even know what car this is? The front of the Passat is called the front grille. You ignorant person, if you don't know anything, you better leave now, or I'll call the security. I secretly wondered if it's a crime not to know about cars these days. I thought to myself, if I'm not welcome here, I'll go to another place. Just then, a pleasant voice came through, Mr. Yi Chen, let me show you some other car models. As I turned around, I saw a girl with a high ponytail, and her features were very distinct. She looked both cute and capable, with an indescribable charm. Before I could say anything, Feng Jun started mocking Suna. Don't say I didn't warn you, Junior. It's been a month and not a single car has been sold. You're entertaining this guy. Are you trying to practice making coffee? Suna was a bit embarrassed by Feng Jun's remark, but she still insisted that everything was fine. If the customer wants to see the cars, I'll take him. You take Mr. Zhang to sign the contract first. Mr. Zhang chuckled and said, You have great service. Truly worthy of the fourth son's store. Seeing Suna unresponsive, Feng Jun didn't bother to say more. He left with a parting remark, If you want to talk, go ahead. Then, he turned around with a smile and took Mr. Zhang to a room. Meanwhile, Suna put on a smile and faced me. Mr. Aching, I'm the intern salesperson here. You can call me Xiao Su. Next, I'll show you the car models you're interested in. This standard reception language softened my ears. It's not that I haven't seen women before, but Suna didn't seem outstanding, yet I couldn't find anything unattractive about her. Suna smiled and said, What type of car do you like? I just heard that you think the La Vida and Ling Du are a bit cheap. I feel this female salesperson is quite likable. I directly said, I like the Passat model, but its price is too cheap. Can you find me a more expensive car? After two hours, he introduced several cars to me, some of which were priced up to 1 million. But I always managed to find faults. Either the appearance is ugly, or it's not low-key enough. At this point, Suna was already parched, with a hint of redness in her eyes, as if feeling wronged. I hurriedly comforted her, don't worry, I've decided to buy the car from you today. But unexpectedly, at that moment, Feng Jun and manager Zhang arrived again. Manager Zhang chuckled and said, I've always said, he's just a country bumpkin. Feng Jun flattered from the side, manager Zhang's judgment of people is really accurate. Congratulations to manager Zhang for getting the new Passat today. Manager Zhang sat on the nearby sofa, took a sip of coffee, and said, You, kid, are you bullying the new girl? If you can't afford a car, don't come to a place like this. I feel embarrassed for you. Hong Jun couldn't bear to watch anymore, so he waved his hand, signaling for the security guard to come over quickly. Suna directly intercepted in front of me and said, Mr. Lu just doesn't like the design of our cars here. Let me rest for a while, and then I'll take him to see. I added truthfully, yes, I do like the Passat's front grille, but the price makes me very unsatisfied, and it makes me feel undervalued. Feng Jun mentioned liking the grille of the Passat. Suna, take him to see the Magotan. These two cars look quite similar. Let's see if he can afford it. After saying this, both Feng Jun and Zhang burst into laughter. Suna's face turned red, and she couldn't say a word. At that time, I didn't take it seriously at all and asked Suna, is this car really available? Suna came to her senses and said, this car is the top version, priced at around 1. 55 million. In terms of appearance, it does look quite similar to the Passat, except for the color of the grille and the interior design. Upon hearing this, I became interested and took out my bank card, saying, take me to see it. If I'm satisfied, I'll pay now. I spent 1 million to buy a Volkswagen, but I felt like taking the wheels off the car. Because when I was paying, a salesperson dared to mock me, saying that I couldn't afford it. Without saying a word, I took out my bank card and gestured to the female salesperson next to me to bring the POS machine. 
Suna was full of disbelief. She originally thought I was just here to freeload, have a coffee, but she didn't expect that I would actually buy a one. Five million car. Feng Jun felt a little embarrassed at this point. She didn't know if I was serious or not. Zhang just smiled and said, there's definitely no money in this card to ease the embarrassment. But Suna was very serious, brought the contract and POS machine, calculated all the data, and gave a definite price. I didn't even listen and directly entered the password. After swiping the card, the hall rang with the sound of successful payment, 1. 55 million has been credited. Feng Jun was dumbfounded, thinking that the POS machine had malfunctioned. But when he snatched it over, cold sweat started pouring down his forehead. At this point, manager Zhang's face also turned pale, feeling like a clown. Then, embarrassed, he said, since I've signed the contract, phone, take me to pick up the car. But at this moment, Feng Jun didn't dare to leave and had to ask another salesperson to take him to pick up the car. Then, he came in front of me, hands in his pockets, looking at a loss. After all, can someone who buys a car at first glance afford to offend him? At that time, I was discussing the contract with Su Na and didn't pay any attention to what Feng Jun said. The more I ignored him, the more uncertain he felt, and now a grown man was almost in tears from anxiety. After all the contracts were signed, I could drive away in this sweeting directly. Su Na had been running around helping throughout. I even specifically asked her to take it easy. Feng Jun didn't know what to do for a moment, then he brought me a plate of fruit. Mr. Minister, are you thirsty? Have some fresh fruit quickly. I chuckled and said, don't be like this. It's not appropriate for a country bumpkin like me to freeload. Hearing me say this, Feng Jun really cried. My words meant that he couldn't get over this hurdle. So he quickly said, you misunderstood. I was just echoing, echoing manager Zhang. I questioned, are you serious? Then call him now and repeat to him what you said to me, otherwise I won't forgive you. Feng Jun didn't expect that I would use so many methods, although he dares too. But if he really makes this call in public, he can forget about working in this industry from now on. Seeing him in a dilemma, I smiled and said, stop talking nonsense here. Get your manager over here. As soon as I finished speaking, the store manager immediately rushed over and began with a set of standard pleasantries. I waved my hand to interrupt him, stop with the empty words. The professional quality of your staff needs improvement. Go check the surveillance. I said a few words, and the blame was put on me. All the salespeople present, including the store manager, were speechless after the scolding. Apart from I'm sorry, I silenced them all. After all, in an avalanche, no snowflake is innocent. Suna felt like she became the center of attention and was a bit uncomfortable. After quickly resolving the contract, she handed me the car keys and bowed to me to express her gratitude. The store manager personally saw me off and even gave me six free original manufacturer maintenance services as a gesture of thanks. As for Feng Jun, he will have to study the employee guidelines for a month and have three months of bonuses and commissions deducted. If he doesn't want to do it, he can just leave. Once a sales champion, he has now become a nobody. As I left the forest dealership, I received a message from Suna. The rental agreement was originally without a commission for my internship, but just now the manager told me that I can get a commission for this car, so I'd like to treat you to a meal after I become a regular employee. Can I shake off my bad luck? Is this what they call having a luxury car and attracting girls? But I don't think Suna is like that. The girl simply agreed directly. Afterward, I had a meal outside and then returned to the shop. After coming back, I moved the remaining gold bars into the car. But unexpectedly, just as I was about to take a bath, the water was cut off. Because I didn't have money and hadn't paid the water bill for three months, I went downstairs to buy a bottle of mineral water. I poured it into the basin, and soon the water inside began to rise continuously. I poured out the water, then filled it up again, just like an inexhaustible spring. I used this method to wash myself all over. But in no time, I found that my skin had actually improved and even the pimples that had just popped up yesterday disappeared. I looked at myself in the mirror in disbelief. Could the water in the basin be so miraculous? Knowing this situation, I poured out all the water, and then duplicated 10 million in cash. Finally, I threw them all into the suitcase containing the gold. Soon I arrived at a five-star hotel. At the entrance, the security guard recognized my Volkswagen at a glance, and without saying a word, he opened the barrier for me to pass through but I looked for a parking lot for a long time and couldn't find it. A greeter approached and said, Hello, sir. Do you have a reservation? I shook my head and said, No, I don't. Where is your parking lot? Before I could finish, he tried to grab my car keys. In a panic, I quickly protected them. The greeter explained, I'm the valet. Our hotel's parking lot is in the backyard. Leave this small matter to me. 
Upon hearing this, I finally realized that I was really a country bumpkin. I awkwardly coughed twice and tossed the car keys over, indicating that I was just joking. The greeter took the keys without making a fuss and proceeded with the usual process, asking if I had any luggage. After speaking, he went directly to open the trunk and lifted out a 100 plus pound suitcase, placing it in front of me. Seeing this, I quickly stepped forward, grabbed the suitcase handle, and said, I've got this. The greeter gave me a strange look, thinking to himself that this guest was really odd. Driving such a nice car, but dressed so plainly, and with a shabby, yet surprisingly heavy, suitcase. But here, a luxury car is a pass. After stating my surname, I went to park. I thought to myself, the car doesn't matter, but the wash basin must not fall into anyone else's hands. After this little joke, I straightened my clothes. Without the backdrop of a luxury car, I was just an ordinary handsome guy. The moment I walked into the hotel lobby, it felt like stepping into a palace. The two receptionists at the entrance greeted me, Good day, Mr. Yi Chen. Welcome to the Baiyunji and Grand Hotel. Excuse me, do you not have a reservation here? I nodded without saying a word, indicating that I didn't have a reservation. What kind of rooms do you have here? I have only one requirement, and that is that it must be expensive. The front desk was momentarily stunned, then explained that there are three types, with prices ranging from 6,800 to 9,800. I raised my eyebrows and asked, is that all? That's a bit cheap. The front desk continued, saying that there is also a presidential suite for 16,888 per night. However, our presidential suite is only open to qualified members. I was a little confused and asked, only open to members? How much do your members need to pay? The front desk explained that the presidential suite is only available to members with the black gold supreme card, with an annual spending requirement of over 3 million. After he finished explaining, he also breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that this would make me give up. But I was not interested in listening to this, and simply said, I want to stay tonight. If I meet your criteria, can you directly grant me membership privileges? Although the front desk was stunned for a moment, they still nodded awkwardly. Without saying a word, I took out my bank card and placed it on the counter, saying, give me a presidential suite. The front desk was about to say that I needed to apply for the black gold card. I immediately interrupted, saying that I have the qualifications because I want to stay for a year. Sir, what did you just say? The front desk staff was stunned, even bewildered for a few seconds. One year? Or the presidential suite? I said you should book the presidential suite for me for a year, Yi Chen repeated very seriously. The two front desk staff couldn't help but laugh, with one of them humorously looking at Yi Chen and saying, Sir, please don't joke around. This is not something to joke about. I can offer you an executive room, how long will you be staying? Yi Chen frowned slightly, feeling annoyed, and said, No, what kind of service attitude is this? Can't you understand plain language? I said I want to stay for a year, in the presidential suite for a year, do you understand now? Yi Chen's voice was a bit loud, even attracting the attention of the lobby manager. The lobby manager, seeing no joy on Yi Chen's face, quickly asked the two front desk staff what was going on. Another front desk staff member, whose attitude was not particularly good, pointed at Yi Chen and said, Manager, this person is causing trouble, he didn't make a reservation, is not a member, insists on the presidential suite, and wants it for a year. This was clearly not the way to treat a guest. As soon as she finished speaking, the other front desk staff member with a slightly better attitude quickly nudged her arm. The lobby manager also frowned, gave her a stern look, then immediately put on a smile and faced Yi Chen. Hello, sir, I apologize for the unpleasant experience. Are you looking to stay in the presidential suite for a year? Yi Chen nodded and said, Yes, is there a problem with staying in the presidential suite for a year? I have money. He then raised the card in his hand. The front desk staff member with the bad attitude couldn't help but chuckle again. Dressed so shabbily, not even willing to give a tip for the luggage, probably won't tip for parking either. I've never seen a guest like you, acting like a rascal. Shelly, be quiet, the lobby manager quickly stopped the front desk staff member from speaking, and with an embarrassed smile, asked Yi Chen, Sir, here's the situation. Our presidential suite is only available to black gold supreme card holders. If you want to book the presidential suite for a year, the amount you spend qualifies you for the black gold supreme card, which also entitles you to the same membership benefits at all dining and entertainment venues under our White Cloud Hotel. However, the room fee for the year needs to be paid in full upfront and is non-refundable. 
Are you sure? So you also think I can't afford it? Yi Chen didn't say anything else, just asked this question. The professionalism of the lobby manager was clearly higher than that of the front desk staff, as he quickly shook his head to explain that he didn't mean it that way, just clarifying the hotel's rules to the customer. After that, he asked the front desk staff to calculate the cost of the presidential suite for a year. Mr. Yi, the total is 6,164,120. Charge the card. Yi Chen didn't hesitate, and also handed over his ID card. The two front desk staff members looked at each other, and the lobby manager quickly gave them a look. After completing the check-in process, it was time to swipe the card. Sir, please enter your password. Yi Chen pressed a few times. The POS machine here didn't have voice prompts, but it still showed that the transaction was successful with a long beep sound. The lobby manager was quick to change to a smiling face. Mr. Yi, welcome to White Cloud Hotel. I hope that in the coming year, this place will be your cozy and comfortable home, and we will be at your service. If you need anything, just let us know. Yi Chen nodded, not taking it seriously, and only asked the front desk staff, can I have my room key now? And my ID. At this point, Shelly, the front desk staff member who had mocked Yi Chen earlier, had turned pale and didn't know what to say. Finally, with a reminder from the lobby manager, the front desk staff handed over Yi Chen's ID and room key, but couldn't say a word. It was the other front desk staff member with a slightly better attitude who awkwardly said, Enjoy your stay. Unhappy but have to be happy, six million is not a small amount. Your service attitude needs to be improved. It's really looking down on people. Yi Chen muttered, and the lobby manager also looked embarrassed. After all, he had never encountered a monster who stayed in the presidential suite for a year. He had no choice but to apologize to Yi Chen repeatedly, saying that it was negligence in staff training, and they would increase investment in this area in the future. At the same time, they guaranteed that the receptionist named Shaoli would not cause any more trouble to Yi Chen. Yi Chen nodded, not taking it seriously. He also came from a poor background, so as long as they didn't touch his bottom line, he wouldn't make things difficult for these people. The lobby manager personally led Yi Chen to the lounge area. Mr. Yi, please wait a moment. I will go get your car keys and then personally take you to the suite for check-in. Yi Chen nodded, and he went to the lounge area alone. After the lobby manager left, Yi Chen thought about how good the life of the rich was. When you have no money, you are poor, and when you have money, you spend it all. Spending over 6 million in one go. It's fake to say that it doesn't hurt. Yi Chen looked at the balance reminder just sent by the bank, and there was only a little over 3 million left. It seemed that he had to quickly liquidate the remaining gold, otherwise, this little over 3 million couldn't sustain this kind of spending. Just this was not enough. Even if all the gold was liquidated, it would only be a little over 20 million. Over 20 million is a huge sum in the world of the poor, it may impress the middle class, but in the eyes of the truly wealthy, 20 million is nothing. Yi Chen was not satisfied with this. He aimed to become the richest person in the world. At his current spending rate, even if he liquidated the gold, he would only have a little over 25 million. What would he do when the 25 million ran out? He couldn't just keep duplicating gold, could he? Actually, he could continue duplicating. After all, so far, Yi Chen had only duplicated 180 pounds of gold, which was just a drop in the bucket compared to the thousands of tons of gold circulating in the market, not to mention the black market. But if he kept spending and duplicating, where would it end? Yi Chen was not stupid, and precious metals were controlled by the state. If such a large amount of unexplained funds entered his account, it would soon be investigated and the truth would be revealed. So, he had to start a business. This was not an idea that Yi Chen came up with on a whim. He had already decided to develop surreptitiously, and if he was going to develop, he couldn't rush things. He had to acquire industries. While thinking about which direction to take in his entrepreneurial journey, an annoying voice came over. Yi Chen? Ha, huh, you've come to this place to hide? Yi Chen looked up and saw two people he never wanted to see in his life. Li Xiaoqing and Su Xiaoya. That pair of despicable people. 
Li Xiaoqing was dressed in trendy clothes, with ear studs and several rings on his hands. As for Su Xiaoya, she appeared elegant, wearing a pure white pleated skirt, with her hair cascading over her shoulders like a waterfall, captivating or nauseating. That was Yi Chen's dark period. He had been blinded by Su Xiaoya's innocent face and willingly became a lapdog, not realizing that Su Xiaoya and he were not on the same path, pursuing things that the former Yi Chen could never provide. Was Yi Chen wrong? No, everyone has the right to pursue love. Was Su Xiaoya wrong? No, like the former, it was also her right. What was wrong was this restless era, where almost everyone pursues fame and fortune, and some are willing to sell their souls or bodies to enjoy the present. Su Xiaoya was just a part of this trend, making Yi Chen feel puzzled. If Li Xiaoqing only saw Su Xiaoya as a plaything, there was a problem if they hadn't broken up in two years. Could it be that the two really loved each other? Truly in love? Ha ha, how ridiculous. Yi Chen's heart was filled with countless waves, all of which were swallowed by this overwhelming helplessness. When the eyes of the two met, Su Xiaoya's eyes first showed strong doubt, then disdain, as if Yi Chen should not be here, even if he had money, he was just a country bumpkin. Hide? Yi Chen didn't even stand up, but leaned back on the sofa and crossed his legs. Didn't I look for you in the group chat? Li Xiaocheng hugged Su Xiaoya and took two steps closer, with a condescending and aggressive attitude. Yi Chen shook his eyebrows, he really didn't see it. Group messages? I blocked them. Ha, you coward, you think you're a big shot just because you made some money? Without that money, you're nothing. Zhoeing is Ye Ye's best friend. I say you should apologize to her on your knees and you will do it. Li Xiaoqing's words were a bit exaggerated, especially in the quiet hotel lobby, even the guests in the other two private rooms were attracted by Li Xiaoqing's voice. Yi Chen found it amusing and asked, ridiculous, without money, without the greenhouse provided by the Li group, what are you? After saying this, Yi Chen suddenly stood up, Li Xiaoqing was a head shorter than Yi Chen, so when Yi Chen stood up, he had to look up at Yi Chen. At this moment, the momentum between the two sides instantly reversed. Li Xiaoqing was also startled by Yi Chen suddenly standing up and took two steps back. Seeing this scene, Yi Chen couldn't help but laugh out loud. It seems that without all this, you are just a prodigal son who has been emptied by wine and women. Li Xiaoqing was stunned for two seconds, the gap in momentum made his face look as ugly as if he had eaten shit. Su Xiaoya's expression was not very good either. She had initially treated Yi Chen as a lapdog willing to buy things for her, and choosing Li Xiaoqing was what she thought was the right choice in her life. She was born poor, but with just a pretty face, she instantly entered the wealthy circle. But now, the world had changed. Today, Zhou Ying told her that Yi Chen, a beggar, carried over 50 kilograms of gold to sell, instantly earning 10 million and becoming a millionaire. Su Xiaoya thought the world had gone mad. She didn't know where Yi Chen got so much gold from. Did he steal it? Rob it? But she didn't regret her choice. Although Li Xiaoqing's pocket money was only a few hundred thousand yuan a month, he was the sole heir of the Li group in the future. Between the Li group and 10 million, anyone could see which was more important. Yi Chen was just a nouveau riche, a country bumpkin. Even if he had money, he was just a sesame seed compared to Li Xiaoqing. Su Xiaoya was firm in her conviction. Li Xiaoqing did not lose face in front of Su Xiaoya. He took a step forward, regaining his arrogant demeanor. Ha, you don't even qualify as a prodigal son. Do you think you can enter the circle of social elites by staying in a five-star hotel with 10 million? You're dreaming. Li Xiaoqing harshly said, I am a silver VIP member here, and the Baiyun Hotel has an unwritten rule that bumpkins like you who defy members will be refused service by the hotel. Manager Gua, you just arrived, this bumpkin is affecting my stay, please kick him out. As Li Xiaoqing spoke, the former lobby manager, Manager Gua, came over with Yi Chen's car keys. Li Xiaoqing grabbed him and asked him to kick Yi Chen out. Manager Gua's face darkened. Li Xiaoqing, this. Mr. Yi is our black gold supreme member, higher than your silver VIP membership. I can't do this. What? This bumpkin is your black gold supreme member, impossible. 
Li Xiaoqing looked at Yi Chen in disbelief, muttering to himself, impossible, he's just a bumpkin, with a net worth of only 10 million, how could he be a black gold supreme member here? The manager Gua's face turned dark, thinking to himself that this young master Li couldn't possibly be a fool. Your family I can't afford to provoke, and even with a net worth of 10 million, I still can't afford to provoke. But Li Xiaoqing refused to give up, saying, Manager Gua, my father is also a VIP member of your Black Gold Club. Can't you just kick this country bumpkin out? He's affecting my stay experience. Well. Manager Gua felt embarrassed, but still said, it's not possible. Although Chairman Li is a VIP member, Mr. Yi is as well. Mr. Yi just booked our presidential suite for a year and hopes you won't affect the stay experience of our VIP members. A year? This time Li Xiaoqing was completely shocked, and even Su Xiaoya standing beside him showed a surprised expression. Yi Chen completely ignored Li Xiaoqing. In his eyes, Li Xiaoqing was just like some people in the group, all bark and no bite. Earlier, Yi Chen had thought it best not to encounter Li Xiaoqing too soon, otherwise he might get involved with the Li group, which he really didn't want to deal with. After all, Li Xiaoqing had no other skills, but he did have the ability to go home and complain when bullied. Yi Chun, you're really something. Zhou Ling said your gold mine sold for 10 million, and you dare to stay in the presidential suite for a year. The presidential suite at Baiyun Hotel costs 6 to 7 million a year, right? I'll wait to see what you do when you run out of money. If you dare to step out of Baiyun Hotel, I have ways to deal with you. Li Xiaoqing pointed at Yi Chen, looking arrogant. I'm looking forward to it. Yi Chen didn't even look at Li Xiaoqing, perhaps he had some means outside, but in this Baiyun Hotel, it wasn't under his father's name. Acting tough? It would only bring trouble upon himself. Yi Chen then took the key from Manager Guo and prepared to leave. But Li Xiaoqing stubbornly blocked Yi Chen's way. You think you can just leave so easily? You think I'm talking nonsense? Today I'll show you how powerful I am. Before Li Xiaoqing could make a move, Manager Guo stood in front of Yi Chen, looking serious as he said to Li Xiaoqing, Young Master Li, Mr. Yi is currently a VIP member of Baiyun Hotel. Please show some respect. I know Chairman Li is your father, but I believe Chairman Li should also respect the rules of Baiyun Hotel. Please don't put me in a difficult position. I'm just an employee, following the rules. After speaking, Manager Guo took out a walkie-talkie and called a few security guards over. Soon, five or six burly security guards rushed over. Li Xiaoqing was stunned, looking incredulously at Manager Guo. Do you dare to lay a finger on me and see who my father is? The situation escalated, Li Xiaoqing didn't back down, but Su Xiaoya did. She went up and tugged at Li Xiaoqing's collar, looking scared. Manager Guo shook his head and said, I don't dare. They are just here to escort Mr. Yi back to rest. Young Master Li, please don't make it difficult for me. With that, Manager Guo turned to Yi Chen and gestured for him to leave. Yi Chen couldn't be bothered with Li Xiaoqing, so he left under the escort of the security guards. Before leaving, he glanced disdainfully at Li Xiaoqing, but didn't say anything, even though Li Xiaoqing kept shouting behind him. Yi Chen even heard Su Xiaoya asking Li Xiaoqing what the presidential suite at Baiyun Hotel looked like, wanting to stay for a night and asking Li Xiaoqing to bring his father's black gold card to book a room. Li Xiaoqing was already furious, and at this moment, all his anger was directed at Su Xiaoya. Yi Chen didn't hear clearly, but these two bickered. Thinking about it, money really does talk. Yi Chen himself felt the same way. In terms of social status, Li Xiaoqing was higher than him, after all, he had a good father. Li's group and Bai's group, to which Baiyun Hotel belonged, probably had a lot of cooperation. The two families must have mutual interests, but in the face of real money, social status sometimes doesn't matter that much. Under the escort of a group of security guards, Yi Chen arrived at the entrance of the presidential suite in Baiyunjian. It was introduced that there were a total of eight presidential suites in Baiyunjian, occupying the entire top four floors, with two suites on each floor. Yi Chen's suite was on the top floor, offering the best view. Manager Guo estimated that he had handled the matter of Li Xiaoqing well and hurriedly caught up from behind. I'm sorry, Mr. Yi, for causing inconvenience to your check-in experience. 
On behalf of Bayanjian, I apologize to you. Li Xiaoqing's father is Li Zhengda, the chairman of the Li Group. I'm just an employee, I can't afford to offend either side. I apologize to you again. Yi Chen nodded and swiped his card to open the door to the presidential suite. Manager Guo followed in, and Yi Chen was naturally attracted by the luxury of the suite. If entering Bayanjian felt like entering a palace before, then the presidential suite felt like entering the Hall of Mental Cultivation. What is the Hall of Mental Cultivation? That's where the emperor sleeps. It was impossible not to be amazed. Yi Chen admitted that he had never stayed in such a high-end room before. Manager Guo did not make fun of Yi Chen, or perhaps he dared not. He just humbly said, Mr. Yi, this should be your first stay, let me introduce the room to you. Yi Chen glanced at Manager Guo and thought that Manager Guo was indeed tactful and knew how to show respect, so he nodded in agreement. Our Bayanjian is a rising star among the five-star hotels in Zhanghai City, with the best furnishings and facilities. The presidential suite is divided into several areas based on different functions. Manager Guo led Yi Chen to a place and continued his introduction. Here is the meeting room and office area, which can accommodate around 20 people for meetings. The office equipment is all new, and the chairs are from Herman Miller. Next to it is the gym, with equipment mainly purchased from Life Fitness, Techno Gym, and Precker, ensuring both aesthetics and functionality. The curtains in front of these two elliptical machines can be opened, allowing you to overlook the night view of Zhanghai while exercising. Further inside is the bathroom, where we have specially built a swimming pool that is temperature controlled 24 hours a day, with the water changed daily. There is a partition wall here, next to which is a small bar. You are welcome to drink the beverages inside freely. Originally, they were chargeable, but since you are staying for a year, these beverages are complimentary for you. Here is the bedroom, with all new bedding that meets the standards for infant skin care, ensuring sterility before your check-in. There is a living room in front of it, where you can also dine. Our restaurant service is available 24 hours a day for you. Additionally, each room has a direct line phone with a butler service button. We are dedicated to serving all your needs. After the introduction, Manager Gua had already taken Yi Chen on a tour. After this tour, Yi Chen had one feeling, rich people really know how to enjoy life. This was too extravagant. Just think, for 16,888 a day, you could have this kind of treatment. Why bother buying a house when you can save on everything by staying in the presidential suite? In the past, Yi Chen might have thought such ideas were extravagant, but now he realized that this amount of money was nothing. Manager Guo finished his introduction and knew he had nothing else to do, so he left on his own accord. Before leaving, he told Yi Chen that the black and gold supreme card would be delivered to him once it was ready. Yi Chen nodded and let him go. Yi Chen set his own fingerprint, iris recognition, and password in the dedicated safe in the presidential suite according to the instructions, and then put the gold and treasure basin he brought with him inside. After doing all this, Yi Chen sat directly on the sofa, feeling that, indeed, this sofa was different from the one in the lobby outside. There was a clear difference in comfort. Yi Chen felt like he was floating, able to discern the difference between high-end sofas however, speaking of which, the car has been bought, the accommodation has been arranged, and now it's time to plan for the future. But before planning, Yi Chen wanted to settle a small matter. He opened his mobile QQ, removed the message block from the class group, and the messages quickly refreshed. There were too many people mentioning it Yi Chen, so he had ignored them before, but now he read each message one by one. Li Xiaoqing had indeed said harsh words in the group. However, Yi Chen couldn't be bothered to deal with him, so he directly took a screenshot of the private chat messages from Zhou Ying to himself and posted it in the group, tagging Zhou Ying. Yi Chen, at Zhou Ying, tell me what you can do to me. Yi Chen, don't say I bully women, even if Li Xiaoqing comes, it's useless. He will lose face tonight at my place. Yi Chen, by the way, don't you know Black Tiger? Why don't you try asking him? After that, Yi Chen sent out several red envelope commands, all calling for Zhou Ying to come out. The classmates in the group didn't care about face anymore, they copied the commands one by one and started a frenzy of discussion. Yi Chen then blocked the group messages, ignoring any mentions of him inside. Before long, 
he received a private message from Zhou Ying. Zhou Ying, you're dead. Zhou Ying, you're finished, Yi Chen. Yi Chen smiled, not taking it seriously, put down his phone, and went to the bar to pour himself a drink. Now, Yi Chen decided to enjoy the life of a wealthy person first. After three drinks, Yi Chen remembered Su Xiaoya. In fact, he hadn't expected to meet Su Xiaoya tonight, which made him feel like he didn't care much about this woman. The dark years of the past two years had worn away his initial affection for Su Xiaoya. Perhaps that liking belonged to the impulsive hormones of youth, which had been completely worn away by the harsh reality of society. For a moment, Yi Chen felt empty, as if he couldn't win back the goddess of the past even with wealth, especially since she was here tonight with another man. It felt frustrating, but then he thought, isn't this just a case of a prostitute matching a dog, lasting forever? With this in mind, Yi Chen instantly felt much better. He even felt sorry for Su Xiaoya and Li Xiaoqing. He was about to possess the wealth of the whole world, so tonight he would bid farewell to the past. Yi Chen raised his glass, toasting to his five-star self. While Yi Chen was reveling in drunken bliss, on the other side of Zhanghai City, in an old bar in the old town area, something lively was about to happen. In a small private room, sitting on the sofa was Black Tiger. Black Tiger had recently made a small fortune, not too much, not too little, 1.28 million. Of course, it was the money Yi Chen had given him. In the line of work like Black Tiger's, the money lent out might not always be recovered, especially when dealing with real old gamblers, there was no way around it. Some debts were just bad debts, and if you could recover the principal, that was already good enough. This was also why the interest rates for loan sharks were so high, to cover those bad debts. However, this didn't change the fact that loan sharking was a devil's abyss, a morally questionable business. Generally, those who didn't have connections and didn't have many brothers under them were the most likely to be ruined in this line of work. Over the years, Black Tiger had relied on the protection of his boss and had some followers under him, making quite a bit of money. They preyed on people like Yi Chen, who had a shallow sense of the law and were timid. Take the hundreds of thousands that Yi Chen had filled in for him before, for example, he couldn't swallow it alone, he had to take care of those above and below him. But he had become a millionaire, even after years of extravagance, he still had a few million in assets. As for the 1.28 million he had taken from Yi Chen this time, Black Tiger hadn't touched a penny of it, he had all of it laid out on his bed, just to look at so much money at once, it was pleasing to the eye. This also gave Black Tiger other ideas, he thought he could do something big, maybe even become a multi-millionaire.at this moment, the woman sitting in Hei Hu's arms turned out to be Zhou Ying, who had just been making a scene in the group chat. Tonight, Zhou Ying had shed her professional attire from the jewelry store front desk and put on revealing fishnet stockings and jeans that almost exposed her buttocks, with a light smoky makeup on her face. The smoky makeup was subtle, different from the women in the nightlife scene, making her look particularly enticing. Hey who liked this kind of young girl, after all, she was a college student, and the smoky makeup couldn't hide the youthful vibe on her, completely different from the women in the nightlife scene, always fresh and exciting. Zhou Ying got to know Hei Hu when she came to the bar with friends before, and they became familiar with each other. Hei Hu wanted Zhou Ying, but Zhou Ying was not a fool. She might be naive at most, knowing that her body was her asset. When she was looking for an internship, she asked Hei Hu for help and was taken advantage of. But now Zhou Ying was determined, unable to swallow the humiliation brought by Yi Chen. Zhou Ying had also thought about seeking help from Su Xiaoya, as they were best friends, but since Su Xiaoya got together with Li Xiaoqing, she had become a different person in another world, making Zhou Ying feel a sense of distance. She also wanted to become part of that circle. Zhou Ying had read the messages in the group chat, Yi Chen dared to confront Li Xiaoqing, not knowing how he would end up, but what surprised Zhou Ying was that Li Xiaoqing made threats but didn't follow through. To deal with Yi Chen, she had to find Hei Hu. Zhou Ying knew that Hei Hu had lent money to Yi Chen in the first place, so if Li Xiaoqing couldn't find Yi Chen, Hei Hu could. Moreover, after Yi Chen provoked Zhou Ying in the group chat, she couldn't hold back anymore, so she dressed up and went to find Hei Hu, determined to take down Yi Chen. As Hei Hu listened to the woman in his arms, his attention was initially on Zhou Ying, eager to devour her on the spot, but when he heard Zhou Ying mention that Yi Chen had sold gold worth 10 million, he became excited. 10 million, that would be 50 kilograms of gold, right? But where did Yi Chen get so much gold? 
stolen, Zhou Ling began to incite Hei Hu. Brother Hu, this beggar must have stolen gold from other jewelry stores to sell. If he had so much gold, why would he be so poor and borrow money from you? I think this money should be yours, brother Hu. He borrowed so much money from you, how much did he pay you back with interest? This beggar thinks he's someone just because he has money, making me kneel in public. Brother Hu, you have to help me, sob. Brother Hu Zhou Ying's repeated calls of brother who made Hei Hu itch with excitement. Under the influence of alcohol, their minds were a bit unclear, and Hei Hu's hands were not behaving properly, exploring places he shouldn't. In fact, without Zhou Ying saying anything, as long as Hei Hu knew about this matter, he would definitely want a share of the pie. Ten million? He, everyone gets a piece. But with Zhou Ying's instigation, Hei Hu grew bolder, thinking if he could swallow this ten million in one go, then. Xiao Ying, actually, Yi Chen has already paid back the money he owed me. Now, that ten million is his money. But brother who, I. Hey, don't worry, how could I let you suffer? It's just that I have no reason to intervene. Actually, seeing you suffer, I feel really bad, it's just that. Hey who said, with new actions on his hands. Zhou Ying couldn't help but understand what Hei Hu was up to. In fact, before coming here, Zhou Ying had already figured it out. If Hei Hu liked her, there was nothing wrong with being his woman. With money and power, what else could she ask for? Unable to marry into a wealthy family, more realistic the better. How dare I, brother tiger, where are you? I'll come find you right away. Where am I? I'm at your place, Yi Chen. It's the most dangerous place, but also the safest. Who would have thought there's 10 million cash in this little rundown house? You've really grown in power now, not even answering my calls. After Black Tiger finished scolding, Yi Chen quickly chuckled, Hee hee, brother Tiger, I just made a fortune, so I came out to have some fun. I'll come see you, we can talk about the money. You have 10 minutes. If I don't see you on time, I'll deduct 1 million for every 10 minutes late. After saying that, Black Tiger hung up the phone. Yi Chen laughed, calmly had his butler prepare a set of clothes for him. One million for every ten minutes late, heh, that ten million is all for you, Black Tiger, hope you don't choke on it. Yi Chen was in no hurry, he even went to the restaurant below Bayanjian to have a cup of tea before having the valet bring his car over. Before leaving, Yi Chen remembered that the manager Guo gave him the car keys yesterday, and he hadn't tipped the valet, so as he waved goodbye to him, he asked, Do you have WeChat or Alipay? Ha! Huh? Mr. Yi, what did you say? Yi Chen took out his phone, It was your manager Guo who gave me the keys last night, I didn't tip you. I don't have cash, can I scan it for you? The valet quickly shook his head and waved his hands, Mr. Yi, you don't have to be so polite. Manager Guo said you are the most precious guest of Bayanjian, this is what we should. Before the valet could finish, Yi Chen interrupted, enough talk, I'm in a hurry, just let me scan the QR code. For people like Yi Chen, time is money, as they say. The valet didn't dare to delay any longer, so he reluctantly showed his QR code. Without much thought, Yi Chen transferred 10,000 yuan directly after scanning it. The valet was stunned to see such a large tip. Mr. Yi, this, this is too much, I. It's done, just park my car properly next time. After saying that, Yi Chen rolled up the car window and headed straight to the old city. Leaving the valet standing there, thinking about how generous Yi Chen was. However, Yi Chen didn't think much of the 10,000 yuan tip, he knew he was going to make it big. Although he had joked about being discreetly wealthy, suddenly becoming rich, if he didn't experience the thrill of spending money freely, what was the point of being rich? After entering the old city, Yi Chen found a parking lot and parked his car. Of course, he couldn't let Black Tiger see this car, or else he would take it away too. Yi Chen didn't care about the car itself, he just didn't want Black Tiger to gain any advantage. As for the 10 million cash, heh, Black Tiger would have to have the luck to spend it. After parking the car, Yi Chen messed up his clothes a bit, then hailed a taxi and went straight to his rundown house. When he left yesterday, he didn't lock the door properly, and their house was old and dilapidated, a kick could open it. He guessed that at this moment, Black Tiger was sitting in front of that pile of money, thinking about how to spend it. 
After stumbling to the rundown house, Yichen pushed open the door and saw Black Tiger and Zhou Ying sitting on the sofa. The 10 million cash was scattered on the floor, Black Tiger had his legs propped up on the pile, smoking, with Zhou Ying in his arms looking very pleased. Oh, the millionaire is back, how rare. Black Tiger laughed, and Zhou Ying looked triumphant. And Yi Chen? Yi Chen stumbled into the door, looking flustered and anxious, and approached Hei Hu with a bitter melon face. Brother Hu, he he, who are you making that bitter face for? Are you afraid I'll take your money? Before Hei Hu finished speaking, he glanced at the time to side, and continued, but you're 40 minutes late, no, 45 minutes late, rounding up to 50 minutes, that's 5 million, right? A total of 10 million in cash, asking for 5 million up front, Yi Chen didn't know where Hei Hu got the courage, but luckily the 10 million was all prepared for Hei Hu, so he didn't hesitate and continued to pretend to have that bitter melon face. Um, brother Hu, I. But Hei Hu didn't give Yi Chen a chance to speak, he pulled Zhou in closer. Let's put the 5 million aside for now, let's talk about the incident where you made my woman kneel. The mental damages are 1 million, and the loss of income that led to her dismissal is another 1 million. Am I not being fair to you? Yi Chen didn't dare to argue at this point, he said he didn't do it, but his bitter face showed otherwise, letting Hei Hu know he was losing a lot of money. Brother Hu, if I knew Ying was your woman, I wouldn't have touched her. It's all my fault. You mentioned the money, I'm willing to give it to you. I hope you can cover for me in the future, Brother Hu. Yi Chen naturally spoke in a roundabout way, and Hei Hu was there for the money, so he crossed his legs and asked Yi Chen, how much are you willing to offer me? Hey, it's not about offering, brother Hu, you're not that kind of person. You were delayed for 50 minutes, so you want 5 million in compensation? And the mental damages and loss of income for Ing add up to 2 million, so a total of 7 million in compensation, yes, compensation. You know how to talk, baby, what do you think? Hey Hu smiled. Pinched Zhou Ying's thigh, as she had become his woman the night before. Splitting 10 million into 7 million would satisfy anyone, but Zhou Ying couldn't let it go. From the moment Yi Chen entered, she looked at him as if she wanted to tear him apart. No. Zhou Ying said, besides the money, you have to apologize to me on your knees. You have to kneel as long as I say, or I'll have brother who break your knees. Yi Chen pursed his lips, thinking this woman was ruthless, Hei Hu was just greedy for money, but this woman was deadly. Hei Hu, of course, thought the money wasn't enough, so he continued, Yi Chen, don't blame me for not covering for you, but brothers are brothers, and women are women. I can't bear to see this treasure wronged, so I'll take the 7 million, but today, you have to kneel and apologize to this treasure. Yi Chen's face fell when he heard this, he took a few steps forward and said, Brother Hu, a man's knees are made of gold, how can I kneel? Hei Hu was displeased, he slammed the pile of money, causing a few stacks of bills to fall to the ground. Yi Chen, what do you mean? I give you a chance and you don't know how to appreciate it? Today, either you kneel, or I'll break your knees. Yi Chen pretended to be scared, his body trembling, almost sitting on the ground. In the end, he quickly picked up the bills from the ground, estimated to be around 100,000. Holding the money, Yi Chen approached Hei Hu, bowing repeatedly to Hei Hu and Zhou Ying. Brother Hu, Sister Ying, I really can't take it anymore. Just consider me ignorant. Can you let me go this time? To show my apology, I'll take only this 10 million, the rest can be considered as compensation for Sister Ying. After speaking, Yi Chen looked at Zhou Ying again and asked, Sister Ying, is this acceptable? Are you saying that the remaining 3 million is all mine? Zhou Ying was shocked by Yi Chen's words in an instant. Originally, she had asked Hei Hu to come over today to vent her anger, feeling aggrieved inside, wanting to embarrass Yi Chen, and had never thought about this money. She knew that even if Hei Hu got a share of the 10 million, he wouldn't give her a penny. But as a woman of the big brother, it was still possible to get some benefits. Zhou Ying did not expect that Ji Chen would give her all the remaining 3 million just because he didn't want to kneel down. Is he a fool? If kneeling down could get her 3 million, Zhou Ying would be willing to kneel every day. Yi Chen quickly nodded and looked at Zhou Ying with a pleasing look, then said, Sister Ring, you are generous and forgiving, take all the money, I'll just take this 10,000, find a place to live an ordinary life, okay? 
Zhou Ying fell into deep thought, she hadn't made up her mind yet, but Hei Hu whispered a few words in his ear, and after listening, Zhou Ying looked at Ji Chen. Oomph, beggar, you know your place, we'll take this money, you better leave now, don't let me see you again. Yi Chen quickly nodded, but Hei Hu asked Yi Chen to stay, to help him move the money to the car downstairs. They had come by car, and in order to embezzle this money, they didn't even bring their men. Yi Chen naturally agreed wholeheartedly, found a canvas bag in the house, and Hei Hu packed the money into the car downstairs bag by bag, while Zhou Ying guarded the money pile inside the house. Every time Yi Chen came up, she would say a few harsh words to humiliate him, her face filled with satisfaction. After all the money was loaded into Hei Hu's car, Yi Chen deliberately took two banknotes from the car under Hei Hu's nose, showing his unwillingness and greed to the fullest. Hei Hu saw it but didn't care at all, just laughed and scolded Yi Chen as a bumpkin. All right, I'll consider you a sensible kid. When the money runs out, tell me, I'll definitely give you the lowest interest, got it, kid? After getting in the car, Hei Hu held the steering wheel, his face about to bloom with a smile. Hee hee, okay, thanks, tiger brother, thanks, sistering, take care. Yi Chen stood next to the car, waving goodbye to the two fools. After the car drove away, Yi Chen instantly changed his expression. Damn, he had just acted so aggrieved, almost revealing his true intentions. He even wanted the young master to kneel down, dreaming. But Hei Hu was really good at doing business, taking the young master's money, lending it back to him, and collecting interest from him, a business genius. Yi Chen smiled, not taking it seriously at all, he returned alone to the rundown house, found a lighter, and burned all the banknotes he had left behind, then rushed into the sewer. After doing all this, Yi Chen looked around the rundown house, it was over, finally over. A new life began. Of course, before the new life began, Yi Chen took out his phone and made a call. Hello, police uncle? I suspect someone is making counterfeit money, the amount is huge, conservatively estimated to be over 10 million. After leaving his detailed information, Yi Chen hung up and took a taxi to the parking lot, driving back to the city. Hei Hu had been able to survive in this business until now because of the complex local connections, so Yi Chen specifically found the police hotline in the new city area. For big crimes like Hei Hu's, once the amount reaches a certain level, he would probably spend the rest of his life in prison. And Hei Hu couldn't directly deposit all the 10 million cash at once, Yi Chen even suspected that Hei Hu hadn't deposited the previous 1.28 million in the bank, otherwise, it would have been exposed long ago. As Yi Chen pondered, he returned to the Bayanjian Grand Hotel, actually, at first, Yi Chen didn't intend to make a big deal out of this matter, just wanted to teach Hei Hu a lesson. But Hei Hu was the kind of person who wouldn't be satisfied with just a simple lesson. Yi Chen knew that leaving him alone would only lead to more trouble in the future. The thought of the dark years he had endured made Yi Chen shudder, constantly harassed for debts, restless sleep, waking up in the middle of the night, even losing hair due to stress. He never wanted to go back to that kind of life. Upon returning to Bayanjian, the first thing Yi Chen did was to find manager Guo. Based on manager Guo's attitude towards Li Xiaoqing last night, it seemed that he wasn't afraid of him. Yi Chen was curious as to why manager Guo didn't seem to care about Li Xiaoqing, perhaps because Bayanjian was under the Bai family group, and a small figure like Li Xiaoqing didn't matter to him. Yi Chen called manager Guo and inquired about the underground trading market for jade and antiques in Zhanghai City, commonly known as the Black Market. Yi Chen's guess was correct, manager Guo was indeed well informed in this area which was why he could provide the best service to guests in the presidential suite. From manager Guo, Yi Chen learned that there was a gambling street in the new city district, where all kinds of people gathered. Due to the lack of a standard market price for antiques and jade, transactions were hard to trace, leading to an increase in black market activities on the gambling street. After obtaining the address of the gambling street, Yi Chen sent manager Guo away, giving him a generous tip of 50,000 yuan. Knowledge is wealth in today's world, and being well informed is part of that knowledge. Yi Chen was willing to pay for it. With this money, Yi Chen not only received valuable information but also manager Guo's assurance that he could rely on him for help in Bayanjian. Before leaving, manager Guo revealed his name to Yi Chen to Guo Wanda. Yi Chen thought the name was good, but it was irrelevant to what he needed to do. After learning the address of the gambling street, Yi Chen prepared to head there. 
However, at that moment, Yi Chen received a follow-up call from the police regarding the earlier report, informing him that Hei Hu had been apprehended and requesting his cooperation in the investigation and identification process. Yi Chen knew he couldn't avoid this, so he drove directly to the police station in the new city district. Upon meeting Hei Hu, Hei Hu immediately started cursing at Yi Chen before frantically telling the police that the money wasn't his, but given to him by Yi Chen. The police officer in charge of Hei Hu was Wang Zhang, the captain of this area's police station. Before Yi Chen arrived, Wang Zhang had briefly investigated Yi Chen's background and his relationship with Hei Hu. They knew Hei Hu was involved in usury and had been exploiting legal loopholes for years. This time, they received Yi Chen's report and raided Hei Hu's bar and home, finding over 10 million yuan in counterfeit bills neatly arranged on Hei Hu's bed. In this system, Wang Zhang knew that Hei Hu had connections, but this time Hei Hu had crossed the line with over 10 million yuan in counterfeit bills, a charge that couldn't be washed away. Hei Hu, be honest, you're a repeat offender. Wang Zhang knocked on the table hard, but Hei Hu didn't stop talking. Instead, he cheekily said, Hey, Captain Wang, I'm not a habitual offender. I've always respected the law for so many years and haven't done anything harmful to others. You haven't harmed people by lending money at high interest rates? Wang Zhang retorted. But you guys emphasize evidence, right, Captain Wang? Hei Hu chuckled, not taking it seriously at all, even turning the tables on Wang Zhang. Evidence? Wang Zheng slammed the table again and threw a photo in front of Hei Hu. It was a photo of counterfeit money found by a team on an external mission at Hei Hu's house. This is the evidence. I told you that's not mine, that kid gave it to me. Hei Hu raised his head, his eyes emitting a chilling light, staring at Yi Chun firmly, half smiling, good kid, I wonder why you kept giving me money one after another. It turns out all these bills are problematic. Trying to frame me is a serious crime. Wait until I get out and deal with you properly. Hei Hu, watch your words. Dare you threaten someone in front of me? Wang Zhang glared at Hei Hu, then turned back. Your name is Yi Chen, right? Please come over for questioning. Just now you heard Hei Hu accusing you of giving him this money and saying you stole from the jewelry store, getting a million in stolen goods. Yi Chen had been watching the show on the side for a long time, knowing exactly what Hei Hu was up to. Since he had set up this trap in the first place, he had thought about how Hei Hu would turn the tables. Having been in the underworld for so many years, Hei Hu still had some tricks up his sleeve, so Yi Chen had planned carefully. Facing Wang Zhang's questions, Yi Chen remained composed and said, Officer, I didn't steal from the jewelry store or sell stolen goods. But I did recently sell a batch of gold worth millions, and I've almost spent all my money. A million? Almost spent it? Wang Zhang was taken aback and asked, But Hei Hu said you sold it yesterday, so how did you almost spend it? Yi Chen nodded and said, I bought a car for 1.5 million, booked a presidential suite at Bayunjian Hotel for over 6 million for a year, and I had borrowed money from Hei Hu before, then he forced me to borrow a lot of small loans online. After repaying them, I had over 3 million left, all of which you can verify at the bank. Yi Chen's words sent a chill down Hei Hu's and the two police officers' spines, including Wang Zhang. They had heard of people getting rich overnight and spending recklessly, but they had never seen someone like Yi Chen. With just a million, even a fool would know to buy a house first, but Yi Chen spent over 6 million on a presidential suite for a year? Spending over 7 million in a day, this was truly. Wang Zhang didn't know what to say for a moment. He had been handling cases for many years and had seen some people who struck it rich and then got scammed before coming to report it, but Yi Chen's case was indeed unique. Hei Hu's accusation wasn't without loopholes. Yi Chen did profit a million, but the problem was how he got these counterfeit bills with duplicate serial numbers. What troubled Wang Zheng even more was that these counterfeit bills with duplicate serial numbers, apart from the duplicate numbers, were all genuine when checked by the counterfeit detector. This kind of rarity was a first for Wang Zhang, and he wanted to hear what Yi Chen had to say. How did you know about the issue with the million counterfeit bills? Is it really a million? Yi Chen pretended to be surprised and then said, I guessed. I had borrowed money from Hei Hu before, and he always gave me to borrow money, and when I refused, you sent people to beat me. Hei Hu, let me tell you, 
Now it's karma coming back. You think you can bite back when I become successful? Dream on. Yi Chen deliberately became more agitated as he spoke, even showing veins on his forehead, as if he couldn't resist attacking Hei Hu. Wang Zheng quickly pulled Yi Chen away. Comrade, I understand your feelings, but this is an interrogation room. Hei Hu's crimes will be judged accordingly. Yi Chen didn't know if he was acting convincingly, after all, Wang Zheng was experienced in this work, he might see through it. But do one's best and leave the rest to fate. Perhaps the treasure bowl was arranged by fate. With this in mind, Yi Chen decided to go along with Wang Zheng's offer. On the way back, Yi Chen checked how many years Hei Hu would be sentenced to. There are two possibilities, a minimum of three years and a maximum of ten years of imprisonment. As for the serious cases, the amount involved in the Black Tiger case is not small. He is a key figure, with a minimum sentence of over ten years and a maximum of life imprisonment. Although he has not been convicted yet, there is a process to go through. It's not something that can be resolved in a day or two, so Yi Chen is not in a hurry. What surprised Yi Chen was that Zhou Ying was not arrested along with them. He didn't know if Zhou Ying had abandoned Black Tiger at the last moment, or if Black Tiger had protected Zhou Ying. Yi Chen was not interested in this. Zhou Ying had not reached the point of committing heinous crimes. She just hadn't learned her lesson this time, and she would hold a grudge. Thinking about this, Yi Chen opened QQ and found that Zhou Ying had sent him a message. Zhou Ying, beggar, you think you're capable, but this matter won't end so easily. Zhou Ying, Xiaoya said she would help me out, so just wait. Zhou Ying, you can scheme against Black Tiger, try scheming against Li Xiaoqing. His father is Li Zhangda, the chairman of the Li Group. Zhou Ying, you've only made a small fortune, without connections in society, you're nothing. After reading this, Yi Chen felt that Zhou Ying was probably going crazy. He had been drifting aimlessly for the past two years, with a dim future ahead, but he didn't blame others. How come when it came to Zhou Ying, she couldn't stand seeing others doing well? Wasn't it just his turn for good luck? He couldn't even have a bit of good fortune for himself? Ridiculous. Thinking this, Yi Chen picked a panda meme from his collection, where the panda was raising its arms in a fierce manner, and said, if I had money, I would send this meme. Yi Chen, sent a meme. Yi Chen, here, make money properly. We're still young, there are plenty of opportunities. After sending it, Yi Chen thought his attitude was good enough, right? If it was good enough, he directly opened Zhou Ying's profile page and added her to the blacklist. All right, he wouldn't have to listen to this woman's chatter anymore. As the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. Next, go to the gambling street? Of course not. Yi Chen felt he should enjoy the life of the wealthy, or else what was the point of having money? At most, this was just the daily life of the wealthy. Yi Chen decided to do something different. Hello, room service? Hello, Mr. Yi, I am your butler for the presidential suite. Do you need anything? Yes, yes, do we have instant noodles in the hotel? What? Instant noodles? Yes, instant noodles. Get me a bucket of old sour cabbage beef noodles. But? Mr. Yi, the hotel doesn't, doesn't provide instant noodles. Then can't you go buy it for me? Yes, yes, Mr. Yi, I'll go now. This was a strange conversation. After Yi Chen hung up the phone, the butler of the presidential suite was left bewildered. Eating instant noodles in a presidential suite? It was indeed a strange request, but the butler had to fulfill all the needs of the guests, so he had to go buy it. Meanwhile, Wo Wanda also received a call from Yi Chen, asking him to bring some seafood over. This was simple. The restaurant at the Bayun Hotel had chefs from around the world on call 24 hours a day, and the seafood was always in season. There was even an aquarium with a very complete supply chain. But when Guo Wanda and the restaurant staff arrived at Yi Chen's room pushing a food cart, they were stunned. Not only did they smell instant noodles, but when they arrived at the reception room to prepare the meal for Yi Chen, they found a bucket of instant noodles on the table. Mr. Yi, this. What are you standing there for? Serve it up for me. 
Yi Chen tapped the table, lifted the lid of the instant noodles, and a strong smell of old sour cabbage filled the room, leaving the staff and Guowanda looking puzzled. But they couldn't just stand there, so Guowanda quickly instructed the staff to set the table, and then opened the lid one by one. Oh my goodness, this plate is huge, I've never seen such a big crab before. Yi Chen had just sighed when a staff member under his hand couldn't help but laugh, making the situation extremely awkward for a moment. After the staff member finished laughing, he realized he was in trouble, and Guo Wanda quickly glared at him. Embarrassing thing, disturbing Mr. Yezmiel, you better get out of here. Just as the staff member was about to flee, Yi Chen stopped him. Hey, don't go, don't go. Manager Guo, look at you. It's okay to laugh. Stay here and watch me eat. Yi Chen then pointed at the crab in front of him, almost as wide as his upper body, and asked, What kind of crab is this? It's huge. Guo Wanda's face turned extremely embarrassed because his staff member had ruined the atmosphere. He didn't know what Yi Chen was up to, so he had to say, Mr. Yi, this is the emperor crab, the heaviest crab in the world. It is said that the heaviest can grow up to 72 caddies. This one is a bit smaller, only about 23 caddies, but its growth cycle is very slow, usually taking more than 10 years to grow 7 or 8 caddies. It takes more than 10 years to grow 7 or 8 caddies, wow, this guy is older than me. It must be expensive, right? Yi Chen casually asked, then tapped the crab shell with tongs. It's not very expensive, but emperor crabs are mostly out of stock now, and the market price has been driven up to 700 or 800 per caddy. This one is around 16,000 at market price, Wawanda explained. Wow, that's almost the cost of a day's room rate. If guests staying in the presidential suite come to eat your emperor crabs every day, won't you lose money? Yi Chen said, then realized it wasn't right and asked, wait, do I have to pay later? Guo Wanda quickly shook his head and explained, you misunderstood, Mr. Yi. Ordinary guests need to pay extra for such expensive seafood. Our restaurant only provides free regular meals, but you have booked our white cloud suite for a year, and these are all complimentary. After explaining, Guo Wanda was also very embarrassed. If he had known that Yi Chen ordered a table of seafood to go with instant noodles, he wouldn't have gone so extravagant. Knowing that a guest had booked the presidential suite for a year, the higher-ups directly instructed Guo Wanda to take good care of him. Just this table of seafood alone cost nearly a hundred thousand. But now, it's paired with instant noodles. Okay, it's free, but even if I had to pay, I'm not short of money. Looking at the table full of seafood and the bowl of fragrant instant noodles in front of him, Yi Chen called out, Come on, don't just stand there. These seafood shells are so hard, help me peel them. Hearing Yi Chen's words, and with Guo Wanda's signal, the staff quickly put on gloves and masks to help Yi Chen deal with the seafood. Don't throw away this crab row, yes, I want to mix it with noodles. Sashimi? I don't eat it that way. Give me some cumin, I like the taste of night market stalls. What is this Roche Marsh shrimp? It tastes no different from regular shrimp. You say this is Australian black lip abalone? Wow, this black lip is so stimulating. Why doesn't this coconut crab taste like coconut? Bad review. A table full of seafood, paired with egg added old pickle beef noodles, that refreshing taste, to be honest, with Yi Chen's way of eating, he really made the staff around the table drool, including Guo Wanda. Honestly, they have served guests seafood before, removing meat from shells is a common task, but seafood is usually cooked in a few ways, either boiled, pan-fried, salt-baked, or eaten raw. The ingredients are also limited, usually just see salt or mustard and lemon. But like Yi Chen, eating a table of seafood worth tens of thousands with instant noodles, the pungent and irresistible taste of the old pickle cabbage really whetted their appetites. Finally, the instant noodle soup mixed with rich crab roe. This is refreshing, very authentic. Yi Chen ate and drank to his heart's content, making everyone swallow their saliva. Mr. Yi, your way of eating is high class, Wawanda praised, giving a thumbs up. Is this a high level of praise or a high level of derogation? Yi Chen asked. Guo Wanda quickly waved his hand and explained, Of course it's a high level of praise, and it comes from the bottom of my heart. Mr. Yi, to be honest, we have indeed entertained a few wealthy and lottery-winning guests before, but they were pretentious and affected when eating, 
as if suddenly their lives had become precious. But Mr. Yi, you are different. You are the most down-to-earth person I have ever met. The seafood worth a hundred thousand yuan that you are eating should be the most comfortable, more relaxed than those who pretend to know how to eat. Really? Of course, it's the truth, Wawanda said firmly. Yi Chen smiled, not taking it seriously. Regardless of whether Guo Wanda was sincere or not, the last sentence he said was right. This table of seafood, eaten in Yi Chen's style, was indeed the most comfortable and relaxed for him. If Yi Chen followed the formal procedures, he might find it boring. There was a joke online before, saying that in ancient times, two old farmers were imagining the luxurious life of an emperor. One of them said the emperor must eat white flour buns every day until full, while the other said it must be more than that, the emperor must even use a golden hoe in the fields. This joke was used to mock those whose imaginations were limited by poverty, but Yi Chen felt that the emperor and the farmers were completely different worlds, and comparing them was letting a sense of superiority take over. If he were to transform from a farmer to an emperor, he would probably end up eating white flour. Buns every day until full and using a golden hoe in the fields. If he, as the emperor, couldn't even indulge in a small fantasy from his poor days, then what was the point of becoming an emperor? They were all born the same way, so why should there be such a strong sense of superiority? Mr. Yi, should we remove these? Guo Wanda, standing on the side, tentatively asked. Yi Chen nodded, waved his hand, and said, Remove them, let them all leave, you stay. After everyone had left, Wu Wanda asked, Mr. Yi, is there anything else you need? Well, I want to ask about Li Shacking. As soon as Yi Chen spoke, Wu Wanda asked, What? Mr. Yi, did he affect your stay experience? No, I just want to ask, how much do you know about the Li group? The Li group? Wu Wanda narrowed his eyes, recalling the conflict between Yi Chen and Li Shacking in the lobby, and said truthfully, there's not much to say about the Li group. It's a pillar in the Zhanghai real estate industry, on par with the major real estate developers in Beijing. They are currently preparing to bid for some hot land parcels. If successful, they can establish a strong foothold and even subtly compress market share. Subtly? Before this, Yi Chen had no understanding of the Zhanghai market landscape, let alone heard of it, as his world was all about making money, paying off debts, and making more money. Now, hearing Guo Wanda talk about this, he naturally didn't understand. How subtly. The Li Group can monopolize the real estate sector around Zhanghai and expand to other provinces, becoming a leading enterprise in the real estate sector. That impressive? Yi Chen had doubts. If it was true, why would Guo Wanda help him? He should be currying favor with Li Shaking. Yi Chen asked his question, and Guo Wanda, in a rare display of disdain, replied, Mr. Yi, you may not understand the undercurrents. Zheng Hai recently held a sports event, gaining prominence among many top-tier cities. Every sector has seen unprecedented development, with GDP soaring. Everyone wants a piece of the pie, bankruptcies happen every day, but so do new entrants filling the gap. At this time, breaking through the encirclement for the Li Group is not so easy especially since our chairman Bai also wants to enter the real estate industry. Let's see who will have the last laugh. Clearly, Guo Wanda was proud of being associated with the Li Group of Pride is not superiority, these two are different. But now Yi Chen seems to have figured out why Guo Wanda stood up against Li Xiaoqing at that time. With the Bai Group entering the real estate industry, those two families are bound to collide and friction will arise. At that time, these two will be competitors, and as a member of the Bai group, does Guo Wanda need to give face to the Li group? Of course not. However, Guo Wanda may have realized that his previous attitude was a bit arrogant, not the attitude that the service industry should have, so he slightly bent over and changed the subject, Mr. Yi, do you have any plans for asking this? Yi Chen was not prepared to hide it from Guo Wanda, and openly said, Hey, I heard you say that Zheng Hai has made unprecedented developments in various fields. It's changing rapidly, and I also want to get a piece of the action. Earlier, Li Xiaoqing made a lot of noise in the hall, with his entire fortune of 10 million, making a windfall, selling gold, which had already spread. In addition, with the police station filing a case, and Zhoing being a big mouth, Yi Chen didn't expect to keep it a secret. Acting arrogant externally might actually make people lower their guard. 
But when Yi Chen said this, a hint of worry appeared on Wo Wanda's face. After thinking it over, he couldn't help but say, Mr. Yi, although I am just a worker, I have seen a lot with the big boss this time. Honestly, investing millions in Zhang Hai's muddy waters, you can't catch any fish. Yi Chen knew what Guo Wanda meant. He thought that his entire fortune was just 10 million, as Li Xiaoqing had said, and he had spent over 6 million extravagantly on staying in the presidential suite. Thinking of this, Yi Chen smiled mysteriously. How do you know I only have a few million left? This. Guo Wanda quickly closed his mouth, realizing he shouldn't say more. That was the guest's privacy, and he had already crossed the line. Yi Chen didn't mind, he thought Guo Wanda was a smart person with his own ideas, otherwise he wouldn't have reached his current position. Although he was still working for someone else, Guo Wanda was already considered successful among his peers. How many outstanding people are there in this world? We only see the achievements of successful people, but in reality, 99% of people are just like you and me, ordinary people. After Guo Wanda left, Yi Chen began to plan. Zheng Hai is now rapidly developing in all areas, and competition is fierce, but that doesn't mean companies can't survive. Just like sifting sand, after Zheng Hai's unprecedented development, those who survive in the competition will be well fed. This is an opportunity, although it can't be guaranteed that pigs can fly, as long as you have capital, you can enter the game. Whether you end up losing everything or making a fortune depends on your abilities. Undoubtedly, Yi Chen wants to enter the game, to enter the Serena. He has had enough of an ordinary life and doesn't want to be tainted like the wealthy. He wants to become the world's richest man, but he doesn't want to take the normal path. After the lie of getting rich first and then helping others get rich was exposed, everyone understood a truth, the richer the rich get, the poorer the poor become. It's unknown how long it takes for an ordinary person to save their first bucket of gold in life, while the rich have very few who can expand their assets to the point where money is just a number. Yi Chen is different, money is just a number to him now, he can have as much as he wants. But money is the easiest thing to cause friction, and with friction comes opposition, and that's how wars start. So for Yi Chen, he either becomes a parasite or he becomes the best, the world's number one. Clearly, Yi Chen doesn't want to be the former. With this in mind, Yi Chen once again affirmed his direction. Given this opportunity by fate, it could be considered the accumulation of blessings from his ancestors. Otherwise, he wouldn't have inherited this treasure trove. Yi Chen doesn't want to waste such a good opportunity, no matter how Zhanghai City thrives, no matter how the birds sing, he will soar to the sky and make a stunning appearance. As for just now, instant noodles paired with seafood worth 100,000 yuan was just a small act of indulgence. Standing in the sweets gym in front of the floor to ceiling windows, Beneath his feet was the vast night view of the sea, and Yi Chen felt a thousand emotions in his heart. He wanted to tell the sea that he had arrived, that Yi Chen was going to transform into a soaring dragon here. But the sea was just too vast, and countless dreams shattered here every day, yet there were always people continuously climbing up, continuously jumping back into this big pit. Now, it was Yi Chen's turn to jump. Just as Yi Chen's heart was in turmoil, his phone rang, it was an unfamiliar number but it sounded somewhat familiar. Yi Chen answered the phone with confusion, and on the other end was the voice of Yang Datong. Mr. Yi, do you remember me, Yang? Yi Chen's heart tightened, for some reason he felt nervous, but he still casually replied, of course I remember, Mr. Yang's generosity is truly unforgettable. It was just mutual flattery in business, but being able to easily produce tens of millions in liquid funds indeed proved Yang Datong's extraordinary wealth. Yi Chen then asked Yang Datong why he called, could it be about the issue with the gold? Yang Datong quickly denied it, but then his voice lowered and said, Mr. Yi, today a certain official surnamed Wang from the Xinqing District Police Station called me, asking if you sold a batch of gold at our jewelry store. Mr. Yi, there shouldn't be any problem with the source of this gold, right? This was within Yi Chen's expectations, so he was not surprised, and he straightforwardly said, just a small misunderstanding. It's actually Mr. Yang's friend Black Tiger who counterfeited money, I heard the amount was as high as tens of millions, and he got caught, I wonder if Mr. Yang knows about this. Black Tiger got caught? On the phone, Yang Datong was indeed a bit surprised, but he immediately corrected himself, saying, but Mr. Yi, you may have misunderstood, Yang has no friendship with Black Tiger, he is not worthy. 
Oh, I see. Yi Chen didn't reveal anything, and followed Yang Datong's words, so, what does Mr. Yang want to talk to me about? Since they were getting to the point, Yang Datong on the other end of the phone didn't beat around the bush. Mr. Yi is so straightforward, Yang won't beat around the bush either, I know Mr. Yi must still have a lot of goods on hand, right? How about this, Yang will take them all, what do you think, Mr. Yi? All the goods, taken all at once? Yi Chen chuckled inwardly, thinking that he might just overwhelm you if he made a mistake and got too much, you might be suffocated. But of course, Yi Chen didn't say that on the surface, instead he said, I wonder how much Mr. Yang is willing to spend on this meal? Upon hearing this, Yang Datong on the phone was stunned for a moment, then smirked disdainfully. Yes, he smirked disdainfully, Yang Datong felt challenged, as if Yi Chen was challenging his pocket money with his annual income. Mr. Yi, are you worried that Yang won't be able to eat it all? Previously, Yi Chen was insecure due to lack of money, but now that he had his first pot of gold, his confidence had grown, and he began to slowly figure out how the so-called wealthy people made a living. He didn't hesitate to say, Hey, Mr. Yang, how about I start with some appetizers for you? How much? 120 caddies. That's not much. Yang Datong didn't take it seriously at all, and said nonchalantly, I can trade any time. All right, I'll visit Mr. Yang's store tomorrow. Yi Chen said, I'll discuss the main course with Mr. Yang at that time, and these 120 caddies of hard goods will serve as an appetizer for Mr. Yang. Okay, I'll wait for Mr. Ye's message. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chen's thoughts changed once again. Initially, he wasn't planning to sell the remaining gold to Yang Datong, but Guo Wanda's words filled Yi Chen with great ambition. He wanted to make a career here in the sea, stir things up first and then see. With the treasure. Trove, there were so many ways to get rich, just replicate some precious metals or diamonds, and you could make a fortune, millions? Haha, ha, you need to add another billion as the unit. But we can't do that now. The bigger the tree, the more attention it attracts. If the funds are not from a legitimate source, it's too easy to be investigated. Take today's visit to the Xinqing District Police Station, for example. Yi Chen felt that Wang Zhang didn't really dispel his suspicions. So we have to take it step by step. When the scale is large enough, then we can go wild. Just like making money for eating, drinking, and having fun, Yi Chen makes money to go wild. How to go wild? Mixing a $5 instant noodle with a hundred thousand worth of seafood is considered going wild. They say, do not do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. Yi Chen's way of going wild is to make everyone think that instant noodles with seafood are delicious. This is called being willful, going wild. But this requires steps. Yi Chen doesn't want to be idle all his life, living in a dream world, and eventually dying in a woman's arms. The treasure trove is in Yi Chen's hands, destined to make a career out of it. The whole world is waiting for Yi Chen, waiting for Yi Chen to make a change. No more words. Yi Chen is not someone who talks big. Since Yang Datong wants to whet his appetite, let's consider these 120 pounds of gold as a dowry. However, it would be a waste of time to melt these gold bars overnight. Fortunately, when he came out of the dilapidated house, Yi Chen had brought the graphite crucible and blowtorch with him. Yi Chen glanced at the time and should be able to make the trade before tomorrow. It's just 30 odd gold bars, already successfully smelted once, so this time should be a piece of cake. The next day, Yi Chen arrived at Yang Datong's gold shop with the smelted gold bars. The receptionist had changed, with a big wave hairstyle and an hourglass figure, especially those big eyes that seemed to speak. Boss Young, this storefront looks great, instantly elevating the class. Yi Chen joked, then followed Yang Daton to the back room to complete the transaction. 32 gold bars, 121.6 pounds, which is 60,800 grams, priced at the same rate as last time, totaling 22.8 million. Yang Daton transferred the money directly to Yi Chen's account without delay. Soon, Yi Chen received a text notification on his phone. 22.8 million. For some reason, when Yi Chen saw this number, did he feel any emotions? Indeed, once money reaches a certain amount, it really is no different from just numbers. However, Yang Datong showed no interest in the pile of gold, leaning back on the chair and starting to sip his tea leisurely. 
Yi Chen knew that Yang Datong had other intentions, but he wasn't in a hurry. He also casually sipped his tea, seeing who would lose patience first. In fact, Yang Datong was very curious. After the phone call last night, he had his men investigate Yi Chen's relationship with Black Tiger and even sent someone to the police station to find out about Black Tiger's situation. The results surprised Yang Datong. A poor guy who borrowed high interest loans from Black Tiger, rolled over hundreds of thousands in two years, almost bankrupted, and nearly lost everything, how did he suddenly have so much gold? Where did this batch of gold come from? The news of Black Tiger being arrested came suddenly, and Yang Datong didn't receive any information until he talked to Yi Chen. When he first heard this news, Yang Datong was shocked, but he immediately distanced himself from Black Tiger in front of Yi Chen. It wasn't to impress Yi Chen. With Yang Datong's wealth, he didn't need to please Yi Chen. It's just that he really didn't have a deep relationship with Black Tiger. As he said, Black Tiger was not worthy of being his friend, at most just a lackey. But Yang Datong was curious. He was curious about how Yi Chen turned the tables, which was almost impossible for an ordinary person. What surprised Yang Datong even more was that his men found out that after Yi Chen got the money, he first bought a 1.5 million car at the 4S store, then booked a presidential suite at the Bayun River Hotel for a year. I have seen people become arrogant after winning the lottery, but I have never seen anyone as arrogant as this. Another thing is the Black Tiger. Although Yang Datong is not considered a friend of the Black Tiger, based on his understanding of the Black Tiger, even if the Black Tiger were given a hundred times more courage, he would not dare to counterfeit money, let alone counterfeit 10 million. After some reasoning, all fingers point to Yi Chen, but Yang Datong feels that things are not so simple. If it really was Yi Chen who did it, Yang Datong is very curious about how he did it. Mr. Yi said that after the appetizer, there is still the main course. I wonder what the main course is. Hearing Yang Datong say this, Yi Chen knew that he couldn't resist anymore and smiled faintly. He he, Mr. Yang, even 180 pounds of gold is not enough for you to eat. It seems that this gold doesn't suit your taste. Would you like something else? This is exactly what Yang Datong wanted to hear. He was genuinely curious about what else Yi Chen had in his hands. Gold is good, but its price depends on the foreigner's mood. It changes. Every day, so the association is not very concerned about gold trading. Is Mr. Yang talking about the Zhanghai Jade Association? Yi Chen asked. Yang Datong nodded, yes, Mr. Yi is also a member of the association now. The annual Jade Exchange Conference is about to take place, and there will be a grand auction. I wonder if Mr. Yi has any interest. He he. Yi Chen smiled and said, Mr. Yang, you should know me better than anyone else. With my assets plus the recent transaction of 22.8 million, it's less than 30 million in total. What can you expect me to bring to the auction? Yang Datong did not expect Yi Chen to be so secretive, so he said, celebrities from all walks of life and members of the association will attend. If Mr. Yi has nothing to auction, you can still go and see if there is anything you like. Yi Chen shook his head, no, the membership threshold is so high, I guess the items inside are not cheap. Yang Datong was definitely not happy to hear this. He had shown his sincerity, but Yi Chen did not reciprocate, which was equivalent to playing him. But Yi Chen did this on purpose. He deliberately teased Yang Datong, waiting for him to show a hint of displeasure before saying, but if Mr. Yang is still hungry, you can tell me what dish you want to eat, and I can arrange it. Arrange it? Yan Datong was stunned, do you have something other than gold in your hands? After asking, Yang Datong felt that something was not right and asked again, what else? Yi Chen shook his head again, there are things I cannot tell Mr. Yang, but I do have some channels to get what you want. Channels? Now Yang Datong was even more confused. He had investigated Yi Chen, and how could this poor guy suddenly have such connections? If he had connections, why would he be in this situation? But further probing would invade privacy, and Yi Chen would not reveal more. Yang Datong didn't want to be a killjoy, so he changed the subject, since Mr. Yi has connections, I happen to be helping a friend recover some diamonds recently. I wonder. Diamonds? Yi Chen interrupted Yang Datong. He could certainly get diamonds, 
but the quantity was too large, and the transaction amount would be significant, which would entail risks. Yi Chen was not worried about risks from Yang Datong's side, but from external sources, such as Wang Zhang. Just as he thought of Wang Zhang, Yi Chen's phone rang. Seeing the number, it was indeed a call from the Xinqing District Police Station. Without hesitation, Yi Chen gave Yang Datong a look and answered the phone. Hello, Captain Wang, is there something else? Yi Chen, we saw that your account just received another 22.8 million. Can you explain the source of this fund? It was Wang Zhang speaking, his voice quite calm and confident, as if he held all the cards, but this did not make Yi Chen nervous. On the way here, he had already thought that his account was likely to have been locked by Wang Zhang's side, so he had prepared his words early. It was not a seamless trick, just a non-answer question, Captain Wang, do you have any questions? No questions, but Yi Chen, we have investigated your past. With your experience and your family's background, it's difficult to explain such a large sum of money coming in. Oh? You investigated me, but why didn't you investigate me before? When I was almost destroyed by the Black Tiger and my family was on the verge of ruin. With one sentence, Yi Chen shut down all of Wang Zhang's words again. Wang Zhang remained silent on the other end, so Yi Chen hung up the phone directly. Since he was already being watched, he decided to take action. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chen directly said to Yang Daton, Boss Yang, I haven't sorted out the channel for diamonds yet, but there may be opportunities for cooperation in the future. I have a batch of pure gold here. Are you interested, Boss Yang? How much? One billion. Yi Chen thought about it. Plans can't keep up with changes. Since he was being watched, he decided to act decisively and quickly fill up his first pot of gold. Diamonds were obviously not possible. Gold could still be said to be inherited from ancestors, but saying the same for diamonds would be a stretch. Moreover, diamond transactions involve too much money and are difficult to control. However, it seemed that one billion did not scare Yang Datong. He just slightly changed his facial expression and said, one billion is not a problem, but Mr. Yi, I don't have that much liquid capital in my account. Give me two days to prepare, how about that? There is indeed a difference between net worth and cash on hand. One billion in disposable cash is not something an ordinary person can come up with. But the fact that Yang Datong only needed two days surprised Yi Chen. So he agreed decisively. However, this time Yi Chen was more cunning. Today, he only brought 30 gold bars, but in fact, the remaining gold had been melted into a total of 31 gold bars. Yi Chen deliberately kept one bar so that he could directly replicate it using the treasure basin, without the need to melt it again. After agreeing on a time, Yi Chen got up to leave. Yang Datong seemed a bit worried and repeatedly said before Yi Chen left that he could prepare the money in two days, hoping that Yi Chen wouldn't go to someone else. Yi Chen could also see that Yang Datong really wanted to take this batch of goods. He didn't want Yi Chen to go to someone else, especially with so many wealthy precious metal recyclers in Zhanghai, especially with the Zhanghai Jade Association in the industry. Yang Datong regretted letting Yi Chen know about the association, otherwise, he felt he could have easily fooled Yi Chen. But Yi Chen was not a fool. He was as clear as a mirror in his heart. Otherwise, he wouldn't have acted so decisively earlier. Whether it was the previous 11.04 million or today's 22.8 million, it was not enough to be Yi Chen's first pot of gold. He set a small goal first, such as 1 billion. Of course, this 1 billion was not easy to come by. Just as Yi Chen returned to Baianjian, he received a call from Wang Zheng again, but this time it was a private number. As soon as the call connected, Wang Zheng said he hoped Yi Chen could cooperate with him. But before he could finish speaking, Yi Chen interrupted him. Captain Wang, I appreciate your concern, but is there anything wrong with my funds? Yi Chen had indeed done his homework carefully. There was no problem with his dealings with Yang Datong. It was not exploiting legal loopholes, there was simply no law that prohibited such actions. Wang Zheng sighed on the other end of the phone and said, Yi Chen, I am calling you in a personal capacity now. Oh? In a personal capacity. Yi Chen smiled and said, Okay, then I'll listen to how Captain Wang plans to talk to me about this matter in a personal capacity. 
Wang Zheng paused and began to speak with a serious tone. Yi Chen, you are still young, you have also attended university, you should know that money laundering is a serious crime, you can go to jail for it. Think about your parents, they are still, still hoping for me to get married, have grandchildren, right? Yi Chen continued along with Wang Zheng's words, and then you want to tell me that you will turn me into a tainted witness, and will not hold me accountable, right? You. Captain Wang, I won't beat around the bush with you. This gold is indeed left by my ancestors, but if you suspect me of laundering money for someone else, then I'm not willing. You are welcome to investigate me. I have said that I will cooperate with the investigation, but I hope you won't disturb my personal space. I have been poor for half of my life. Just because I have money now, does that mean everyone will start targeting me? If necessary, there is too much dirt to dig up on Black Tiger. Feel free to dig, it will keep you busy. Your current mindset is very dangerous, you will. Captain Wang, I wish you good health and all the best. You can solve any case you want. After saying that, Yi Chen hung up the phone. He was too lazy to argue with Wang Zhang, and another reason was that arguing too much could easily reveal something. Although there were no problems found with this gold, precisely because no problems were found, it would continue to be monitored. Why? Just because of a huge sum of money from an unknown source, Wang Zhang could initiate an investigation. Nowadays, having money alone is not enough, one must also have power to ensure that their position is unshakable. Yi Chen couldn't help but sigh. It seems that even with the treasure bowl, the road to becoming the world's richest person is still very far away. After hanging up on Wang Zhang, Yi Chen originally planned to visit the Jade Street. Although he could trade with Yang Di in two days, by then Yi Chen would have over a billion in cash on hand. But who would complain about having too little money? Before Wang Zhang called, Yi Chen had planned to go to the Jade Street to see if there was anything he could mess with, buy some back to replicate with the treasure bowl. But now Wang Zhang's call accelerated this process. Yi Chen was not going to the Jade Street anymore, he wanted to go back to school. Of course, Yi Chen was not going back to school to attend classes. He had been advised to drop out a long time ago. This time he was going back to find someone. Wu Yuwei. At the entrance of Zhanghai University, a brilliance stopped. Yi Chen got out of the car, there were many people coming and going, not many noticed Yi Chen. There were many luxury cars entering and leaving Zhanghai University every day, ranging from 5 to 600,000, 7 to 800,000, to over a million, but the brilliance was too easily mistaken for a Passat, especially since Yi Chen was dressed casually and had no accessories on him. Most people passing by didn't notice him. But Yi Chen didn't care about these things. He bought this car at the time to avoid attracting attention and to act low key. After getting off the car, Yi Chen called Wu Yue. Although the two had been in contact on their phones, Yi Chen felt it was better to talk to Wu Yue in person. When Wu Yue received Yi Chen's call, he was still a bit puzzled. When he heard that Yi Chen was at the entrance of Zhanghai University, he hurried out. It had been over a year since the two had last met. Wu Yue was still the same, wearing round glasses, looking thin, with short hair on both sides, giving him the appearance of an intellectual. Shen Gu When Wu Yue saw Yi Chen, he was very happy. Yi Chen seemed a bit different from what he remembered. Although the change was not significant, he thought that after Yi Chen made money, he would take care of himself, wear designer clothes, and so on. But now, apart from the car behind him, Yi Chen was no different from the Yi Chen he knew before. Just when there was no difference, Yi Chen's net worth was now in the tens of millions. Wu Yue rushed up wanting to give Yi Chen a brotherly hug, but the huge gap in their net worth made Wu Yue hesitate. You fool, what are you staring at? Yi Chen went up and kicked the kid, then gave him a hug. Wu Yue was a bit surprised. He didn't expect Yi Chen to be the same, not treating him any differently. Chen Gu, why did you suddenly come to find me? Wu Yue said, starting to size up Yi Chen's car, wow, isn't this a Passat? It's one size bigger than a Passat. Yi Chen nodded, your eyes are quite sharp. Hui Tang, let's go, get in the car and talk. Hui Tang? This must cost over a million, right? This car hasn't had a new model for a long time, 
but its performance is top-notch among business cars. Wu Yue felt the outline of the Hui Tang as if he were touching a girl, and Yi Chen flashed the lights twice, are you getting in the car or not? If you're not getting in, I'm leaving. Hey, I'm getting in, he he. Wu Yue chuckled twice and quickly got in. On the way, the two caught up on some things that had happened in the past few days, with a hint of nostalgia. Later, Yi Chen found a restaurant to have a meal. On the way, Wu Yue kept asking Yi Chen what was going on, but Yi Chen teased him and said he would talk about it when they arrived. Brother, we're both making money now. Shouldn't I treat you to a meal first? Of course, I have to treat you. Ha, huh, I can eat you poor. The two bantered as they got out of the car, but when Wu Yue saw the Grand White Cloud Hotel in front of him, he was taken aback by its luxurious entrance. Could this White Cloud Hotel be owned by the Bai Group? Yi Chen nodded and asked, Oh? You know about it too? How could I not know? Wu Yue opened up, the Bai Group has been on a roll these past two years. They used to be in the department store business, with several large shopping malls under their name. But suddenly they entered the restaurant industry, directly opening a five-star hotel, and later built a five-star hotel as well. They have a hand in clothing, food, housing, and transportation, almost three of them. With that, Wu Yue hesitated a bit. Chen Gu, you're making money for real, but isn't going to a five-star hotel a bit extravagant? I heard that the food in these hotels is more for show than for eating, with very little portion. It might cost us a lot to fill our stomachs. Should we forget it then? Yi Chen provocatively asked, how about we go to a place for skewers? Wu Yue showed no disappointment on his face, nodded firmly, and said, okay, let's go for skewers and beer. Forget it, let's go. I won't let you leave today until you're full. Yi Chen pushed Wu Yue jokingly, but even so, Wu Yue felt a bit out of place. The White Cloud Hotel also operated on a membership system. Dining in the main hall required pre-charging and getting a card, while various private rooms and special dishes required silver, gold, or black gold membership cards. When Yi Chen brought Wu Yue in, the gatekeeper initially wanted to stop them. Both of them were dressed casually, especially Wu Yue, who was even more shabby, clearly not suitable for such a place. However, Wu Wanda had already given the black gold supreme card to Yi Chen before, and Yi Chen directly presented the black gold card. The gatekeeper, upon seeing it, quickly retracted his hand that was about to stop them, his face filled with astonishment, and he stammered a welcome. Wu Yue didn't know the weight of that card, still talking about five-star hotels, thinking the gatekeeper was at that level. Yi Chen smiled without saying a word. The welcoming waiter who saw the black gold card in Yi Chen's hand quickly led them to the front desk. After swiping the card and confirming their identity, the front desk treated them as honored guests. Esteemed guest with the black gold supreme card, we are honored by your visit to the White Cloud Hotel. However, our high-end private rooms are full, but there is one regular private room available. Please wait a moment, we will quickly make a high-end private room available for you. Wu Yue suggested eating in the main hall, saying they didn't need a private room, but Yi Chen insisted. He told the front desk, let's not disturb others dining, just the regular private room. The front desk quickly nodded. They had never encountered such an understanding guest before. Mr. Yi, the regular private room has been reserved, we will inform the reservation holder not to come, wish you a pleasant dining experience, then. Before the front desk could finish speaking, a harsh voice suddenly came from behind. Waiter, is the private room I booked ready? I'm starving, lead the way. Yi Chen frowned and turned around. It was Li Xiaoqing and Su Xiaoya, the troublesome couple. How come you, a country bumpkin, are here? Coming to a five-star restaurant to eat, haven't you spent all that money yet? Yi Chen ignored Li Xiaoqing and locked eyes with Su Xiaoya. That night at the Baiyun Hotel, the two didn't exchange a word. To say that. Yi Chen had nothing to say to Su Xiaoya would be false, he had wanted to tell her, I have money now, come back to me. But Yi Chen didn't say it and he wouldn't have that thought again. All his feelings for Su Xiaoya were left behind that night, washed away with each glass of wine. But meeting again at the Baiyun Hotel today was not just a coincidence, it felt like fate was playing a cruel joke. What are you looking at? 
Li Xiaoqing sensed the eye contact between Yi Chen and Su Xiaoya, his face turning cold instantly. He pulled Su Xiaoya close and glared at Yi Chen, saying, She's not yours anymore, country bumpkin. It must feel terrible to have your woman stolen, right? As classmates, Wu Yue naturally knew about the past conflicts between the two, making the situation awkward. Should we go eat somewhere else? Wu Yue whispered to Yi Chen. But being so close, Li Xiaoqing overheard Wu Yue's words. His face lit up with a smirk as he pointed at Yi Chen, saying, Huh, did you hear that, country bumpkin? This lackey is suggesting you change the place. Just as he finished speaking, Li Xiaoqing turned to Wu Yue, sneering, And you, now that this country bumpkin has struck it rich, you become his lackey? Ha, huh, what a joke, when Yi Chen was broke and couldn't afford to eat, where were you? Just like those who fawn over him, disgusting. Who are you calling a lackey? Wu Yue was somewhat agitated but didn't know how to respond. Li Xiaoqing was used to being arrogant at school, and people feared his background. But Yi Chen wouldn't let him insult his brother like that. Others might not know, but Yi Chen did. When Wu Yue only had a monthly allowance of 1,000, he gave Yi Chen 500, for three consecutive months, before feeling embarrassed to continue. So he wouldn't let Li Xiaoqing humiliate his brother like that. Stepping forward, Yi Chen stared at Li Xiaoqing and said, Say that again? Li Xiaoqing was emboldened by Yi Chen's words and sneered, Oh, I did say it. What can you do to me? I said Wu Yue, this lackey, is a fair weather friend. You, country bumpkin, struck it rich and came to him for favors, can you? Before Li Xiaoqing could finish, Yi Chen suddenly struck, slapping him across the face and sending him sprawling to the ground, nearly knocking Su Xiaoya over. You, dare to hit me? Li Xiaoqing was dumbfounded, truly dumbfounded. Sitting on the ground, holding his face, he looked at Yi Chen in disbelief. He never expected Yi Chen to actually strike him. He was Li Xiaoqing, the young master of the Li group. Who dared to provoke him? Not just in school, even in society, people had to show him respect. How could this country bumpkin, who had made a small fortune, dare to hit him? Su Xiaoya also looked surprised as she gazed at Yi Chen. As someone who had once been adored by Yi Chen, she knew his character well. Soft, avoiding trouble. But now, Yi Chen seemed like a different person. Could it be that having money had changed him, Su Xiaoya couldn't understand, and at the same time, she was very disappointed. She helped Li Xiaoqing up and shook her head at Yi Chen, saying, Yi Chen, I didn't expect that after two years, you are still so brainless. Do you think that now you have money, you have the capital? Your money is nothing compared to the Xiaoqing family. This slap, you have blocked your own way. I don't need you to teach me how to walk my own path. Yi Chen didn't show any mercy to Su Xiaoya, facing Li Xiaoqing directly, he said, Do you think I dare to hit you? Not only do I dare to hit you, I dare to do it again. Yi Chen's words were like adding fuel to the fire. Li Xiaoqing exploded instantly. Just now, Yi Chen hit his left face. Now he arrogantly pointed to his right face and said, Come on, hit me. I don't believe you dare to hit me. If you dare to hit me, I dare to make you unable to stay in Zhanghai. When Yi Chen got angry, no one could stop him. Since Li Xiaoqing begged him, could he endure it? But Wu Yue didn't like trouble. He knew Li Xiaoqing's background and quickly pulled Yi Chen, saying, Forget it, forget it, Chen Ji, don't use your hands. Did you hear that? You should be as sensible as your lackey, otherwise, uh. Before he could finish his sentence, Yi Chen slapped him directly. Li Xiaoqing staggered and almost fell. You, you really dare to hit me, I'll take your life. Li Xiaoqing's cheeks started to turn red and swell. He seemed like he had gone crazy and rushed forward. But before he could take a step, the security guard who had heard the commotion came from behind and held him back. What are you doing? How dare you stop me? Do you know who I am? At this point, the restaurant manager and the head of security rushed over. They already knew that Yi Chen was the VIP customer with the black gold supreme card. Mr. Yi, I'm sorry for affecting your dining experience. Let me take you to a private room now? The restaurant manager was sweating profusely. He had heard about Yi Chun from Wawanda. 
The managers of all the stores under Baiyun Group had a WeChat group, and Guo Wanda had already publicized Yi Chen's deeds in it. This guy, booking the presidential suite for a whole year, had amazed all the managers in the group. Although there were many wealthy people in Zhanghai, none of them had done something like this. But for businesses operating under Baiyun, how could they not like such a customer? If Yi Chen liked to spend money, they would treat him as an honored guest and serve him well. As for Li Xiaoqing, the restaurant manager had never seen him before, so he had the security guard stop him first. Yi Chen shook his head and said, No need, I'll handle some private matters first. Then he went to Li Xiaoqing's side. Really, I've never seen someone asked to be hit by others. Do you have a masochistic tendency? Yi Chen's words were undoubtedly humiliating Li Xiaoqing. Su Xiaoya looked at Yi Chen and felt that he was extremely unreasonable. Yi Chen, how can you hit someone? This is the difference between you and Xiaoqing, you, you are a lower class person. To be honest, every time Su Xiaoya spoke, Yi Chen felt ashamed. He felt like he had been blind to like someone like Su Xiaoya. Was she even speaking like a human being? A lower class person? But Yi Chen couldn't be bothered to argue with Su Xiaoya. He waved his hand and said, he asked me to hit him. Then did you really hit him? Li Xiaoqing looked like he wanted to devour someone, his eyes widened, and the veins on his forehead bulged. He struggled to break through the security blockade, all of you, get out of my way. Do you know who I am? I am Li Xiaoqing, Li Zhangda is my father. If you don't let me go, I'll cancel the cooperation with your Bai family. Yi Chen remained silent, smiling even more smugly. He looked at Su Xiaoya and said, is this what you call the appearance of an upper-class person? We are all human beings, but you have divided us into different classes. Despite his words, the restaurant manager was starting to worry. Li Zhangda? Are you Chairman Li's son? What do you think? Get the hell out of my way, I'm going to tear this bumpkin apart. Li Xiaoqing became more and more crazy, his eyes even turned red. He was really angry today, no one has dared to provoke him since he was young. The restaurant manager hesitated, and Wu Yue whispered to Yi Chen, Chen Go, what should we do? We really provoked Li Xiaoqing today, the Li family won't let us off. Yi Chen patted Wu Yue's arm, telling him not to worry, then walked up to the restaurant manager. Mr. Yi. As the manager of the Baiyunjian Grand Hotel, Aren't you curious why the young master of the Li group has come back to dine at a restaurant under the Bai family's group? As far as I know, before the Li group focused on real estate development, they also had experience in catering and accommodation, with several stores still under their name. The restaurant manager was a smart person, and when Yi Chen's words reached his ears, he started to think. And you know what's interesting? The day before yesterday when I was at the Baiyunjian Grand Hotel, I happened to run into the young master Li. Yi Chen's words couldn't be any clearer, and the restaurant manager, who had been in the industry for many years, instantly understood what Yi Chen was implying. He walked up to Li Xiaoqing with a cold expression. Young Master Li, Bai Yanjian is open for business and welcomes all guests. But if you are here for business purposes, then Bai Yanjian cannot accommodate you. Before Li Xiaoqing could respond, the restaurant manager interrupted him sternly, I'm sorry, young master Li Mr. Yi is a valued guest of Baiyunjian and a VIP member of the Black Gold Supreme Card. His dining experience is our top priority, so I cannot ask him to leave. But you have disrupted Mr. Ye's dining experience, so it is you who must leave now. With that, the restaurant manager signaled the security guards to escort Li Xiaoqing out. Su Xiaoya was momentarily flustered, not expecting to encounter obstacles when meeting Yi Chen twice. On the other hand, Li Xiaoqing was naturally unwilling to leave and shouted, Let go of me, you can't treat me like this. I am Li Xiaoqing, I am. The guests in the dining area noticed the commotion and whispered among themselves as they watched Li Xiaoqing being escorted out. Yi Chen approached him calmly, saying, This is not a place where you can do as you please. In school, People may fear and tolerate you, but society is different. Your tactic of running to your parents when bullied doesn't work here. It's not impressive, it's pathetic. Li Xiaoqing retorted angrily, but eventually left under the escort of the security guards. 
The restaurant manager quickly apologized to Yi Chen for the disturbance and offered a 50% discount on all dishes and drinks as a gesture of goodwill. Yi Chen declined the offer. Why Yi Chen waved his hand, You've already cleared the flies for me. If I ask for a discount again, wouldn't I be taking advantage of you? Whatever the price is, I can afford it. The restaurant manager nodded repeatedly. This was a five star hotel, and the food and drinks were not cheap. Even a 50% discount required approval from higher ups. He could see that Yi Chen was generous with his money, and not letting him pay would just make Yi Chen uncomfortable. All right, I'll listen to you, Mr. Yi. Here is the menu of our restaurant, the restaurant manager said, handing menus to both Yi Chen and Wu Yuei. Wu Yuei was in a daze the whole time. He had just witnessed Li. Xiao Qing making a fool of himself and getting slapped by Yi Chen in public, which had him feeling excited. He never expected his good brother to be so impressive, even getting the manager of a five-star hotel to show him respect and even kicking out the young master of the Li family, all because he disturbed Yi Chen's meal. Wu Yuei couldn't believe it. Wasn't this the power of 10 million? Even if he had 10 million, he wouldn't dare to act so arrogantly. No I sold 10 million worth of gold? Not more? Wu Yue was stunned for a moment, then he realized that his brother was not stupid. If it was only 10 million, how could he be so extravagant? Wu Yue didn't continue to ask. He respected Yi Chen's privacy. Yi Chen nodded and said, So you can eat openly, can I let you eat until you're full or what? Since the conversation had reached this point, Wu Yue felt embarrassed to say anything more and gladly accepted Yi Chen's kindness. After chatting for a while, Yi Chen brought up the main topic. The last time I saw Zhou Ying, she was interning. How's your internship going? As soon as this was mentioned, Wu Yue's face couldn't hide his uneasiness. The school has allocated internship positions, but they assigned me too far away, so I didn't go. I'm currently preparing a thesis. I'll look for an internship later. Hearing Wu Yue's words, Yi Chen was surprised, isn't it strange? Aren't you a top student? Why would the school assign you so far away that it's inconvenient for you? Is there a problem? No, Wu Yue insisted, it's probably fair distribution. Besides, I still need to write my thesis, so the internship can wait. The more Wu Yue said this, the more it indicated a problem. Yi Chen almost didn't need to think about it. It must be Li Xiaoqing causing trouble. But the question was why Li Xiaoqing targeted Wu Yue. This was something Yi Chen couldn't understand. You have to tell me the truth, or I won't be happy. Don't you consider me as your own? Under Yi Chen's repeated questioning, Wu Yue couldn't hold back and had to lower his voice, okay, actually, the school assigned me to a major cosmetics company, but Li Xiaoqing used his connections to snatch it and gave it to a friend of Su Xiaoya. Why didn't you tell me about this? After Yi Chen finished speaking, he realized that his sudden wealth had only happened in the past two days. Before that, he had not been in contact with Wu Yue, and it was pointless to tell him now. But why would Li Xiaoqing target you? You had no grudges with him, right? Wu Yue shook his head, who knows, maybe because we used to have a good relationship, or maybe he has become arrogant and domineering. Several old classmates were tricked out of good internships by him using this method. His father has connections with the school board and even donated money to the school. We common folks can't compete with him. Donated money to the school? Yes, his father Li Zhengda donated 20 million to the school last year for building a new library. The school leaders treat him like an ancestor and flatter him endlessly. It's really sad, Yi Chen sighed. He had thought that such dirty dealings wouldn't happen at the University of the Mediterranean, but it seemed corruption was everywhere. Thinking about this, Yi Chen stopped sighing and went straight to the point, you haven't found an internship yet, so I have a job for you. Are you interested? I am, Wu Yue agreed readily, but then he thought of something and asked, is it legal? Legal? What nonsense? Can I harm you? Yi Chen said, and this made Wu Yue even more curious. So he asked, what job is it? Is it related to my major? I'm planning to start a company, Yi Chen said without surprise. 
He thought Yi Chen was smart enough and having the capital to start a small company was a good thing. That's great. Our school encourages students to start their own businesses. Chen, you. I'm not starting a small company. I want to go big, Yi Chen interrupted Wu Yuwei and continued, the initial investment will be at least around a billion. Now I ask you, do you want to join me? A billion? Yes, a billion. You're crazy, Yi Chen, Wu Yue blurted out, then realized and asked, Do you really have a billion? Hey, what do you think? Though not explicitly stated, this was as good as admitting it. Wu Yue looked at Yi Chen as if he was seeing a monster. Damn, you, you struck it rich, man. Hold on, let me process this. A billion, I've never seen so much money in my life. Yi Chen shrugged helplessly and said, Honestly, I haven't either. Wu Yue didn't say anything, still in shock. After a while, he slowly spoke, All right, tell me, what do you need me to do? But before Yi Chen could speak, Wu Yue added, There's something I want to say first, Chen, although the development of Zhanghai City in the past two years has been like riding a rocket, there are also hidden risks. This isn't just a favorable trend, even pigs can fly. What if we lose? Lose money, right? Yi Chen smiled, don't worry about losing money. As long as the funds are sufficient, let me give you a hint. If I only had a billion, would I invest it all? They say wealth should not be flaunted, but Yi Chen wasn't afraid to show his wealth in front of Wu Yue. He believed in Wu Youwei's character. This conversation was like injecting chicken blood into Wu Yue. He didn't ask much and just said, okay, Chen, tell me. As long as I can help with my expertise, I will definitely work with you. Skincare products, interested? Yi Chen almost blurted out. This wasn't a sudden idea, he had already made up his mind, especially after seeing the water in the treasure basin repair the scars on his body flawlessly that night in the rundown house. This was like a gift from heaven. Wu Yue wasn't too shocked. Their major was applied chemistry and the skincare industry was not out of reach for them. Daily chemicals? That works too. Chen, are you planning to be a distributor or? Self-researched. Yi Chen said, otherwise, why do you think I approached you, a top student? I can't have you distributing flyers for me. Wu Yue thought for a moment and then agreed, no problem, Chen Ji. Last year, I wrote a research paper analyzing the effects, physical properties, and toxicological characteristics of several popular masks, lotions, and milks in the market. I have some knowledge in this area. Yi Chen realized he had found the right person. The field covered by applied chemistry was vast, and Wu Yue was a top student. After discussing their plans, Yi Chen proposed developing a groundbreaking product in the cosmetics industry. Wu Yue expressed concerns about the saturated market and the need for a unique selling point. Yi Chen disagreed, emphasizing the importance of quality over quantity. Yi Chen hinted at having a secret formula and proposed collaborating with Wu Yue in a laboratory. Wu Yue was shocked but agreed to keep the project confidential and assist in setting up a lab. The two friends reminisced about their past and agreed to recruit recent graduates from Zhanghai University for their project. The campus recruitment has not started yet. If we can establish a company before that, I think the school should support our new type of company, and there should be no problem joining the campus recruitment. The school? Yi Chen's voice lowered. In fact, he was not very willing to recruit people from Zhanghai University and find Wu Yue. It was purely because he was the only person he trusted in this regard. But two years ago, when he appeared at the school, Countless people laughed at him. Yi Chen crossed the hurdle of Su Xiaoya, but it was not easy. Men have their pride, and there's nothing right or wrong to say. But Wu Yue obviously did not realize this. Instead, he tirelessly said to Yi Chen, There are many talented people in our department. I know a few people in the lab. Their papers are better than mine, and their practical foundation is better than mine. I just thought if I could bring them into the team, Writing good papers doesn't mean they can do the work well, Yi Chen interjected. 
However, since Wu Yuwei had already mentioned it, Yi Chen didn't want to hurt Wu Youwei's pride, so he changed his tone and said, if you can trust these people, then it's fine. After the lab is set up, I will provide you with the original solution like Coca-Cola. And about this original solution, I need you to keep it strictly confidential, not to tell anyone, do you understand what I mean? Wu Yuwei took a sip of wine, patted his chest and promised to be careful. The term trade secret is always sensitive, and before testing, Yi Chen couldn't be sure if the water source from the philosopher's stone had any special properties. If it could be tested or even replicated, the business would be ruined. After dinner, Yi Chen took Wu Yuwei to pay the bill, a total of 145,700 yuan. Yi Chen didn't mind at all and paid directly with his card, but Wu Yuwei kept thinking about it for a long time, saying that many dishes were not finished and could have been packed. Pack what? Don't you have a refrigerator in your dorm? Let me tell you, when you make a fortune in the future, I guarantee you can afford to eat like this every day. Hee <laughs> hee, I don't ask for much, as long as I can eat my fill. Wu Yuwei had a smiling face and didn't care at all. Yi Chen didn't continue to lecture. Money can change people, whether it's their personality or spending habits. He believed that when Wu Yuwei made big money in the future, these things would be nothing out of the ordinary. After sending Wu Yuwei back to school, Yi Chen prepared to drive around Zhonghai City. He had been living in the old city for the past two years, as if the world was just like that. Now he thought it was a bit pathetic. Two days later, which was the agreed trading date with Yang Datong. Early in the morning, Yi Chen replicated a sufficient amount of gold bricks with the Philosopher's Stone, just over a billion yuan's worth. Although gold doesn't take up much space, it's heavy. With over 500 pounds, one box definitely couldn't hold it all. So Yi Chen bought several similar suitcases in advance, making four or five trips back and forth to load all the gold onto the car. Even so, the security guards at Baiyun Street Grand Hotel noticed something unusual. They saw Yi Chen pulling a heavy suitcase back and forth, and the sound of the wheels indicated its weight. So they asked if he needed help. Yi Chen said no and gave them some tips to dismiss them. With over 500 pounds of gold, he didn't want any accidents. Just this morning, Yang Datong called him and asked if he needed someone to pick up the gold. Yi Chen also declined, saying he would bring the gold himself and asked Yang Datong to prepare the money. On Yang Datong's end, he was very straightforward, saying he had already arranged for the transfer. Once he received the goods, the money would be transferred instantly. On the other hand, after loading all the gold onto the car, Yi Chen drove directly to Hungtong Jewelry Store. Testing, weighing, and transferring money were done in one go. A total of 1.5 billion yuan was directly deposited into Yi Chen's account. Looking at the text message notification of the funds being credited, Yi Chen found that there was a total of 103 million yuan of available cash in his account. This amount of money would be enough for Yi Chen for a lifetime, even if he spent it extravagantly, but Yi Chen wanted to do more. It's been a pleasure working with you, Boss Yang. Yi Chen reached out his hand, and Yang Datong decisively shook it, I hope we can have more opportunities for cooperation in the future, Mr. Yi. Yang Datong was almost ecstatic. Originally, this type of financial investment in gold didn't yield much profit, but Yi Chen, this big fish, allowed him to make a fortune. Just as the two were about to open a bottle of wine to celebrate, a crowd of people suddenly surged in outside Hungtong Jewelry Store. Don't move, you're under arrest. The people who rushed in were a group of plainclothes officers, led by Wang Zhang. Yi Chen, you're under arrest. You just received 150 million yuan in your account, can you explain this fund? Wang Zhang looked excitedly at Yi Chen, as if Yang Datong had just looked at Yi Chen but one wanted to arrest Yi Chen, and the other wanted to continuously extract profits from Yi Chen. Yi Chen looked at Wang Zhang in confusion. In fact, he had already anticipated this step. His account had been under surveillance before, so it was only natural to have a few more people monitoring him. Background? Or is my family background not worth checking for you? Just a week ago, I was an unknown commoner, and now? I'll tell you where my parents are, they work at a clothing factory in the neighboring city, working to pay off debts for me, and all these debts were forced upon us by Heihu, and I only borrowed 10,000 yuan from him. 
At this point, Yi Chen's emotions were a bit stirred up, and Wang Zheng sat in front of him, not saying a word, seemingly sensing that something was amiss. Yi Chen sneered a couple of times and continued, I'm curious, you say I stole gold, but where was the gold stolen from, when was it stolen, and how much was lost? Did I steal gold, or did someone tell you that? Yi Chen, don't make baseless speculations. Wang Zhang knocked on the table, but he was also puzzled, as some evidence did seem to add up. Before Yi Chen could speak, the office door was pushed open. A middle-aged man with graying hair, dressed in uniform, walked in. Wang Zhang immediately stood up and called out Liang Bukwei, and Yi Chen's gaze followed. Liang Shouchuan also saw Yi Chen, and to be honest, he was a bit surprised by this young man. In fact, Li Zhengda had called him last night, saying there was a person like this, suddenly appearing with a large amount of gold and selling it off in large quantities, all at low prices. These clues indicated that Yi Chen was a dangerous gold thief, and with Li Zhengda providing some evidence, he had Wang Zhang bring the person over to ask about the situation. You must be Yi Chen? Liang Shouchuan sat next to Wang Zhang and continued, quite young, but it's easy for someone so young to go astray. Confess, ordinary cases wouldn't make me personally intervene. Confess to what? Yi Chen retorted. Confess where this batch of gold came from, worth 10 million, this is not something an ordinary person can obtain. Liang Shouchuan also knocked on the table, beating around the bush is pointless, confess early, and we can handle it leniently. These words fell on Yi Chen's ears, and he couldn't help but sneer. Well, thank you, Liang Bukwei, you are truly a great person, understanding my plea and even fighting for leniency for me. But Liang Bukwei, your information is a bit off, this batch of gold is not worth 10 million. Liang Shouchuan had handled many cases, of course, he could tell that there was another meaning in Yi Chen's words. Speaking in such a sarcastic manner won't help you at all, wait a minute, what did you just say, not worth 10 million? Then how much is it? Yi Chen smiled and didn't say a word, at this point, Wang Zheng added to Liang Shouchuan, Liang Bukwei, he has had two transactions with the owner of Hangtong Jewelry Store, with a transaction amount around 138 million. What? Liang Shouchuan almost stood up directly when he heard it. He was puzzled. Didn't Li Zhengda say that the total value was only around 10 million? How could it be so different? But this also made him more certain that Yi Chen was one of the gold theft gang. On the other side, Yi Chen couldn't help but shake his head and sigh. Liang Shouchuan saw it and couldn't help but get angry. Why are you shaking your head? Do you know that the plot of 138 million is even more serious? Now be honest, where did the gold come from? It was passed down from my ancestors. You say it was passed down from your ancestors, but do you have evidence for this? Yes, this requires evidence. Whoever makes the claim has to provide evidence. You first suspect that the gold is not mine, so first prove where you suspect the gold came from, and then I will prove that this gold was passed down from my ancestors. Yi Chen responded fluently, not giving Liang Shouchuan any face. Just when Liang Shouchuan was furious, the office door opened again. Liang, Captain Wang, Lawyer Zhang has arrived. He says he is the defense lawyer for the suspect. As soon as the words were spoken, another person walked in, dressed in a suit, with a briefcase and gold-rimmed glasses. This person was the well-known all-around lawyer Zhang Guang in Zhanghai City. Liang Shouchuan frowned. He knew Zhang Guang well, and his methods were very ruthless. He had confronted many powerful figures, including some government departments, and had secured the best interests for his clients, which made them quite a headache. Lawyer Zhang. Liang, hello. I am Mr. Yi Chen's representative. These are the procedures that have just been completed. I want to take my client away. Zheng Guang immediately took out the documents and paid the bail. Without further evidence, they indeed had to release the person. Liang Shouchuan seemed to realize that this case was not as simple as he had imagined. After looking over the documents, he nodded. Release him. When Yi Chen was taken out by Zhang Guang, he was also puzzled. He hadn't even hired a lawyer. However, before leaving, Yi Chen said a sentence to Liang Shouchuan, which made Liang Shouchuan's face turn black. Yi Chen said, Liang, Li Zhengda's intelligence is not accurate. 
Don't throw stones at your own feet next time. Outside the Xinqing District Police Station, Zhang Wang invited Yi Chen into his car. Was it Yang Datong who sent you? Yi Chen sat in the back seat, feeling increasingly uneasy. Zhang Guang said through the rearview mirror, Yes, Mr. Yi, Mr. Yang entrusted me. But. I think they may still harass you in the future. If you need anything, you can call me. After saying that, Zhang Guang handed his business card to Yi Chen without saying anything else. Yi Chen took the card, feeling cautious. Yang Datong went to such lengths to help him, there must be huge benefits in their cooperation. Otherwise, why would he hire a lawyer to get him out and maintain their relationship? Don't joke around, Yang Datong had no personal relationship with him. How do you charge? Zhang Guang had already started the car, and Yi Chen asked at the right moment. This time it's free. Next time, I'll charge by the hour. Zhang Guang said, offering to take Yi Chen back to Huntong Jewelry Store. Yi Chen nodded in agreement, as his car was still parked there. Forget it, how much is your annual income? 10 million. Then I'll pay you 20 million a year to be my personal lawyer and the chief lawyer of my future company. How about it? Yi Chen almost didn't hesitate. It was easy to find a lawyer who could easily get him out of the district bureau as long as the procedures were complete. But when Yi Chen saw Zhang Guang coming in, the expressions of Liang Shouchuan and Wang Zhang were really not good, and the subsequent conversation made Ji Chen feel that the lawyer Yang Datong found was a tough one. He was betting on it. Hiring a lawyer for 20 million a year to get a lawyer who earns 10 million a year was worth it. But Zhang Guang didn't react immediately. He was stunned while driving. Mr. Yi, what did you just say? Yi Chen believed he had heard it, so he didn't repeat it, only saying, you can contact me anytime after you've considered it. After finishing speaking, Yi Chen originally wanted to give out a business card, but unfortunately he didn't have one yet. However, he believed that Zhang Guang could get his contact information from Yang Datong if he wanted. Zhang Guang, who was driving, was very shocked by the range of 10 to 20 million. With his current abilities, he really couldn't achieve that. Zhang Guang was a lawyer with a strong sense of professionalism. The 10 million was his legitimate lawyer's fee, with no shady income. After some contemplation, Zhang Guang had already made up his mind, but at that moment they arrived at Yang Datong's prosperous gold shop, so he had to ask Yi Chen to get off the car. Yang Datong had already received the message and personally came out to welcome Yi Chen. This surprised Yi Chen a lot, as Yang Datong's attitude was overly friendly. As the saying goes, no good deed goes unpunished. Yi Chen was well aware that with Yang Datong's status, such excessive kindness was unnecessary. It seemed that the 700 gene of gold had satisfied him enough to not want to get into trouble. Mr. Yi, how is the environment at the police station in the new city district? It's okay, just no tea, not even a sip of plain water. After Yi Chen's complaint, Yang Datong began to introduce Zhang Wang. Lawyer Zhang is a well-known versatile lawyer in Zhanghai. He has dealt with lawsuits from the district police station and the prosecutor's office. He is quite tough. This time, he was able to come out so quickly thanks to lawyer Zhang. It's nothing, just doing my duty. It's also thanks to Mr. Yang for promptly establishing connections with the higher-ups. After some mutual business flattery, Yi Chen got straight to the point. Mr. Yang, thank you for today's matter. I have something to ask you. Go ahead, Mr. Yi. Is the relationship between Li Shouchuan from the new city district police station and Li Zhangda from the Li group significant? At this point, Yang Dadong exchanged a glance with Zhang Guang, then said, Indeed, in the business world, you can't get by without some means. I also have some connections at the central office. This time, lawyer Zhang's procedures were also issued by the central office. Mr. Yi, are you planning to? Oh, nothing much, just planning to show Li Zhengda some colors. Yi Chen smiled, seemingly joking, but he was always one to retaliate. If the Li group wanted to play dirty, he would strike first. Yang Datong didn't know if Yi Chen was joking or had made up his mind, so he didn't continue. Instead, Zhang Guang asked, Mr. Yi, what do you plan to do? You will do it. Yi Chen looked at Zhang Guang and continued, 
How did you consider the matter I mentioned before? Well. Before Zhang Wang could answer, Yang Dadong asked, What matter? Mr. Yi wants to hire me as his personal lawyer and the chief lawyer of his future company, with an annual salary of 20 million. Zhang Wang answered Yang Datong's question. In fact, Zhang Wang was not unwilling to agree. The 20 million annual salary was very tempting for him, even a qualitative leap. However, he had not investigated Yi Chen yet and didn't want to agree blindly. So, he planned to go back to investigate and give Yi Chen an answer later. At this moment, Yang Datong spoke up, Lawyer Zhang, do you trust my character? With Yang Datong's words, Zhang Guang didn't dare to say he didn't trust him and quickly nodded, saying, of course, I trust you. Then listen to me, following Mr. Yi is definitely the right choice. I never go wrong in judging people. Heroes emerge from the young generation, and with Mr. Yi's current age, the future is promising. Yang Datong's words surprised Yi. Chen as well. He didn't expect Yang Datong to speak up for him in this way. This also posed a challenge for Zhang Guang. Initially, out of risk considerations, Zhang Guang didn't know anything about Yi Chen, so he didn't agree immediately. But now, with Yang Datong's support, Zhang Guang felt he could take a gamble. Why Yi Chen gave Yang Datong a grateful look, after all, he also spoke up for himself. He was very thankful for what Yang Datong did, so he turned to Zhang Guang and said, How about it? With Mr. Yang as the guarantor, are you reassured? Mr. Yi, I am willing to accept your offer, Zhang Wang replied without hesitation. Time waits for no one, and opportunities may not come again. If this opportunity is missed, there may not be another chance. Zhang Wang is an ambitious person, and a salary of 10 million yuan per year is not enough to satisfy him. Ha ha, I never thought that Mr. Yang would become a headhunter. How will you thank me, Yi buddy? Yang Datong laughed heartily, patted Yi Chen on the shoulder, and no longer addressed him as Mr. Yi, but as Yi Buddy. This seemingly ordinary gesture was actually a way to bring them closer. Yang Datong didn't know why he was doing this, but he felt like he was also betting on Yi Chen. History would prove that Yang Datong made the right bet, but that's a story for another time. Yi Chen was very satisfied with Zhang Wang's response, so he said, from today onwards, the employment period is officially in effect. My company will be established soon, and we will sign the contract then. Is that okay? No problem, Zhang Wang said. If there are any issues with the procedures, I can take care of them. No need, things that can be solved with money are easy. But I hope you can help me investigate Liang Shouchuan. I need to have something to hold over him. Zhang Wang did not refuse this private detective-like task. In fact, he was used to dealing with such systems before and was familiar with the unwritten rules. After Zhang Wang left, Yang Dadong asked, Yi buddy, what kind of business are you planning to do? It wouldn't happen to be in the precious metals industry, would it? Then we would be competitors in the future. Yi Chen shook his head with a smile and said, How could I compete with Mr. Yang? Besides, Mr. Yang helped me a lot today, and I don't know how to thank him yet. How about this, if there are any good opportunities that can go through Mr. Yang's hands from my side, I will make sure that the benefits stay with us. Yi Chen's words were like a shot in the arm for Yang Datong. He helped today for two reasons, first, he believed that there were considerable benefits to be gained from Yi Chen's connections, second, he was betting on Yi Chen. A poor guy like Yi Chen, how did he get so much gold? Did he strike a gold mine? But that was obviously unrealistic. However, Yi Chen did not tell Yang Datong what industry he was planning to enter. Yang Datong was still worried, and in the following conversation, he hinted intentionally or unintentionally. Feeling helpless, Yi Chen had to say that he planned to enter the daily chemical and skincare industry, which he was interested in, as women were a high spending group nowadays. Before Yi Chen spoke, Yang Datong thought that Yi Chen would enter an industry related to precious metals through his connections, as the over 700 pounds of gold could earn more through normal channels. Therefore, after Yi Chen spoke, Yang Datong was surprised by Yi Chen's idea of expanding into a different industry, but he didn't show too much shock and just said that Yi Chen could contact him anytime if needed. After leaving Hangtong Jewelry Store, Yi Chen returned to the Baiyanjian Grand Hotel. After the events of the day, Yi Chen realized that having money was not enough. 
Having money without power would only make him a laughingstock. It seemed that he needed to accelerate his plans. However, before Yi Chen could even think about taking a bath and relaxing, he received a call from Wu Yue. Chen, what's going on? I heard you were arrested, is it true or false? Wu Yue's voice sounded urgent over the phone. Yi Chen was stunned. How did this guy know that he had been arrested? He replied, Do you think I could answer your call if I had been arrested? Also, Li Xiaoqing and Zhou Ying both said in the group that you were quickly arrested, you should go check it out. They said your gold was stolen, and now many people are saying, Wu Yowei's words were cut off as Yi Chen opened the class group, unblocked the messages, and a bunch of messages flooded in. So Yi Chen's gold was stolen, I knew this loser couldn't have gold. Li Da Xiao was really something, what can Yi Chen, this loser, compare to Li Da Xiao? Background determines everything, Li Da Xiao was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, our starting point can't even be compared to Li Da Xiao's. Will we get caught for accepting that loser's red envelope? This is dirty money. Don't worry, we were unaware, we really owe it to Li Da Xiao for the reminder, otherwise we would all have been fooled by this guy. There were many similar voices, and as Yi Chen scrolled through, Li Xiaoqing's words were particularly arrogant. He even claimed to have discovered that the gold was stolen. Although they were once classmates, he couldn't just watch Yi Chen go down the wrong path, so he decided to report him to the authorities. Zhou Ying also chimed in, saying that when Yi Chen went to the jewelry store, she felt something was off, she always thought Yi Chen looked nervous, as if he had done something wrong, now that he's been caught, she didn't expect Yi Chen to be like this. Most of the other comments were overwhelmingly negative, but Yi Chen just chuckled to himself, finding it amusing how diverse the world could be. A turncoat, swayed by the wind, not something an ordinary person could achieve, how thick skin must one be? Chen Gu, is there really something going on, with our company? Wu Yowei's biggest concern now was that the company hadn't been established yet, and Yi Chen had already been arrested. He certainly didn't want his brother to go astray, especially if the gold was really stolen. Nothing's wrong, I just went for a cup of tea, focus on your planning, don't let your brothers look down on you. Yi Chen smiled, pondering how to respond to the messages in the class group. Wu Yue patted his chest and said, I'll take care of things, as long as there are no issues on your end. In this day and age, once you make money, everyone envies you. Li Xiaoqing has no vision at all, don't let him deceive you. Don't worry. Yi Chen hung up the phone, he really couldn't be bothered to respond to these messages, but considering his future plans, he opened the red envelope and said a few words through the password-protected red envelope. I'm fine, thank you all for your concern, their tea is quite good. Thank you Li Dashao for eliminating harm for the people. Noble act of sacrificing personal feelings, well done, Li Dashao. Yi Chen repeated each sentence several times in the red envelope, each capped at 200 yuan. These turncoats knew how much money was in each red envelope, hesitated for a moment, and then started frantically swiping. After the frenzy, some busybodies started mentioning Li Xiaoqing, and at this point, Li Xiaoqing finally saw the messages, but he was already too late, the class group had already started a frenzy of discussion. This Liang Xiaoquan is not, Xu, how dare you say that, you'll be in trouble. Is it true that Li Dashao really sacrificed personal feelings? Who knows, Yi Chen doesn't seem like he's in trouble at all. I knew Yi Chen would be fine, it must be Li Xiaoqing wrongly accusing him. I also think so, Chen Gu is truly a role model for us. They say Chen Gu got rich overnight, he hasn't forgotten us old classmates, the red envelopes he's been sending these days are more than what Li Xiaoqing has sent in the past two years, right? Exactly, Yi Chen enjoyed watching these turncoats sway with the wind, speaking through password-protected red envelopes, this was truly Yi Chen's style. As for Li Xiaoqing, although he has hundreds of thousands of pocket money every month and occasionally sends red envelopes in the group chat, most of it is spent on eating, drinking, and having fun. Speaking of which, the red envelopes Li Xiaoqing has sent in the group over the past few years are really not as many as Yi Chen has sent in the past few days. One sentence is worth 200 yuan, which is nothing to Yi Chen. But then again, the conflict between Yi Chen and Li Xiaoqing is a matter between the two of them a matter for young people to resolve. But Li Zhangda came in and interfered, who would want to be caught and sit on the cold bench in the classroom for no reason. 
Yi Chen also wants to establish a company to create his own brand. Li Zhengdai is helping Li Xiaoqing vent his anger, but this is equivalent to a business provocation. Yes, it is a business provocation, so next we have to deal with Li Zhengda, right? No problem. That's what Yi Chen thinks, the sky is big and the earth is big, he is the biggest, since Li Zhengda likes to protect his son, then let him taste the feeling of having his wings clipped. At this time, in the Yulong Bay community in Zhanghai City. This is the only villa community in the urban area of Zhanghai City. Since the policy prohibiting the construction of detached villas in the urban area came down from above, Yulong Bay has become a symbol of status, and prices have risen accordingly. The entire Yulong Bay covers an area of more than 4,000 mu, with over 60% green area. It can be said to be a world of the rich, almost all the wealthy people in Zhanghai City live here. Even so, Yulong Bay is also divided into two levels. 50% of the area is townhouses, while the other 50% is detached villas, the prices of the latter are several times higher than the former, enjoying amenities such as swimming pools, tennis courts, basketball courts, multifunction rooms, and various fitness and entertainment facilities that the former cannot enjoy. Among these detached villas, the most eye-catching is Yulong No. 1, mentioned above, all those facilities are shared, while Yulong No. 1 has its own private backyard court, swimming pool, and various fitness and entertainment facilities, with a wall surrounding the villa, inside are large green lawns. Such large private lawns are a symbol of status in western countries, and the facade of Yulong No. 1 is these townhouses that embellish it and those inferior detached villas. However, after Yulong Bay opened, Yulong No. 1 was acquired by a mysterious buyer and has not appeared. Since, the luxurious Yulong No. 1 has been vacant all along. Our story naturally did not happen here, but Li Xiaoqing's home is one of these ordinary detached villas around Yulong No. 1. Li Zhangda is a fanatic about protecting his son, and his son Li Xiaoqing, on the other hand, is a playboy who cries when he is wronged outside. Don't be fooled by Li Xiaoqing's glamorous appearance outside, he can handle whatever comes his way, but over the years, with a golden key in his mouth, he has learned nothing except showing off, his personal abilities are low, but he is the sole heir of the Li group. Seeing his son so unprogressive, Li Zhengda arranged a suitable job for him. That is to go to the hotel and restaurant under the Bai group to see the situation. Li Zhengda is also an ambitious person. Before entering the real estate industry, the Li group had also dabbled in the catering and hotel industry and achieved good results, but unexpectedly, they were surpassed by the Bai group, and their market share was gradually squeezed out. In addition, recently, the Bai group announced its intention to enter the real estate industry, which made the usually calm Li Zhengda somewhat flustered. Businessmen in Zhanghai City have to admit that the Bai group has been developing rapidly in the past two years, even to the point of being invincible, therefore, Li Zhengda must find a way to block the Bai group. He first sent his son to gather information, then discussed internally, formulated a plan, and announced to the outside world that the Li group had acquired all the land and was preparing to integrate its hotels and catering industry with real estate to create an ecological residential community. This was to force the Bai group to slow down so he could take advantage and secure the recent bids for several pieces of land. However, this plan backfired as Li Xiaoqing faced difficulties at this step. Coincidentally, when Li Xiaoqing visited the Baiyunjian Hotel and Baiyunjian Grand Hotel, he encountered Yi Chen, and the outcomes were not favorable. This angered Li Zhengda, who couldn't allow a nouveau riche with a fortune of 10 million to block his path and make things difficult for his son. He instructed Liang Shouchuan to investigate Yi Chen's substantial source of gold. Unexpectedly, Yi Chen was quickly released by a lawyer named Zheng Guang after being taken to the district office. Li Zhengda had heard of Zhang Guang's reputation, as they had clashed before in court, with Zhang Guang single-handedly defeating the Li group's legal team. Li Zhengda couldn't understand why Zhang Guang would help Yi Chen, so he ordered his subordinates to thoroughly investigate Yi Chen. Meanwhile, Li Xiaoqing complained to his father about Yi Chen's actions in the group chat. Li Zhengda scolded him and then Li Xiaoqing expressed his frustration about Yi Chen's actions. Li Zhengda was aware of the situation and decided to take action. The next morning, Li Xiaoqing suggested using his bodyguard, Fei Biao, to teach Yi Chen a lesson. Li Zhengda reminded him of a past incident involving Fei Biao, cautioning him to handle the situation carefully. Li Zhengda then instructed Li Xiaoqing to deal with the matter cleanly to avoid future problems. After a night of sleep, 
Yichen woke up and began planning his future company, naming it Waves of Blossoms, specifically for the skincare brand under the company. He called Zhang Guang to prepare the necessary procedures and decided to name the company Wanderer. Don't ask, being asked is just being willful. However, Yi Chen's plan is not just to establish a company. He had Zheng Guang register five companies at the same time, namely Langhua Beauty, Langhua Catering, Langhua Apartments, Langhua Department Store, and Langhua Precious Metals. Mr. Yi, we are registering so many companies in different industries, will it? Zheng Guang expressed his concerns, I know Mr. Yi, you may want to enter multiple industries, but once these are successfully registered, they can be searched online. We may face competition from different industries before the company is stable, creating more competitors is not a good thing. But Ji Chen didn't think so, he just ordered, you don't need to worry about that. After the procedures for these five companies are ready, merge them under the Lanzi brand to establish our own group, understand? Understood, Mr. Yi. Zhang Guang didn't know what to say, he couldn't understand Yi Chen's strategy, just starting out and creating so many brands was indeed setting up obstacles for himself. But Zhang Guang knew his position, he was just an employee. After the friendly reminder, he prepared the documents according to Yi Chen's instructions. However, before hanging up, Zhang Guang revealed some private information about Liang Shouchuan to Yi Chen. Private information? Yi Chen became interested and asked, how private is it? Let me put it this way, if this information is delivered to Liang Shouchuan's superior's office, then the person sitting at that cold desk will be him. Yi Chen took a sharp breath, he didn't expect Zhang Guang to have obtained leverage over Liang Shouchuan in such a short time. At that moment, Yi Chen didn't make any decisions, instead he asked Zhang Guang, you have such important leverage over him, why didn't you use it before? Mr. Yi, I have had this. Information before, but due to work reasons, I never revealed it, so. I'm starting to get scared now, if you also get leverage over me in the future. Yi Chen made a joke, but Zhang Guang took it seriously and said, Mr. Yi, you are my boss now. If my future boss asks me to investigate you, I will do it. I understand what you mean, so I have to employ you for a lifetime, right? Okay, I like your character. Yi Chen's words were not a joke, he really liked Zhang Guang's character. In the end, Yi Chen didn't have any thoughts, but Zhang Guang was flattered, even feeling nervous because of his words just now. If it were an ordinary person, wouldn't they be fired? All right, don't be scared, I can afford 20 million a year. Seeing Zhang Guang silent, Yi Chen continued, I like to reward hard work. 20 million is just your base salary. If you make a huge contribution in your job, the bonus will definitely be more generous than your base salary, understand? Yi Chen's words were like a shot in the arm for Zhang Guang. As the saying goes, money makes the world go round, and this saying has stood the test of time for a reason. I understand, Mr. Yi. I will directly send the private information to the head office. Zhang Guang tentatively asked on the phone, and Yi Chen nodded and said, No problem, go ahead. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chen instantly felt refreshed. Definitely be clashes with people within the system and Yi Chen was worried that any oversight could lead to repercussions. I in front of the sales office, there were many private cars parked, it seems that there are quite a few wealthy people from Zhanghai. There are a total of 28 villas in this development, selling one set means one less set, so there is a constant stream of people coming to view. After all, with the development of Zhanghai, expanding outward is inevitable, and the direction of development here at Jingbo Lake is clear. Whether for self-occupation or investment, it is a wise choice. Due to Yi Chen's ordinary attire, the sales managers took a glance at him and then ignored him. Yi Chen didn't care about this, he walked around these developments, and 19 out of the 28 villas had already been sold, leaving only 9 villas, which were in high demand. In the short time that Yi Chen was there, 3 sets were sold instantly, leaving only 6 villas to choose from. Yi Chen compared the advantages and disadvantages of the remaining 6 villas. In terms of location, Villa 1 at Jingbo Lake is naturally the best, located on high ground with a view of the beautiful Jingbo Lake. The starting price for the other villas is 28 million, but due to this geographical advantage, Villa 1 at Jingbo Lake is priced at 32 million. However, because of the premium, very few people visited the model of Villa 1 at Jingbo Lake, basically just glancing at it and moving on. 
Yi Chen originally wanted to ask the staff for specific details, but before he could finish speaking, the sales manager impatiently said, What are you looking at? Even if you look, you can't afford it. So arrogant? Yi Chen was confused, but the sales manager completely ignored him and instead put on a smile and greeted another person who looked like a wealthy boss. Forget it, Yi Chen calmed down and was about to ask someone else when he saw a familiar face in the crowd and quickly walked over. Suna, what are you doing here? Mr. Yi? Suna didn't expect to meet Yi Chen at the sales office of Jingbo Lake. She had just been transferred here to familiarize herself with the environment. When she saw Yi Chen, a blush instantly appeared on her face. It's me. Yi Chen nodded casually and said, Just call me Yi Chen. How did you end up here, changing jobs? Yi Chen thought it was unlikely because Suna hadn't even completed her probation period at the 4S store, and her confirmation was scheduled for next month. Moreover, she had just sold him a car for 1.5 million, so her commission should be substantial. There was no reason for her to change jobs. Our store has a partnership with this development, and there weren't enough sales managers here, so they brought me in to help out. I see. Why are you speaking so softly? Yi Chen continued, Perfect, I'm here to look at houses, can you show me around? Okay. Suna didn't know why, but Yi Chen was much taller than her, and whenever she looked up at him, she felt a little nervous. That cute blushing look of a young girl was evident in her, and others might say she was pretending to be innocent, but Suna was genuinely innocent. She had just graduated not long ago, had little work experience, studied in a field that didn't match the job market, and had difficulty finding work, so she could only work in sales. Selling cars at the 4S store and selling houses at the sales office naturally exposed her to some wealthy people. There were often bosses around her age who were interested in her and had proposed to support her, but she had rationalized and refused. While having money is good, Suna believed that only what is earned with one's own hands is the most solid. As for Yi Chen, he was the most special among all the wealthy people she had met. What made him special? Low key? Modest? Both. Suna felt that Yi Chen had a bit of a naive charm, not many sharp edges, making people feel close to him without a sense of distance. More importantly, although he was not aggressive, he was decisive. When he decided to buy a car, he bought it without any hesitation. So these days she often thinks of Yi Chen saying she will treat Yi Chen to a meal, but she doesn't know how to bring it up. It seems like taking the initiative to invite someone to dinner has a sense of superiority, which Suna finds repulsive, so she doesn't even dare to talk to Yi Chen. The reason she was arranged to come to the sales department of the Mirror Lake residence this time was also the idea of the forest store manager, to let her practice, but the villa sales team, everyone is elite, naturally looking down on her as a newcomer. Just when Suna was feeling lost, Yi Chen suddenly appeared, which made the originally very sensitive Suna feel like she had seen a ray of light. Suddenly, her thoughts became more delicate. Yi Chen on the other hand had no idea that the girl next to him had so many messy thoughts in her mind. These villas are selling very well, these remaining six units should not have been reserved already, right? Yi Chen asked. In fact, Yi Chen was a bit worried about selling out, after all, three buildings were sold in a short time, following this trend, the remaining six buildings might all be sold out today. Suna quickly shook her head and brought Yi Chen to one of the villa models that had not been sold yet. There is no reservation, we only support full payment sales, so whoever pays first gets the house, the remaining six units are not as good in terms of location. Then, Suna changed the subject, however, the location of Unit 1 is the best, but it has a premium of 4 million, many people who come to see the house are hesitant, let's talk about this unit, this is Unit 13, the location is also okay. Then Suna introduced the pros and cons of the remaining villas to Yi Chen, and Yi Chen also made a detailed comparison. Unit 13 has a good location, but Unit 1 is better, although the 4 million premium for Unit 1 is no joke. Yi Chen calculated that if possible, he could buy both units. Don't ask, having money means being willful, having a unit to live in and a unit for commercial use. As the saying goes, no matter how hard it is, it can't be harder than the RD team. Yi Chen decided to give the best treatment to Wu Yiwei, and to the RD team who will work for him in the future. But there is another reason, Unit 1 and Unit 13 happen to face each other across the lake, 
so buying a speedboat later and crossing the entire Mirror Lake in four or five minutes would be extremely pleasant. Thinking of this, Yi Chen smiled, Suna looked at Yi Chen laughing like a fool, couldn't help but ask, Mr. Yi, why are you laughing? What am I laughing at? Yi Chen laughed again, then said, Hey hey, I was thinking if I bought both Unit 1 and Unit 13, wouldn't that be great, then buy a speedboat, go back and forth every day, ha ha. And don't call me Mr. Yi, just call me by my name, do I look serious when talking to you, Ms. Su? Yi Chen's words made Suna blush again, especially when Yi Chen said Ms. Su, he bent over, she happened to look up, their eyes met, Suna's ears turned red, and she suddenly felt uneasy. But Suna quickly reacted and asked in surprise, what did you just say? Should leave quickly, or it would be embarrassing later. But was Yi Chen someone who would easily back down? Obviously not. It's okay, go ahead and swipe. Yi Chen said decisively, also gently to Suna. Money was really just an external thing for Yi Chen. After going to the district bureau, Yi Chen's courage grew. He had originally planned to be frugal with this billion, but since the gold trading had been so successful, why should he be restrained? 700 kilograms of gold was just a drop in the ocean for the global gold reserves. No money? He, if there was no money, he could sell some gold. It was impossible to work, so he could only sell some gold to sustain his life. With Yi Chen's words, Suna nodded and quickly brought the contract for Yi Chen to sign. At this time, Xian Yang Chang stepped forward. Wait, I had my eye on building 13 first, you can't buy it. The sales manager also stepped forward, reproaching Suna in a strict tone, Yes, building 13 is my responsibility, Suna, what do you mean? This. Suna began to feel uneasy again. Yi Chen sat on the sofa, raised his eyebrows. Just because you say it's your responsibility, it's your responsibility? As far as I know, whoever pays first gets it, right? Yi Chen's words made Xin Yang Chang's face a bit embarrassed. At this moment, the sales manager quickly stepped forward and said, Shall we sign the contract now, Mr. Qin? Is everything okay on your end? I'm still short of a payment today, I don't have enough money. Chen Yongchang instantly felt embarrassed, and Yi Chen couldn't help but laugh immediately upon hearing this. I was wondering who was pretending to be a big shot here. If you don't have money, just say it. Are we signing here? Okay. Yi Chen said as he signed one of the contracts. Chen Yongchang's face turned extremely bad. He was furious and directly grabbed Yi Chen's hand, saying, Wait, who knows if you have money to buy after signing, you didn't even swipe the card. Yi Chen frowned, feeling offended, and immediately shook off Qian Yang Chang's hand, asking in a deep voice, How do you know I don't have that much money in my account? If I swipe 60 million, will you call me dad? You? Qian Yang Chang was furious, but saving face was important, so he agreed without much thought. Fine, if you swipe 60 million, I'll call you dad. The conversation between the two had already attracted a crowd, and the murmurs spread. Yi Chen was truly surprised that at such a young age, he was about to become a father. Without much thought, he handed the card to Suna. Here, swipe the card first. Suna nervously took the card from Yi Chen and brought over the POS machine. Qian Yongchang straightened his back, feeling clever about his recent actions. In his opinion, at Yi Chen's age, dressed so shabbily, it was impossible to swipe 60 million with a debit card. Ha, huh, some people, I advise you not to show off anymore. But I, Xian Yongchang, don't mind having one more son. Yi Chen ignored Xian Yongchang's words, feeling some regret about the current state of society where wealthy people behaved like this. Suna didn't hesitate, she directly swiped the card on the POS machine, prompting Yi Chen to enter the password. While entering the password, Xian Yongchang kept staring at the POS machine, which annoyed Yi Chen. Others knew to avoid eye contact, but Xian Yongchang kept staring like a thief. Are you trying to see my password? Yi Chen asked. Irritated by the question, Xian Yongchang waved his hand and said, What's there to see? Your lousy debit card has nothing worth seeing. Besides, how much money do you have? If lost, should I compensate you, 10,000 or 20,000? Chen Yangchang's words were still direct, but by now Yi Chen had entered the password smoothly, not letting anyone see. At that moment, the POS machine beeped. Beep. 
Transfer successful, amount 60 million yuan. The sound of the notification shocked everyone present. The argument between the two had already attracted a lot of onlookers, most of whom were not optimistic about Yi Chen. After all, these days appearances mattered, and Yi Chen, dressed so shabbily, didn't seem like someone who could casually spend 60 million on a villa. The murmurs continued. This young man really has 60 million. Shu. Look at him swiping 60 million without any hesitation, does he look like he only has 60 million? I don't know which rich kid he is, but his spending is too extravagant. I know this Qin Yong Chang seems to be an equipment business, quite a wealthy boss, but he's losing face today. Who knows, just watching the show. Yi Chen wasn't interested in these discussions, they didn't bring him any joy. But he was indeed interested in Qin Yong Chang about to call him dad. Meanwhile, Chen Yongchang's face turned ashen, looking at Yi Chen in disbelief. How could this young man in front of him casually swipe 60 million without any hesitation? Even he had to think twice before spending 28 million on a villa. The sales manager who originally mocked Yi Chen now wanted to find a hole to hide in, or simply bash his head against a wall. It is important to note that a total of 28 villas were put up for sale in this Jingbo Lake residence. Although Zhanghai City has developed and property prices have been rising, the selling price of Jingbo Lake residents relies solely on the attraction of Jingbo Lake. So even at 28 million, there is a significant premium compared to standalone villas on the market. The reason why the sales manager, Xian Yongchang, wanted to bash his head against a wall was simple. If he hadn't initially rejected Yi Chen due to his shabby appearance and lack of hospitality, the commission for these two villas would have been his and wouldn't have fallen into Suna's hands. After swiping his card, Yi Chen gave Qian Yongchang a knowing smile, then swiftly signed the contract. Mr. Yi, the contract has been signed. Shall I take you to see the house now? Folding up the contract with a smile on her face, she didn't expect Yi Chen to actually agree to buy the 60 million villa and the 1.5 million car without hesitation. This couldn't be described as just wealthy anymore. But the wealthier Yi Chen appeared, the more distance Suna felt from him, to the point where she never dared to ask Yi Chen out for a meal. Wait a moment. Yi Chen didn't immediately get up, but instead sat leisurely on the sofa in the signing area. I remember someone just said that if I swiped 60 million, he would call me dad. Dot. Looking towards the awkward Qian Yongchang standing on the side, Yi Chen smiled and said, How about it, Boss Qian, haven't forgotten about this, have you? With these words, the surrounding discussions grew louder. This is going to be interesting. Will Qian Yongchang really call out? Call out? What are you thinking? Qian Yongchang is a figure in Zhanghai City. If he calls this young man dad, will he still have a place in Zhanghai in the future? He can't back out now. I think this young man is also someone important. Spending 60 million without batting an eye, he might be the son of some big conglomerate. The lease? Don't talk nonsense. Li Xiaoqing is a well-known playboy in the circle. His father restricts him a lot, and besides, his family is in real estate development. Do you think he would come to buy a house here? Enough, look at Qian Yongchan's expression, it's priceless. It's well known that there are always people who love to watch a spectacle. As long as you set up the stage, you can gather a crowd. Yi Chen had experienced this before, being the object of ridicule by many. But now, times have changed, and so has he. Seeing Qian Yongchang remain silent, Yi Chen raised an eyebrow and said, Boss Qian, you're not really thinking of backing out, are you? I've already spent the money. With that, Yi Chen crossed his legs and adopted a carefree demeanor. Oh, when I went out today, I passed by a fortune teller on the overpass and had my fortune read. It said I was destined to be a father. Isn't that an insult? I scolded the fortune teller at the time, but now it seems I've gained quite a bit. A young son, I'll have to give that fortune teller a red envelope. Yi Chen's words immediately caused laughter from the onlookers, and even Suna couldn't help but laugh. But Qian Yangchan's expression wasn't as pleasant. It was like he was being publicly humiliated. Yi, what do you mean? I, Xian Yongchang, am a figure in this city, you. The rest of his sentence, questioning Yi Chen's status, 
got stuck in Qian Yangchang's throat. He knew he couldn't say it. Spending 60 million without hesitation must have a stronger background behind it. Yi Chen smiled and said, You also know you're a figure in this city? If you're a figure, you should keep your word. You said if I swiped 60 million, you would call me dad, right? Now that I've swiped it, go ahead and call me. With that, Yi Chen leaned back, closed his eyes, and said, I'll enjoy this. Undoubtedly, this is humiliating Qian Yong Chang. Yi Chen also knows that Qian Yong Chang won't shout, but it wouldn't be meaningful if he did. You, don't even think about it. Qian Yong Chang said sternly, If you want me to call you father, you're not worthy. So, Mr. Qian, are you saying one thing and doing another? Well, today, the people looking at houses here are all prominent figures in Zhanghai City. Everyone might have heard it. Mr. Qian Yongchang says one thing and does another. It seems I won't hear that father from him. What a pity. This immediately put Qian Yongchang in an awkward position. He knew he was losing face in front of Yi Chen and so many people watching. Although he was furious, he had no way to vent. All right, no one dares to talk to me, Qian Yongchang, like this. This matter is not over. After dropping this not so harsh threat, Chen Yongchang waved his hand and left. The sales manager didn't know what to say for a moment and had to follow him, after all, Chen Yongchang was still a potential customer. Look, Chen Yongchang really left. This will be talked about in the future. He will probably become a laughingstock in the industry. It's hard to say. This young man must have offended Chen Yongchang and will definitely be targeted in the future. That's right, Chen Yongchang has quite a wide network. He has been pecked in the eye this time. After Chen Qi and Yang Kang left, the surrounding discussions changed slightly. Those who had favored Yi Chen before now turned around and said that Yi Chen would have a hard time after offending Chen Yongchang, as the wealthy people in Zhanghai City are not to be trifled with. Yi Chen smiled, not taking it seriously, and asked Su Na to take him to see the house. Although he had already seen it in pictures, he wanted to see it in person. Suna was still in shock and disbelief, and it took several calls from Yi Chen to get her to react. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, let's see the house. What's wrong with you? You seem distracted. Are you thinking about your boyfriend? Yi Chen asked intentionally. Car to Yi Chen, but she was still a newcomer, just lucky, with shallow sales experience. Compared to the sales champion, it was clear who was more important. And yesterday, another greasy middle-aged boss who was preparing to buy a villa had made inappropriate advances towards Suna, asking for support, so Suna was sensitive and emotionally troubled. Hearing Suna's explanation, Yi Chen realized that Suna had not been doing well these days, and things were not going as she wished. Mr. Yi, can you please not complain about me? As the substances detected were exactly the same. Chen Go, although I know that your testing must have a purpose, does it help us in our future cosmetics business? Wu Yuwei couldn't help but ask over the phone in the laboratory. Help? Yi Chen chuckled and said, it helps a lot. I am just selecting water sources for future products. Considering that 95% to 99% of various brands of toners, essences, and cooling mists are water, Yi Chen's reason seemed reasonable. Hearing Yi Chen's explanation, Wu Yuwei didn't take it seriously. There were still some experiments to be done next, but Yi Chen could handle them alone. To reassure Wu Yuwei, Yi Chen specifically mentioned taking him to see the site of the research institute in a couple of days. After dinner, Yi Chen prepared to return to the Baiyanjian Grand Hotel alone. He felt that he was not born to be an emperor, and with the wealth bowl, it was better to make a fortune quietly rather than building a business empire. Every step he took now made him feel fulfilled. Fortunately, he would soon return to sleep on a five-star mattress, enjoy five-star sleep, and have a little wine. Suddenly, bang! The black Bentley driven by Yi Chen was hit by a heavily modified pickup truck on the expressway, causing the guardrail to shatter and the black Bentley to flip off the high ground. A huge man jumped out of the black pickup truck, walked to the guardrail to look at the Bentley below, and sniffed the gasoline smell in the air. Immediately, the man took out his phone and made a call. Young master, it's done. After speaking, he hung up and walked towards the black Bentley. 
Meanwhile, in a standalone villa in Yulong Bay, Li Xiaoqing had just hung up the phone. The call was from a subordinate of his father, Li Zhangda. In recent years, there had been significant changes and developments in the real estate industry in Zhanghai City, inevitably involving some forced demolitions. Since these were forced demolitions, conflicts were bound to arise, and the Li family, as a major real estate player in Zhanghai City, had certainly engaged in some shady deals and affairs. There is a saying that goes, if capital has a profit margin of 50%, it will take risks, if it has a profit margin of 100%, it will dare to trample on all human laws. This was true for the real estate industry, and the Li family was no exception. Over the years, Li Xiaoqing had helped the Li family deal with many dirty matters. The legal team of the Li family and Zhang Guang often clashed in court for this reason. Yi Chen, what are you going to compete with me with? A country bumpkin dreaming of entering the upper class society, dreaming. Li Xiaoqing dismissed it. He didn't order Yi Chen to be killed because the situation was too sensitive recently, and Li Zhangda had repeatedly instructed not to cause any casualties. But based on his understanding of his subordinate, Li Xiaoqing believed that Yi Chen's future fate would only be in two possibilities, either in bed or in a wheelchair. When Yi Chen regained consciousness, he found himself in the First People's Hospital of Zhanghai City. The person sitting by his bed surprised him, it was Wang Zhang, the memories of the previous moment kept flashing in Yi Chen's mind, a black pickup truck chasing from behind, suddenly swerving. Yi Chen's car, traveling at high speed, lost balance due to the car's inertia, and crashed through the guardrail. Then the airbag deployed, and Yi Chen began to feel the world around him constantly spinning, accompanied by loud noises, before losing consciousness. Awake? Wang Zhang called the nurse and doctor, and after confirming that Yi Chen was okay, he said, You're lucky to have survived. Colleagues at the scene said it's rare for someone to survive such a car accident. Yi Chen opened his mouth, finding it difficult to speak. Did they catch the person? This was Yi Chen's first question and first words spoken. Wang Zhang was surprised and asked, How did you know it was a hit and run? If it wasn't a hit and run, you wouldn't be here, Yi Chen replied calmly feeling the pain all over his body, which made him particularly alert. Without waiting for Wang Zhang to ask, he continued, I can't remember the specific details, but from the rearview mirror, it seemed like a black car, speeding, and when it was about to overtake me, it swerved, causing me to crash through the guardrail. Wang Zhang recorded all of Yi Chen's words with a pen. It was indeed a hit and run, but the suspect has not been caught yet. I have informed your lawyer, who is arranging to cover your medical expenses, Wang Zhang said, glancing at the foot of the bed. Your leg has multiple dislocated fractures. Upon hearing this, Yi Chen's heart sank. But Wang Zhang quickly added, don't worry, the surgery has been successful. Even the doctors say your body is miraculous. All you need to do now is wait for the bones to heal. You will recover completely. How long will it take? Yi Chen asked with difficulty. As Wang Zheng spoke, Yi Chen tried to move his leg, but the excruciating pain made him gasp, and he gave up. Wang Zheng fell silent when it came to time, finally saying, six months to a year. Then he comforted, but don't dwell on it. Perhaps this is still a good thing. You're young, and a year is worth waiting. 4. Besides, after a year, you should have faded from their sight. Yi Chen was not angry at all. Undoubtedly, this was a targeted conspiracy, and regardless of who wanted to harm him, Yi Chen admitted that he had not anticipated this, that he had not taken adequate precautions. However, Wang Zheng's profession was special, and he should not have said such things. Yi Chen was a bit upset and asked, Is this what you should be saying? I understand your current emotions. You understand my current emotions, yet you still say that? Shouldn't you be out there catching the culprit at this time? Yi Chen, with your current temperament, even if you recover in a year, you will still attract. What should I do then, hide from them? Am I the victim or are they the victims? Each time, Wang Zheng's words were cut off by Yi Chen before he could finish. Wang Zheng understood Yi Chen's current mood, so he did not continue speaking, Yi Chen also knew that he was just upset. The two fell into silence, a stalemate that seemed to last an eternity, until Yi Chen finally asked, How long has it been? Two days, Wang Zhang said. Your car has an automatic alarm function for loss assessment. 
Colleagues from the technical department located you via GPS and found you. After arriving at the hospital, you remained unconscious, and the surgery lasted a total of seven hours before you just woke up. Just as he finished speaking, another person entered the ward at Zhang Guang. Wang Zhang stood up voluntarily, you can chat with lawyer Zhang, but I suggest you rest more. If you need anything, contact me again. Colleagues from the transportation department will try their best. Perhaps it was unnecessary to say more. Before finishing his sentence, Wang Zhang closed his mouth and quickly left the ward. Mr. Yi, you're awake. Zhang Guang held a stack of documents, placed them down, and sat at the bedside. Compared to Wang Zhang, Zhang Guang's emotions were more complex. He relayed some instructions from the doctors to Yi Chen, mentioning that the recovery period would be conservative, ranging from six months to a year, due to multiple dislocations and fractures exceeding 8 mm in certain areas, which would require time to heal. Listening to these meaningless words, Yi Chen felt his mind go blank. Everything was planned out, selecting a location for the research and development laboratory, establishing a subsidiary company, merging into a group, researching and producing, promoting, going public, and selling a popular skincare product from an eastern country. Yi Chen felt that his life was finally on the right track, but he never expected such an incident to happen. This car accident was going to delay his life for a year, or even longer. Even more alarming was Wang Zheng's statement that no one could survive such a crash. It was a miracle that Ji Chen had survived, but it couldn't change the fact that he was now lying in bed like a disabled person. Despite the lack of personal connection, Yi Chen decided to trust Wang Zhang and offered him a labor contract with an annual salary of 20 million. Yi Chen's determination to move forward despite his physical condition surprised Wang Zhang. Yi Chen also thought about Li Xiaoqing and Chen Yongchang, wondering who was behind the accident. Yi Chen knew that money was not a concern for him, but his health and the enemies plotting against him were, however, there is always a way out. Just as Yi Chen was thinking about what to have Zhang Guang do, a brainstorm exploded in his mind. The Cornucopia Yi Chen thought that the Cornucopia was not just about duplicating gold bricks for cash right now. After transferring 20 million to Zhang Guang's account, the remaining 50 million would be enough for medical expenses. But Yi Chen didn't want to spend the next year in bed or in a wheelchair. Although Yi Chen was confident that even if he was in a wheelchair, he could still strategize behind the scenes and build a career, that was not what Yi Chen wanted. He wanted to get better now, to stand firmly on this land, and then expose the mastermind behind the accident and send them to the western heaven for the Buddha. What to do? The Cornucopia This was just a brainstorm for Yi Chen. He suddenly thought that the water source generated by the Cornucopia could make his skin flawless, even repairing the scars from his childhood. Is it possible that the water source generated by the Cornucopia could also heal his injuries? Regardless, it was worth a try. Yi Chen felt it was an opportunity. An opportunity for himself, and also an opportunity to explore the cornucopia. He had always wanted to know what else the cornucopia could do, right? With that in mind, Yi Chen couldn't wait any longer and instructed Zheng Guan to handle the discharge procedures. He wanted to return to the hotel now. Zheng Guan tried to stop Yi Chen, saying that if he didn't rest now, there could be long-term consequences. Mr. Yi, how about I contact your family to take care of you? Your mood should improve, and I can also. If I ask you to do it, you do it. If I end up paralyzed, you're responsible. Yi Chen admitted he was very excited, but it was a carefully considered excitement. He wasn't fooling around, he had discovered a miracle and was eager to try it. Despite his reluctance, Zheng Guang called a doctor. First, explained Yi Chen's intention to leave the hospital, and the doctor said that although Yi Chen had just finished surgery and needed rest, discharge was possible, but he would need a wheelchair and should not exert himself, as it could cause further bone misalignment or fractures. Then let's go handle the paperwork now. If you need rest, find the best private medical care. I want to go back to the hotel now. At Yi Chen's request, Zhang Wang had no choice but to comply. He found a wheelchair for Yi Chen, completed the discharge procedures, and even arranged for a more spacious business car. On the way, Yi Chen also figured out some things and asked Zhang Guang, how is the situation with Liang Shouchuan going? 
Zheng Guang, driving, thought for a moment and replied, the information has been sent to the central office. I haven't received any updates yet, but the internal investigation into Liang Shouquan has likely been initiated, and results should be available soon. If Liang Shouquan falls, what impact will it have on the Li group? Yi Chen continued to inquire. Well. Zheng Guang hesitated, from what I know, many of Li's successful land bids are closely related to Liang Shouquan, who has benefited greatly. If Liang Shouquan falls, Li Group may lose its advantage in future bids and could be at a disadvantage, allowing the Bai Group or other competitors to take advantage. Hearing this, Yi Chen still found it unbelievable and asked, is all of this related to Liang Shouquan's downfall? This time, Zhang Guang nodded without hesitation. If that's the case, why hasn't anyone done this earlier? The Bai Group and other competitors should have taken down Liang Shouquan long ago. This time, Yi Chen's question left Zhang Guang unsure how to respond. Shang Guang? Business is like a battlefield, Mr. Yi. Zhang Guang knew that if he didn't explain, Yi Chen would be suspicious. Behind every party is a complex network of relationships. Liang Shouquan represents the interests of the Li family group. If other competitors bring down Liang Shouquan, then the Li family group will also bring down other beneficiaries within the system. In other words, everyone is not clean, so no one should touch anyone. It all depends on who has stronger connections. If someone disrupts this calm surface, it will create huge waves, and no ship will be able to stay steady. Yi Chen nodded, understanding Zhang Wang's meaning. Throughout history, officials and businessmen have been closely connected, and over time, the issue of interests becomes unclear. This raises another question, why does Zhang Guang hold such an important leverage that can influence the entire Zhanghai, and why is he using it now? Yi Chen couldn't understand and asked Zhang Guang. Zhang Guang, driving, thought he had evaded the question, but he didn't expect Yi Chen to ask. After a long silence, he took a deep breath. The Li family group is too large, a slight move can affect the whole body. If they use this leverage of Liang Shouquan, they will become targets of public criticism. Zheng Guang turned to Yi Chen. Mr. Yi, accepting your offer is a gamble in my life. Since it's a gamble, I want to make it big. Hearing Zhang Guang's words, Yi Chen even admired him. It is important for a man to possess both restraint and assertiveness, qualities that Zhang Guang has. For a man in his thirties, this is rare. But you are now thinking that you might lose the bet, right? Yes, Mr. Yi, you are not cautious enough. This car accident shouldn't have happened. But I am also a Monday morning quarterback. However, I have no intention of resigning at the moment. I want this 20 million, I want to try my luck, maybe I can leverage more. Yi Chen asked directly, and Zhang Wang answered directly. In this spacious business car, both men had a clear understanding of each other. Back at the Baiyunjian Grand Hotel, Zhang Guang helped Yi Chen into a wheelchair and pushed him inside. Huo Wanda saw that both of Yi Chen's legs in one hand were in casts and hurried over to help. Mr. Yi, what happened to you? It's nothing, don't make a fuss. Yi Chen gave Guo Wanda a look, and he understood the meaning, quickly walking ahead of Yi Chen to assist him, while Zhang Guang swiftly pushed him into the elevator. The air in the presidential suite was indeed better than in the hospital. After settling Yi Chen, Zhang Guang prepared for Guo Wanda to arrange a professional private medical team for Yi Chen. Some private hospitals offer such services specifically for wealthy individuals, similar to a family doctor, but Yi Chen refused. Boss, you can't take care of yourself alone. Someone must be by your side. I can't be here all the time. Zhang Guang expressed his concern, and for the first time, he called Yi Chen boss. No need to say more. Manager Gui is here, and the service at Baiyanjian is excellent. Don't worry, I have something for you to do. With only one hand able to move, even pushing the wheelchair was slow. Yi Chen gestured for Zhang Guang to push him to the office area, then took out two property purchase contracts from the filing cabinet. The property deed hasn't been issued yet. These are the purchase contracts. Use them to establish Lang Hawaii Du for me. Arrange for catering, apartments, department stores, and precious metals. If my presence is required, contact me. 
The two purchase contracts totaling 60 million undoubtedly boosted Zheng Wang's confidence, indicating that Yi Chen has not stopped and has no intention to do so now. I'll take care of these first, boss. Additionally, I will use my connections to contact some orthopedic experts and arrange for another consultation for you. Yi Chen nodded and said, Good, go ahead. I happen to know an old Chinese doctor. I'll have him come over later. Zhang Guang was initially worried, but this was already a gamble. He was betting that Yi Chen would win and that he had placed his bet on the right treasure. After waiting for Guowanda to leave, Guowanda cautiously asked, Mr. Yi, what's wrong with you? I haven't seen you in two days, what happened? Guess? Yi Chen blinked, believing that Guowanda could figure it out. Guowanda thought for a moment and instantly understood what was going on. Is it Li Shacking from the Li family? Guowanda asked. This surprised Yi Chen, as he doubted Li Shacking's involvement. He asked, as far as I know, you only had a conflict with Li Shacking. The manager at Baiyun Hotel told me about the incident when you were dining there. That guy definitely won't let it go easily. Guo Wanda's words amused Yi Chen, who chuckled to himself, it seems our young master Li is too impatient, not even wiping his but clean. Mr. Yi, should I have the restaurant prepare some seafood porridge for you? You can tell me what you want to eat, Guo Wanda didn't delve further, knowing when to stop. Yi Chen nodded, okay, just have it ready. I'll ask for it when I need it. Guo Wanda acknowledged and left. After Guo Wanda left, Yi Chen quickly locked the door, using only one hand to maneuver the wheelchair, causing him to break out in a sweat. Looks like I need to switch to an electric wheelchair, Yi Chen muttered to himself, unsure if he could use it. What if things went wrong today? With that in mind, Yi Chen went to the safe and took out the cornucopia. He then brought the cornucopia to the bathroom, added some water, and a spring began to emerge, producing a new source of water. Without hesitation, Yi Chen poured all the water into the bathtub, quickly filling it up. This was the first time Yi Chen had replicated so much water with the cornucopia. The biggest difference compared to bathing in the rundown house in the old city was that this time, Yi Chen could clearly feel a refreshing sensation when close to the water source. It felt as if he was facing a divine elixir from the heavens, a substance only found in the celestial realm. Yi Chen was not religious, so he did not pray. After struggling to remove his clothes and cast, he attempted to get into the bathtub. It had been less than 12 hours since his surgery, and his wounds had not yet healed. The process of removing the cast had already caused Yi Chen to break out in a cold sweat. Seeing the horrifying wound on his leg, Yi Chen knew he was taking a gamble. If the water source regenerated by the cornucopia wasn't as miraculous, he might have to undergo surgery again. My dear, you brought me back from the abyss. I can't let myself fall back in, can I? Whether this works or not is up to you. With that, Yi Chen closed his eyes, plunged into the bathtub. The icy water felt like sharp blades piercing his skin, especially at the unhealed surgical incision. Water molecules penetrated, reaching his bones, causing an excruciating pain that left him unable to scream, only experiencing a piercing agony. The bone-chilling cold spread throughout his body, causing his legs to go numb, followed by his entire body losing sensation. This water is useless. I'm going to die. This was Yi Chen's final thought as he felt as though he was not in the bathtub but in the depths of the sea, his body bound by a massive stone, sinking deeper and deeper into the terrifying darkness of the ocean. Yi Chen had no idea how long he had been falling, as if it had been an entire century until he finally hit the bottom. Feeling his body collide with the seabed, a sharp pain shot through his spine, followed by immense pressure enveloping him, as if the ocean floor's pressure was about to tear him apart. At that moment, Yi Chen abruptly opened his eyes, only to see a carp leaping out of the bathtub. The surreal underwater experience had left him somewhat frightened, almost giving him a fear of the deep sea. Wait, why is this water hot? And why don't my legs and arms hurt anymore? Yi Chen was clever and quickly raised his hand, only to find that the wound on his left arm had miraculously healed, except for the wrinkles on his palm from the blisters, the rest of his skin was as good as a newborn baby's. What about his legs? Yi Chen quickly tried to lift his legs and found that they were completely healed, with five surgical incisions on each leg, all miraculously healed, even the bones inside seemed to have healed, as he could move without any pain, 
feeling energetic and even lively. The water in the tub, originally ice cold, was now emitting steam. If it weren't for the fact that this was still the presidential suite's bathroom, Yi Chen would have thought he had traveled through time. Did he hit the jackpot? Yi Chen suddenly stood up and walked to the mirror in the bathroom. Indeed, all the bruises on his body had been repaired, the surgical incisions were completely gone, the previous body aches were now replaced with vitality, and he even felt like he could run a half marathon. Yi Chen was not joking at all. He was so excited that he even jumped in place a couple of times, almost slipping on the slippery floor. Looking back at the water in the bathtub, there was no change at all, still pure and transparent, not a drop less, and still steaming hot. Yi Chen looked in amazement at the nearby treasure basin. It was too miraculous. Last time, taking a bath made his skin rejuvenated, and even the scars from his childhood disappeared. This time, soaking in the bath not only healed the bruises and surgical incisions, but even the cracks in his bones were healed. How incredible! Why not ascend to the heavens with such miraculous powers? Just as Yi Chen was about to entertain this thought, he startled himself. He began to wonder if this treasure basin was a gift from the heavens. Yi Chen dared not continue thinking about it, as it was too terrifying and could change his worldview, even though it was already starting to change. Looking at his flawless reflection in the mirror, Yi Chen felt that it was not the treasure basin that should ascend to the heavens, but himself. The miraculous effects of this method did not drive Yi Chen insane, his resilience was strong. Otherwise, during the two years of being harassed by the Black Tiger Gang, he would have committed suicide long ago. Moreover, the fact that the treasure basin could continuously replicate anything was something he could accept. Now, he was even more familiar with it. After getting dressed, Yi Chen wanted to smash the plaster in wheelchair. It was a disgrace to him, but he eventually decided against it. Earlier, when he told Zhang Guang about knowing an old Chinese doctor, it was all part of the plan. He didn't actually know any old Chinese doctor, it was just an excuse. But to recover to his current state, what kind of old Chinese doctor could be so powerful? So Yi Chen decided to disguise himself for a few days first. Otherwise, it would raise suspicions that he couldn't explain. Returning to the bathroom, Yi Chen reluctantly drained the entire bathtub of water. The city sewage system was the only way to effectively handle this water. From this, Yi Chen realized something. He had originally planned to use the water regenerated by the treasure basin, along with some refreshing and skincare ingredients, to launch a skincare product line. However, given the current trend, the miraculous effects of the regenerated water from the treasure basin were too extraordinary. It couldn't be casually bottled, otherwise, if someone with ulterior motives discovered it and conducted research on it, it would be troublesome. Therefore, it was more reasonable to mix it with regular water, but the ratio had to be controlled properly. Yi Chen speculated that the treasure basin was no ordinary item. Therefore, the water regenerated by the treasure basin should not be much different from regular water, except that it had the treasure basins, let's call it aura. It was this aura that rejuvenated his entire body, skin, bones, and surgical incisions. This aura was probably like nutrients, absorbed by the body and then disappeared. So the water he had drained from the bathtub should not be much different from regular water. Of course, these are all Yi Chen's speculations. No one told him these things, so he could only rely on speculation to determine the ratio of replenishing water in the treasure basin. Otherwise, the launch of each skincare product would still be a problem. After tidying up, Yi Chen restored the plaster to its original position and then sat in the wheelchair. Now, he is still a person with two legs and one arm disabled, but he wants to witness the downfall of a commercial empire with his own eyes. The next day, there was a big commotion in Zhanghai City, and the head catcher of the new city district, Liang Shouchuan, was arrested. The most affected was naturally the Li group. After learning of this news, Li Zhengda was extremely frightened. As the chairman of the Li group, he knew very well what it meant for Liang Shouchuan to go in. An emergency board meeting was immediately convened, and all department heads were urgently consulted. It should be noted that the bidding for several plots of land in the city by the Li group had reached a white-hot stage. However, the competition this time was very strong, with several developers from Kyoto, as well as newcomers in the real estate industry. 
The Bai Group also presented a very good plan. The purpose of the large-scale transformation in Zhanghai City was to turn Zhanghai City into a new first-tier city, which meant that in the past, price was the primary consideration in bidding. But now, the primary consideration in bidding had become the plan. Whoever had the best plan would get the land. Li Zhengda was well aware that after Liang Shouchuan's downfall, the plan proposed by the Li Group could not be the most optimal. At the same time, he had his confidants investigate who had reported Liang Shouchuan. He held some cards in his hand, and if someone wanted to mess with him, he didn't mind going down together. Meanwhile, Li Xiaoqing was enjoying himself with Su Xiuya, completely unaware that the Li group was about to face a major disaster. He only knew that Yi Chen had been turned into a disabled person by Fei Biao and was still lying in the hospital. No one could provoke Li Dashao and live a peaceful life. On this day, it was not only Li Zhengda who was shocked, but also Zhang Wang. God knows how shocked Zhang Wang was when he saw Yi Chen at Baiyanjian. Clearly, he was covered in injuries yesterday, with bruises and abrasions on his face and neck. When he left yesterday, any exposed skin on Yi Chen had bruises and scratches, but today everything was clean as if nothing had happened, not even a trace. If it weren't for the plaster on Yi Chen's legs and arms, Zhang Wang would have thought Yi Chen was a monster. Boss, are you, all better? Better? No no no, that old Chinese doctor said the bones will take another week to heal, but the injuries on my body have healed with the medicine he gave me. Yi Chen smiled mysteriously, but Zhang Guan was about to cry. Five fractures of more than eight millimeters healed in a week? Where did you find this old Chinese doctor? Boss, you might as well not make skincare products and open a hospital instead. Of course, this was just Zheng Wang's inner thoughts. He was extremely shocked but did not show it too much. Since the day he decided to bet on Yi Chen, he knew there must be something magical behind Yi Chen. Curious as he was, he didn't dare to ask. From the day he decided to bet on Yi Chen, he knew there must be something magical behind Yi Chen. Zheng Wang brought good news to Yi Chen. First, the arrest of Liang Shouchuan, followed by the establishment of Lang Huaidu, and then the successful registration of four companies led by Langhua, Langhua Catering, Langhua Precious Metals, Langhua Department Store, and Langhua Apartments. Since the power of attorney was signed yesterday, all of this could be handled by Zhang Wang. With these five companies, the next step was to establish a group. However, establishing a group was not as simple as registering a company. It required a certain amount of tax payment and capital proof. Therefore, Langzi Group still needed Yi Chen to run Lang Huai do well for a period of time. Yi Chen was not as happy about this inevitable matter, but the downfall of Liang Shouchuan was definitely a great thing for him. He couldn't wait to see how the Li Group would deal with it. Do you have any friends in the industry who can help me release some information? Just say that Liang Shouchuan's downfall was reported by me, Yi Chen. Yi Chen made a very bold decision, and Zhang Wan was stunned. He didn't expect Yi Chen to do this. If this information were to be released, it would not only offend a large group of real estate tycoons in Zhanghai City, but it might also implicate giants in other industries. The first to be affected would be the Li Group. Although the Li Group has been focusing on real estate development in the past two years, they have also dabbled in other industries. This would be very detrimental to the development of the Wave of Flowers project. To put it bluntly, the Lee Group would go all out to squeeze the market of the Wave of Flowers project, even at the cost of going all out. Zhang Guang tried to persuade Yi Chen with these reasons, but Yi Chen only said one thing. Are you sure the Lee Group can survive until then? This question left Zhang Guang speechless. He was shocked because the Lee Group had been in Zhanghai for many years, and many properties were developed by them. Shaking the Lee Group would require more than just capital. However, for some reason, when Yi Chen said this, Zhang Guang had a very bad premonition that the Li Group might really fall. But what could be done? Rely on Yi Chen? Rely on the Wave of Flowers project? Rely on the future Wave of Flowers group? Zhang Guang didn't know. He could only look at Yi Chen with a sense of fear and ask, Boss, have you thought this through? If you don't do this, do you think the Lee Group won't be able to trace back to you for putting that information in the General Administration Office? Yi Chen's words made Zhang Wang break out in a cold sweat once again. 
He had taken a big gamble before, but just now, when he was considering the Wave of Flowers project, he clearly overlooked his own interests. There was no doubt that once the Li group found out the real reason for Liang Shouchuan's arrest, he would be finished. Zhang Guang thought Yi Chen was doing this to save face, but he didn't expect that it was actually to protect himself. The question was, could Yi Chen withstand the Li group's crazy retaliation? Unfortunately, Yi Chen couldn't hear Zhang Wang's inner thoughts. If he could, Yi Chen's response would be, it's not the Li group retaliating against him now, but him retaliating against the Li group. As Yi Chen wished, after leaving Baiyanjian, Zhang Wang spread the news that the Wave of Flowers project had reported Liang Shouchuan and pointed the finger at the Li group. Soon, the financial and business circles of Zhanghai City received this underground news. It couldn't be blamed on Zhang Guang for the widespread of the news, as he had helped many large corporations in lawsuits before and had even faced off with the legal teams of many large corporations. Over time, this underground news became accepted as true. Yang Daton, as a member of the industry, also received this news. When Yi Chen was planning to create the Wave of Flowers project, Yang Daton was present. He immediately realized that this was Yi Chen's move. This bold and somewhat unconventional behavior was full of Yi Chen's style of not playing by the rules. However, Yang Daton didn't know that Yi Chen had been in a car accident. It was only when he contacted Zhang Guang to confirm that he learned about Yi Chen's actions. However, he wasn't as clever as Zhang Wang. He saw the news released by Yi Chen as an act of venting frustration. So, after inquiring about Yi Chen's whereabouts from Zhang Guang, he quickly prepared a generous gift and set off. At that moment, in the Baiyanjian Grand Hotel, Yi Chen was studying the ratio of recycled water. He had been in contact with Wu Yue these past few days, and to avoid worrying Wu Yue, Yi Chen hadn't mentioned his car accident. Just as Zhang Daton had inquired about Yi Chen's address, Yi Chen received a call from Zhang Wang. Boss, Mr. Yang from Hontong Jewelry just called to ask for your address. I told him, and he should be coming to visit you. Yi Chen just made a sound of acknowledgement and hung up the phone. Yang Daton's visit was within Yi Chen's expectations. A cash transaction of 1 billion is enough to elevate Yang Daton into the so called upper social circle. The precise sniper attacks targeting the Li group have already caused quite a stir within the circle, and Yang Daton is bound to receive the news. Yi Chen is preparing to see one ton. Yi Chen continued, I've already sold over 700 caddies through Boss Yang before. I still have nearly 1300 caddies on hand. I don't know if Boss Yang's channels can handle all of it. Another 1300 caddies? Yang Datong was surprised. Compared to last time, this was more than double, meaning the transaction amount was around 240 million. He couldn't come up with that much money in a short time. If Boss Yang can't handle it, I'll find someone else. The price can go higher, Yi Chen said timely prompting Yang Daton to agree immediately. No, Yi buddy, I'll take it. I just can't come up with that much money at once. Yang Daton hesitated for a moment, then continued, How about this, give me a week, I'll collect the funds from the gold last time, and we'll make the trade, deal. Deal, Yi Chen didn't hesitate either. He liked Yang Daton's straightforwardness. Yang Daton's purpose in this visit was to continue to profit from Yi Chen. After confirming the trading time, he exchanged a few polite words and left. It may sound harsh, but in the world of businessmen, the only tool to build relationships is profit. As long as Yi Chen can continuously increase profits for Yang Datong, Yang Datong will do everything to protect Yi Chen. Yi Chen also knew that once the news spread, retaliation from the Li group would come quickly. However, the waves had not yet formed, it was just an empty shell. What could the Li group do? Could they cancel the waves at the Industrial and Commercial Bureau? As the saying goes, those who are barefoot are not afraid of those who wear shoes. Thinking of this, Yi Chen boldly took out his phone and opened the group chat. Is impressive, a model of success. Li Xiaoqing is a second generation rich, while Changgu is a first generation rich. They are different. Looking at these words that were originally flattering Li Xiaoqing but were now being used to flatter himself, Yi Chen felt the world was cruel. He didn't want these compliments, he wanted to see Li Xiaoqing's reaction to these words. Of course, all this was not the main event. 
Yi Chen knew what was more important than revenge was a man's career. So, combining the experiments of the past two days, Yi Chen bought an empty spray bottle, some glycerin, and lemons to make his own toner. The launch of a skincare product line couldn't rely solely on his experiments, it needed to be pushed to the market, which required market feedback. The simplest toner only required mineral water, glycerin, and lemon juice to be made. After mixing them in the right proportions, Yi Chen added a drop of diluted regenerative water to the spray bottle and closed the cap. Diluted 100 times, if the market feedback was good, this number could be increased to 1000 times. The spray bottle used for the experiment was 50 milliliters, meaning that after being dissolved in water, the amount of regenerative water was minimal. Since Wu Yue hadn't detected any other substances in the regenerative water, Yi Chen wasn't worried about being purified by someone with ulterior motives. This number was also the result of strict calculations and experiments. For the first time, Yi Chen cut a small wound on his finger and then soaked it in undiluted regenerative water. In less than a minute, the wound healed. The experiment didn't end there. Yi Chen cut another wound on his finger and sprayed the undiluted regenerative water from the spray bottle onto the wound. It took 10 minutes, Bentley, resulting in high production costs. However, there are still many new models on the market, but it has become a kind of sentimentality. Who would spend nearly 10 times the price to buy a larger Passat? But Yi Chen just liked it, low-key luxury, with connotation, that's the Passat. However, this time, Yi Chen is not planning to be low-key. Although the Passat is his favorite, it's already in the past, Yi Chen decided to be a bit wild. A man should drive a sports car, but after looking around, he wasn't satisfied. Instead, the newly released Mercedes-Benz AMG S caught Yi Chen's attention, the front grille resembling the Passat but with a more aggressive look. That's the one. After making up his mind, the next day Yi Chen went to the Mercedes-Benz 4S store. Before that, Yi Chen called Wu Yue and asked him to accompany him. It was only at this time that Wu Yue learned that Yi Chen had been in a car accident. His attention was originally on the luxury of the presidential suite at Bayanjian Hotel, but when he saw Yi Chen's leg in a cast, his face changed immediately. He shouted and asked who did it to Yi Chen, saying he would confront that person. Yi Chen directly replied, it was done by Li Xiaoqing, are you going to confront him? Mentioning Li Xiaoqing, Wu Yue's face turned even worse. Chen Gu, is it because of that incident at Baiyunjian Hotel, this, it's all my fault. Wu Yue's voice also slowed down. He knew that with his current abilities, he couldn't deal with Li Xiaoqing. Yi Chen shook his head and said, all right, don't blame yourself for this. It has nothing to do with you. I have had grievances with him for a long time. Besides, stop being so nervous. I'm fine. After speaking, Yi Chen stood up directly and bounced in place a few times. Are you, are you okay? Wu Yue looked at Yi Chen, who seemed perfectly fine, unable to speak in shock. Yi Chen didn't intend to hide it from him and said, I'm fine. I had an accident, but I found a good orthopedic doctor, and I'm all better now. Even facing Wu Yue, Yi Chen didn't reveal the whole truth. Wu Yue wasn't a fool and looked disbelieving, quickly asking Yi Chen to sit down. It takes a hundred days to heal bones and tendons. Even the best doctor can't help. Chen Gu, what if we don't fight with Li Xiaoqing? The Li group is too big for us to compete with. Looking at the cast on Yi Chen's body, Wu Yue felt more and more uncomfortable. He felt a mix of emotions, thinking that Yi Chen had suffered the accident on his behalf. Yi Chen didn't want Wu Yue to keep talking negatively and said sternly, You, if you keep this up, I won't be happy. Do you think the Li group is an easy target? But? There's no but. Survival of the fittest is the law of nature. If you get hit, you have to accept it, but never cry and retreat. Yi Chen's tone was firm, leaving Wu Yue speechless. The Li group has been entrenched for many years, stepping on countless people to rise. If we want to start a business, do you think the Li group will let me off? Hearing Yi Chen's words, Wu Yue became even more confused and muttered, why would the Li group target us? Just because of Li Xiaoqing, they wouldn't be so protective, right? Of course not. Wu Yue was taken aback and quickly asked, then what did you do? 
Yi Chen didn't beat around the bush and smiled, hey, to be precise, I uprooted the Li group's many years of foundation. In the Yulongbei villa area of Zhanghai city, Li Xiaoqing walked out of the study dejectedly, closing the door behind him. He could still hear Li Zhangda roaring angrily on the phone. Just now, Li Xiaoqing was called into the study and scolded harshly, questioning how he could not even handle a young kid, and how he would take over the entire Li group in the future. Li Xiaoqing was wronged, he had no idea what had happened. He was completely bewildered after being scolded as soon as he returned from the bar. After understanding the reason, Li Xiaoqing learned that there was a fire in his backyard. Although Li Xiaoqing didn't have much contact with Liang Xiaochuan, he noticed the relationship between the old man and Liang. Li Xiaoqing wasn't a fool, and he knew that the previous troubles could be resolved quickly. So, he could easily figure out the extent of Liang Xiaochuan's relationship with his family. Li Xiaoqing knew exactly what his father was yelling about. But he couldn't understand how Yi Chen, whom he had turned into a cripple, managed to report Liang Xiaochuan. Was Yi Chen a deity who could foresee the future? When Li Xiaoqing picked up his phone, he was so angry that he almost smashed it. It had only been a few days, and Yi Chen had miraculously recovered and even invited his classmates to dinner in the group chat. He wondered what Yi Chen was thinking, inviting dozens of people to a five star restaurant for a feast, risking bankruptcy. Li Xiaoqing was curious about how Yi Chen would spend that 10 million. So, he couldn't help but reply in the group chat that he would also attend. Unexpectedly, Yi Chen was indeed there and replied that he would be waiting at 8 o'clock. Li Xiaoqing was caught off guard, feeling flustered, especially since he was the one who had caused Yi Chen's disability through Fabiao. But then Li Xiaoqing thought for a moment, even if Yi Chen was discharged from the hospital, he would probably still be in a cast in bandages. Jumping like this was just showing off. Li Xiaoqing replied calmly, All right, thank you for your hospitality, I will bring Xia Yaru to the appointment. After sending the message, Li Xiaoqing put down his phone. As for Yi Chen starting a company, he didn't care at all. How much money could Yi Chen have now? To establish a company of what size, it must be just a broken studio compared to the Li family group. Ha, huh, a country bumpkin, what do you have to compete with me, money, women, all belong to me. At this time, Yi Chen was on his way to the Mercedes-Benz 4S store with Wu Yue. They took a taxi, and Wu Yue naturally saw the conversation in the group just now. He was a little worried and asked Yi Chen, will there be any trouble if you let Li Xiaoqing go? Yi Chen shrugged and said, this dinner is prepared for him. It wouldn't be interesting if he didn't come. Those friends you mentioned before with relatively good skills, I also invited them over. It's a good opportunity to meet. Wu Yue nodded and didn't say anything more. Although Wu Yue was not good at expressing himself, he was thoughtful. Yi Chen's actions always made him feel like he was hitting a rock with an egg. But even if it was hitting a rock with an egg, his brother had played too many surprises. Wu Yue was also barefoot, and he couldn't afford to lose his life. He decided to go with Yi Chen and take a chance. Soon, the two arrived at the Mercedes-Benz 4S store. Yi Chen was still in a wheelchair, and the 4S store had never served such a customer before. Although the two were dressed relatively casually, a salesperson still came to serve them, waste any time and handed his card to the salesperson, saying, swipe the card. Both cars must be fully equipped. One can be driven away, and I will come back for the other one. Seeing Yi Chen being so generous, the salesperson took the card and was about to swipe it. They couldn't let such a big customer slip away. However, Wu Yue still insisted that he couldn't accept the car. No work, no reward. Yi Chen had already repaid his favor from years ago, and he felt uncomfortable continuing like this. Then I have to give you a car, right? Yi Chen understood Wu Yue's feelings, so he gestured around and said, just pick any car from these. Don't try to save money. You are my brother. Well. Wu Yue hesitated, but in the end, he had no choice but to pick the GLC that he had been eyeing from the beginning. Although it wasn't a big G, the GLC was still not cheap. The top model cost 600,000. The smile on the salesperson's face never faded. I'll take this one. The basic model is fine. I'm not picky about cars. 
Don't listen to him. Go for the top model directly. What can you do with that little money saved? Yi Chen swiped his card directly. The store also had the license to register the cars. After signing the contract, the salesperson invited them to the VIP area to rest. They were treating a big spender who didn't even blink when swiping his card. Mr. Yi, Mr. Wu, once the paperwork is done, we will notify you. Please rest here, and we will serve you coffee and pastries shortly. Yi Chen nodded, indicating that they didn't need to be disturbed. After the salesperson left, Wu Yiwei still felt uneasy sitting there. Chen Gu, I think the GLC is too expensive. How about using it as a public car? I? I can't drive such a good car by myself. Hearing Wu Yowei's words, Yi Chen was about to kick him, but he was wearing a cast at the moment, so he couldn't do it. If you keep talking nonsense like this, I won't consider you my brother anymore. If you follow me, you will naturally receive the best treatment. Yi Chen said, and Wu Yuwei couldn't say anything more. He could only accept it silently, while making a mental note to help Yi Chen make a name for himself. I have already chosen a research and development site. There is a new villa development next to Mirror Lake. I bought two buildings, one for your research and one for your rest. Now we just need the equipment in place. Make a list of what instruments you need, and I will have someone purchase them. Don't go for the cheap options. Research and development cannot be compromised. I will only provide the raw materials, which are commercial secrets. So, you need to come up with something that can be submitted to the patent office and consumers. Hearing Yi Chen's words, Wu Yuwei quickly made a mental note. He was well aware that the treatment Yi Chen was offering was extremely generous, and he had to make the most of it. The two of them discussed the market trends for a while, but Yi Chen's attention was drawn to a familiar figure. Sona, in the lobby, the woman who had just met with two salespeople and was about to leave, isn't she Suna? But this is a Mercedes-Benz 4S store, what is she doing here? Suna was dressed in professional attire today, different in color and style from the uniformity in the Mercedes-Benz 4S store, which made her stand out. Yi Chen originally wanted to go up and say hello, but Suna had already left. Wu Yue saw that Yi Chen was discussing market trends with him one second and then his attention shifted, so he asked, Chen Gu, do you know her? Yi Chen nodded and then called over the two salespeople who had just been talking to him. What was the young lady in grey professional attire doing here? The two salespeople who were called over were stunned for a moment. Although Yi Chen looked serious, they knew the unwritten rules of the industry and their expressions were a bit strange, but they still said, Mr. Yi, the lady who just came over was applying for a sales position, but we just recruited through social channels, so we are not planning to hire anyone else. Oh, okay. You can go back to your work. Yi Chen waved his hand and didn't say anything more, but Wu Yuwei could see what Yi Chen was thinking. Chen Gu, he he, do you like her? As they were close brothers, Yi Chen didn't hide his thoughts and smiled, asking, How about having her as my assistant? Wu Yuwei didn't get a clear look, but still said, If you like her, it's fine, but there are too many materialistic girls nowadays, you have to be careful. Yi Chen naturally understood what Wu Yuwei meant having had his own experiences, and Wu Yuwei had seen it all. Mr. Yi, Mr. Wu, the procedures have been completed. After resting in the VIP area for a while, the procedures had been completed on the forest store side, but it was still some time before 8 o'clock in the evening. Yi Chen then took Wu Yuwei to stroll around Mirror Lake residence to check out the venue. Wu Yuwei was in charge of the development side, so he decided which building to use for research and living between Building 1 and Building 13 as well as how to decorate the villa for research purposes. Without exception, Wu Yuwei was amazed that Yi Chen had spent 60 million to buy these two buildings for research and accommodation. Chen Gu, isn't this a bit too wasteful? 60. Million is enough to set up a complete research ecosystem. Listening to Wu Yuwei talk about waste, Yi Chen's ears were almost calloused, so he patted Wu Yuwei's back and said, you have the responsibility for the entire research area, I have said that I want to turn the splashes into a conglomerate like the Li family, you should understand how important research is. I understand, Chen Gu. Since you understand, you need to expand your horizons. A $100,000 meal, a 2 million car, a 30 million house, 
these will all be small expenses in the future. Spending money is what counts, otherwise it's just a pile of waste paper, or a pile of data, do you understand? Unacceptable. She had given her body to Heihu in order to climb up, but she hadn't enjoyed a single good day yet, and it turned out like this. The millions of RMB she had gotten turned out to be counterfeit money. Of course, she was willing to come out and testify for Heihu, but no one believed her words. After all, she was the one who said that Yi Chen sold 10 million worth of gold at Hangtong Jewelry Store, and now if she came out to testify that Yi Chen made counterfeit money, it would be self-contradictory. So Zhou Ying hated, she really hated, but no matter how much she hated, some people here who were not worth him drinking with. But when Yi Chen said this, no one objected, except for Li Xiaoqing, who looked embarrassed. His intention was to embarrass Yi Chen with his words, but Yi Chen openly acknowledged it and simply ignored him. Now, this group of people who were sitting on the fence were all turning towards Yi Chen, either chatting about the past or work, with many of them wanting to intern at Yi Chen's company. Zhou Ying's expression was particularly unpleasant, as she had come to see Li Xiaoqing give Yi Chen a hard time. But since that didn't happen, and Li Xiaoqing was being blatantly ignored, she felt uneasy. Su Xiaoya was also feeling a bit off today. She had been with Li Xiaoqing for two years and naturally knew his ways. Before tonight, she had no idea that Yi Chen had been in a car accident. But just by seeing Li Xiaoqing's expression when he saw Yi Chen, she had a vague idea of what was going on. Xiaoqing, why don't we leave? This noisy atmosphere is so annoying. Su Xiaoya pretended well. She didn't know why, but she had never felt anything for Yi Chen before. Even though Yi Chen had lent her money to buy a phone, had been in debt and even dropped out of school, she never felt guilty. But seeing Yi Chen reappear in her life, looking even better than before, Su Xiaoya couldn't help but feel a strange sensation. Leave? Why should we leave? Li Xiaoqing glared at Su Xiaoya fiercely and then coughed a few times. Yi Chen, I heard that you started a company that sells products for women? Yi Chen met Li Xiaoqing's gaze and nodded with a smile. That's right. But these are not just products for women. They are skincare products that can be used by both men and women. Li Xiaoqing, do you also use women? You? That's enough. At this point, Su Xiaoya stood up in anger. Everyone quieted down when the main character appeared. Yi Chen, what do you mean? When did I become your woman? So she didn't dare make any trouble. As for Su Xiaoya, she was completely shocked. She couldn't believe that Li Xiaoqing could do such a thing. Murder Yi Chen? Su Xiaoya couldn't even imagine it. How could the man she had been with for two years plot to murder someone? It was too terrifying. Wu Yuwei and his friends from the school laboratory were not at all panicked. Before entering the private room, Yi Chen had already greeted them and told them to just watch the show. But the drama was far from over. As Li Xiaoqing was being taken away, he cast a resentful glance at Yi Chen. In response, Yi Chen made an even bolder move. He removed the casts from his legs and arms and stood up from his wheelchair. Everyone was stunned. Li Xiaoqing's eyes were about to pop out, even Wang Zhang couldn't believe it. He had been one of the first to arrive at the hospital when Yi Chen had surgery. He had seen Yi Chen's wounds, but now, just a few days later, how was he able to stand up? Yi Chen didn't feel like he had one. On the contrary, the real drama was just beginning. Walking up to Li Xiaoqing, he couldn't help but laugh. Now, who do you think looks more like a cripple, the two of us? Li Xiaoqing didn't say a word. He felt incredulous as he looked at Yi Chen, as if his whole brain had emptied, as if the whole world had betrayed him. Wang Zheng didn't give Li Xiaoqing a chance to speak and took him away directly. Come with me, Yi Chen. Yi Chen nodded and followed Wang Zheng out. As soon as Wang Zhang closed the door to the private room, chaos erupted inside, with continuous discussions. The recent events were so dramatic and the twist was so powerful that they had never expected Li Xiaoqing to actually attempt to murder Yi Chen. Although he had not succeeded, he was ultimately taken away by the police. More importantly, the words spoken by Wang Zhang at the scene, mentioning that Li Xiaoqing's father had been arrested, raised questions about the fate of the Li family group. On the other side, after Yi Chen came out of the private room, Wang Zhang quickly pulled him aside. 
Be careful, my bones haven't fully healed yet, Yi Chen complained. But Wang Zheng didn't listen. He had just seen Yi Chen come out, looking as if he had fully recovered, and he couldn't understand. What's going on, you're already better? Does Chief Wan not want me to recover quickly? Yi Chen retorted. Wang Zheng shook his head. But you've recovered too quickly. Are you a gecko, regrowing limbs? Nonsense, Yi Chen shook his head and said, I consulted an old Chinese doctor to set my bones, and used some Chinese medicine. Chinese culture is profound, we should have confidence in traditional Chinese medicine. Don't give me that, Wang Zheng couldn't understand, and continued, if you can recover so quickly, it would be a medical miracle. Honestly, did you bribe everyone just to throw the Li father and son in jail? Hey, then let it be a medical miracle, Yi Chen shrugged, then said, if I had the ability to bribe so many people, did I also bribe you, Wang Zhen? You were there watching me during the surgery, watching me unconscious in bed for so long, was that also fake? Of course not, but. No buts. I did have an accident, and now I am indeed better. As for the Li father and son, the evidence is conclusive. Are you going to say they didn't bribe, didn't hire someone to kill? Wang Zhang was speechless at Yi Chen's words. Indeed, the evidence was conclusive, almost ironclad. The size of the Li family group, how could their chairman be directly arrested and imprisoned? This was bound to cause turmoil in the business world. Wang Zhang was well aware of how many forces were at play behind the scenes, and what was truly frightening about Yi Chen was that he had calculated all of this, Wang Zheng didn't dare say anything else, but one thing he was certain of was that Yi Chen was definitely not a good person. I hope I won't have to come and arrest you in the future. After leaving this sentence, Wang Zhang led his team away. Yi Chen shrugged, knowing the meaning behind the warning Wang Zhang had just left. But now, he wanted to enjoy this grand entrance. As Yi Chen pushed open the door of the private room, almost everyone looked at him in surprise, and the discussions inside the room came to a sudden halt. Everyone was wondering what Yi Chen had experienced to become so decisive, even managing to capture Li Xiaoqing. It was known that the Li group's influence in Zhanghai was almost untouchable. But Yi Chen didn't put on airs, just chuckled twice. Hey, don't just stand there, the food hasn't even arrived yet. I didn't expect such a little incident to happen. A little incident? Perhaps only Yi Chen thought so. Here, the restaurant manager began to call for the dishes to be served. Yi Chen didn't play around, it was indeed a set of S-class dishes, and considering the large number of people, Yi Chen had the restaurant switch to larger portions, even though the price had multiplied several times. After resettling, Yi Chen pushed the wheelchair he had arrived in to the side, and said somewhat embarrassedly, this broken thing made us a laughingstock. The conflict between me and Li Xiaoqing will be handed over to the authorities to deal with. Today, we should eat and drink. While what he said was correct, not a single person dared to. Pick up their chopsticks. It was unclear who shouted, Shen Gu is right, we should eat and drink. The grudge between him and Li Xiaoqing has nothing to do with us. We support Shen Gu. As the saying goes, a guilty conscience needs no accuser. Yi Chen had no grievances with these people, and he was well aware that half of the people who came today were purely here to eat. They were the luckiest because they could eat in peace. As for those who were indecisive, as well as Zhou Ying and Su Xiaoya, no matter how delicious the food at this five-star restaurant was, they probably couldn't taste its five-star quality. Especially Su Xiaoya, Yi Chen deliberately glanced at her, and in a panic, Su Xiaoya got up, grabbed her bag, and left in a fluster. Once Su Xiaoya left, Zhou Ying knew she couldn't stay either. Today, she had already exposed herself, so there was no need for any polite words. She quickly followed Su Xiaoya and slipped away. Without these two people, the atmosphere at the table became even better. The meal took a long time, and Yi Chen found that some classmates were indeed interested in joining his research and development team. After confirming that there were no issues in their conversation and behavior, Yi Chen told them to contact Wu Yuwei. He handed over the research and development work to Wu Yuwei to make the final decision. After the meal, the final bill was over a hundred thousand, with no particularly expensive seafood or alcohol ordered, and no one dared to order more. So even with over 20 people, they didn't eat much. 
Yi Chen had never intended to maintain any relationships through this meal, his heart was not in it at all. So after it ended, he had the staff from the forest store bring the big G over and left Wu Yue to deal with the mess. Back at the Baiyunjian Grand Hotel, Zheng Wang was already waiting there. Yi Chen had a little drink and was a bit tipsy. When he saw Zhang Guang, he smiled and asked, Zheng Lu, didn't you go back to rest? Zhang Guang, with a pained expression but very excited, said, How could I sleep, boss? Zhenghai City is about to change, how did you know? Shu, sure, let's talk inside. Yi Chen interrupted Zhang Guang and only continued the conversation after they returned to the room. You want to ask me why I am certain that the Bai Group and other real estate giants are secretly making a move, putting Li Zhengda in a difficult situation, right? Zhenghai City, as the capital city of Tianan province, located in the central plains, has been stagnant in development, almost locked inland, but in the past two years, after hosting several world-class sports events and suddenly appearing on the national stage, the real estate industry in Zhenghai City made bold moves and elevated the city's GDP to a new level. While the old city areas became desolate, the new city areas were lively and decorated. The new houses where families lived were obtained at the cost of countless years of hard work drained by banks. Even now, property prices in Zhanghai City continue to rise without any signs of stopping. This led to the development of the real estate industry in Zhanghai City. As the saying goes, when standing at the wind's edge, even a pig can fly. The Li family was the pig that flew at the right time and stood at the right wind edge. Prior to this, the Li group had only achieved some success in the catering and hotel industries. With years of savings, once the real estate industry started to develop, the Li group quickly entered the market. By leveraging internal connections, they acquired several small industrial companies in a short period of time, growing into an unshakable giant in Zhanghai City. However, tall trees catch the wind, the Li Group's rapid development was due to their strong internal connections and the hard work drained from numerous small industrial companies. This made them many enemies in the real estate industry. Today, several major events occurred in Zhanghai. First, news of Liang Shouchuan's arrest spread, causing numerous vested interests to flee. Shortly after, news from an unknown source suggested that action was being prepared against the Li Group from higher authorities. Almost instantly, all real estate giants turned against the Li Group, exposing the dirty deeds they had done, including multiple cases of manslaughter, tax evasion, and bribery. During a board meeting of the Li Group, Li Zhengda was taken away, followed by a swift control operation by insiders, including his right-hand men, such as his personal bodyguard Fei Bao and personal lawyer, who had helped Li Zhengda commit crimes and manipulate finances. Given Li Zhengda's influence in Zhanghai, it was impossible for him to be brought down so quickly but his competitors were wise. They did not know who initiated the move, but they knew that if they did not act now, Li Zhengda would likely expose all the dirty deeds in the industry. In just one day, Liang Shouchuan fell, Li Zhengda was detained, and his family, including his wife and son, were taken in for investigation. The once dominant Li group in Zhanghai was suddenly left leaderless and vulnerable, with numerous competitors eager to take advantage and gain from the situation. Zhang Guang experienced all of this firsthand, with the added twist that almost every step was anticipated by Yi Chen, who informed him in advance, allowing him to seize the opportunity and play a role. Zhang Guang did not do much, he simply followed Yi Chen's instructions and submitted several crucial pieces of evidence after Li Jingda's arrest. As for the unexpected revelation that Fei Bao had betrayed his boss by confessing to the attempt to cripple Yi Chen, it was a pleasant surprise. Neither Yi Chen nor Zhang Guang had expected Fei Bao to betray his employer. However, Zhang Guang still could not understand how Yi Chen had foreseen every step and knew about the sudden changes in Zhanghai City. It was beyond the scope of a young man in his early twenties. Zhang Guang was puzzled, but Yi Chen just smiled and said, Actually, all of this is thanks to you. This time, Zhang Guang was even more confused by Yi Chen's words. Thanks to me? Yi Chen nodded firmly, That's right. It's all thanks to you. If it weren't for the evidence you provided when reporting Liang Shouchuan in the beginning, the materials submitted after Li Zhengda's arrest, and the rumors you spread, the other real estate tycoons wouldn't have turned against him. Without their intervention, Li's group wouldn't have faced such a crisis. Of course, there's another possibility, Yi Chen continued, after Liang Shouchuan went in, it's very likely that he confessed to some things. 
After all, he is an organized and disciplined person. He knows that at this moment, as long as he cooperates, he will be treated leniently. Who would sit on that cold bench, facing overwhelming evidence and the power of an entire country, and not confess? My goodness. Zhang Wang was speechless. He hadn't expected Yi Chen to be so calculating, and he hadn't realized that everything stemmed from the evidence he provided when reporting Liang Shouchuan. Now Zhang Wang had only one thought in mind, he had made the right bet. Boss, I'm curious. If they hadn't arrested Li Zhangda today, what would you have done? Zhang Guang's question hit the mark, but Yi Chen seemed to have a plan in mind. He continued, even if they hadn't arrested Li Zhangda today, his future wouldn't have been easy. Because Liang Shouchuan has fallen, Li's group is now vulnerable. Anyone could take advantage of them. Moreover, if any of Li's competitors or Liang Shouchuan betray Li's group, my plan would have failed. That's what I bet on. As for what I would do if I didn't win, have you seen the consequences of those gamblers who go all in at the casino? Hearing Yi Chen's words, Zhang Guan was astonished. This was a high-stakes game, where failure meant facing death. But Yi Chen wouldn't reveal his backup plan to Zhang Guang. He had many options, at least one of which would keep him wealthy for the rest of his life. Boss, I understand, Zhang Guang said, showing great admiration for Yi Chen. Age was irrelevant in matters of wisdom, and in this game of strategy, he admired Yi Chen's courage and vision. So, boss, how's your leg, all better? Ha, it's fine, Yi Chen gave Zhang Guang a mysterious smile, and Zhang Guang didn't press further. He knew Yi Chen had many secrets, some of which he shouldn't inquire about. What's next, boss? Zhang Guang changed the subject, our company has been established. Are we moving on to sampling and production? In theory, this was the next step for a new company, but Ji Chen shook his head. Do you have other plans? No, we haven't finalized the RD yet. It'll take about half a month. So, we don't need to rush the product line. But I need you to start working on something. Zhang Wang perked up. So far, the tasks Ji Chen had assigned him had gone smoothly, almost all of them targeted. He nodded quickly. I need you to find some legal loopholes. I want to get Li Xiaoqing released, Yi Chen's statement was shocking, and Zhang Guang couldn't understand the purpose behind it. Boss, this. Zhang Guang expressed his concerns, we finally managed to outmaneuver the Li family, and now releasing Li Xiaoqing would be like releasing a tiger back into the mountains. The Li's group would be in disarray without a leader, and we could take advantage of the situation. If Li Xiaoqing comes back to take over the Li's group, we won't benefit at all. It seemed that Ji Chen had already considered this step, and he simply smiled faintly, saying, I want Li Xiaoqing to come back and take over the Li's group. Why? Zhang Guang couldn't understand. Because, do you think Li Xiaoqing is a qualified leader? With this seemingly ordinary question, Zhang Guang suddenly realized what Ji Chen's real intentions were, yes, Li Xiaoqing is indeed a playboy, not a qualified leader at all. Letting him take over the Li group is a trap, a trap that will completely destroy the Li group. After understanding this truth, Zhang Guang admired Yi Chen even more. I understand, boss, I'll do it right away. Zhang Guang continued, after today's incident, other real estate giants will realize that you used this leverage to enter the game. They might even turn their attention towards you. I understand, they want to strangle me in the cradle, Yi Chen said disdainfully, tilting his head but they must have the ability to do so. Yi Chen smiled lightly, giving Zhang Guang a chill. But in the business world, it's either you die or I live. Yi Chen just made some small moves, not to the point of being ruthless. This night was not a victorious one for Yi Chen. After Zhang Guang left, he stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling window, overlooking the night view of Zhonghai. In the near future, he would add his own mark to this magnificent night view. Tonight was just the beginning. After the collapse of the Lee Group tonight, all the competitors who had competed with the Lee Group would discover a new unfamiliar face in this change, someone not to be ignored. That person was Yi Chen. Early the next morning, Yi Chen was awakened by a phone call. It was an unfamiliar number, but a familiar one. Yi Chen didn't expect that she had broken the phone, but the number remained the same. 
Glancing at the top, confidence came from asking him to do things and even asking him to pick up the documents. But even if this drama was playing out, Yi Chen didn't mind making it more convincing. Xiaoya, I still have to go to the bureau to get Li Xiaoqing out. I will have my men pick up the contract, okay? Su Xiaoya thought for a moment and figured it should be fine, so she agreed. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chen breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed like he wouldn't be able to sleep in today. Honestly, Yi Chen didn't expect Su Xiaoya to call for help on her own. It seemed that the Li family was really in dire straits, even Su Xiaoya, who hadn't even entered the family, was starting to help find a solution. But ironically, Su Xiaoya's humble plea for help made Yi Chen unable to tell if these two really loved each other or if they had just grown accustomed to a life of luxury and didn't want to leave Li Xiaoqing, the big tree. But then again, Yi Chen didn't mind continuing to play the role of a lapdog. He wanted more than just what happened last night when Wang Jin publicly took Li Xiaoqing away at the dinner party. He wanted more, and the stakes were higher. Later, Yi Chen called Zhang Guang and asked him to contact Su Xiaoya to get that 10 billion contract. Yi Chen didn't know what collusion there was between the Li Group and Jiang Gan Industries, but one thing he was sure of was that 10 billion with 2% taken off definitely had a problem. And Zhang Guang also quickly replied to Yi Chen, telling him that it was not impossible to rescue Li Xiaoqing. The condition was that Li Xiaoqing's father, Li Zhangda, had to sign a confession, taking all the blame upon himself. In this way, if Yi Chen withdrew the lawsuit, the police would not pursue Li Xiaoqing's responsibility anymore, as it was Fei Biao who was the hit and run driver at the time, not Li Xiaoqing. Can arrange for you to meet with Li Zhengda, but I must also be present. Wang Zheng thought that as long as he was present, even if Yi Chen wanted to play tricks, it shouldn't work out, so he just let it go. Yi Chen readily agreed. Anyway, the things he wanted to say were not secrets, so letting Wang Zheng listen wouldn't pose any threat. But Wang Zheng felt uncomfortable thinking about it, so he still spoke bluntly. Yi Chen, you better be honest. Under my watch, don't try anything funny. Zhenghai City, Xinqing District, District Bureau. Yi Chen arrived here on time. Although there were many luxury cars these days, there were not many on the streets. Wang Zheng saw Yi Chen's new car and looked him up and down. Changed cars again? The previous car turned into a pile of scrap metal. It's still locked up by your traffic brigade. Should I drive it with my head? Yi Chen's words pushed Wang Zheng back, but Wang Zheng wasn't angry. He didn't dislike Yi Chen, but he also felt that Yi Chen was playing with fire. In this way, the two could be considered as enemies. After entering the district bureau, Wang Zheng whispered to Yi Chen, Don't make a scene later. You are still an outsider. If you are found out, I won't be able to explain. What's there to be afraid of? Yi Chen seemed indifferent. This was his second time here, giving him a sense of nostalgia. Your leaders have all gone in. If you keep following these rules, you won't be able to solve any cases. Due to the hustle and bustle, Wang Zhang didn't argue with Yi Chen. After entering the interrogation room, there was indeed no one else there. After a while, Two uniformed personnel brought Li Zhengda in. Normally, someone should accompany during the interrogation, but these two seemed to know Wang Zhang. With Wang Zhang's signal, they left directly. It seems Captain Wang still has his own people. Yi Chen joked as he sat on one of the chairs. Wang Zhang sat next to him and said impatiently, Don't play games. Just ten minutes, don't be cunning. The conversation between the two caught Li Zhengda's attention. His gaze quickly locked onto Yi Chen, feeling somewhat familiar. In fact, Yi Chen had never met Li Zhengda before. Today could be considered their first meeting. Yi Chen didn't know how powerful Li Zhengda was before, but now, Li Zhengda was wearing a prisoner's uniform, looking far from imposing, even with some white hair on his temples. It was as if he had aged overnight. Since Wang Zheng didn't intervene, Yi Chen brought a chair in front of Li Zhengda. Chairman Li, can we chat? Yi Chen said, making Li Zhengda more suspicious. Have we met before? We have, of course. Yi Chen smiled without reservation. I'm Yi Chen. Chairman Li, you must have heard my name a lot these days, right? It's you? Upon hearing this name, Li Zhengda instantly became alert, his eyes emitting a sharp light. 
firmly locking onto Yi Chen. If looks could kill, Yi Chen might have been dead by now. He he, it's me. Yi Chen smiled cheekily and continued, just now you heard, I only have 10 minutes, so I won't beat around the bush with Chairman Li. I need you to sign a confession agreement, confess what you can, and then transfer control of the Li group to your son, Li Xiaoqing. Li Zhengdao was no fool. After so many years in the business, he knew exactly what Yi Chen meant. You're dreaming. Li Zhengda sneered, looking as if he wasn't afraid of anything. Who do you think you are? You think I'll sign a confession agreement just because you asked me to? I, Li Zhengda, am not a fool, and neither is my son. That's not necessarily true, Chairman Li. Yi Chen continued after Li Zhengda's words, I agree with the first half of what you said, but as for the second half, if your son wasn't a fool, would the Li family have come to this point? The implication couldn't be clearer, Yi Chen was telling Li Zhengda that his son was a fool and that it was his son's fault that they ended up in this situation. Well, then I definitely won't listen to you. Hand over the shares to Xiao Chang, so that you can swallow him whole, right? Ha, trying to swallow up decades of my hard work, not afraid of choking to death. Li Zhengda was indignant, getting more and more agitated as he spoke, to the point where instead of blood, saliva sprayed out first. His hands were bound, but he still wanted to point at Yi Chen and say, which faction are you from, the Bai family? Jiangan Industries? Or? Stop guessing. Yi Chen interrupted Li Zhengda's words and continued, I'm not from any of those families, but Chairman Li, as long as the Green Hills remain, there's no need to worry about firewood. I won't let you do this in vain. Just promise me, and I'll withdraw my accusation against Chao Cheng. It's a pity that few parents in the world don't consider their children. So Yi Chen's words also caught Li Zhengda's attention, and he looked at Yi Chen, lost in thought. But Yi Chen didn't come here today to have a tug of war with Li Zhengda. He was giving Li Zhengda a chance, a chance that couldn't be missed. So before Li Zhengda could think it through, he stood up first and was about to leave. Chairman Li, think it over. This way, at least your son can still live. He's still young. As long as the Li group doesn't collapse, he can learn from this, turn over a new leaf. Think about it carefully. With that said, Yi Chen didn't give Li Zhengda any chance and left directly. Only half of the ten minutes had passed. The way this conversation ended surprised Wang Zhang. He thought Yi Chen would persuade Li Zhengda with reason and emotion, but he didn't expect Yi Chen to take the initiative and force Li Zhengda to make a choice. After taking Li Zhengda away, Wang Zhang quickly caught up. What did you give him to make him so confused? Wang Zhang asked. Yi Chen spread his hands helplessly and said, Captain Wang, you're slandering me. I'm just helping you reduce your workload. You should thank me. With that, Yi Chen patted Wang Zhang's shoulder and left the area bureau directly. Li Zhengda knew exactly what Yi Chen was thinking, even why Yi Chen let Xiao Qing go and withdrew the accusation. It was pointless to make Xiao Qing the chairman of the Li group, to use Xiao Qing's weakness to completely defeat the Li group, to step on the Li family and let everyone in Zhanghai know that the Lungzi group was not an easy target. Yi Chen hadn't told anyone about this plan, but Li Zhengda could at least see some of it. But in a way, businessmen are gamblers. Even if Li Zhengda knew what Yi Chen was planning, he had to agree to it. Because he had lost the bet, the Li family was about to be destroyed, and the only thing he could do now was to go all in. It might be making a wedding dress for Yi Chen, or Xiao Qing might learn from this and make a comeback. Li Zhengda was betting on the latter happening, even though the hope was slim. But gamblers always bet big with small odds. The Li family had made a similar choice when they gave up their entire fortune to enter the real estate industry. Now, it was just another round of the same choice. On the other hand, Yi Chen had already obtained a 1 billion contract between the Li Group and Zhang Gan Industries. After handing the contract to Yi Chen, Zhang Guang said that there were no issues with the contract itself, and the contract worth 1 billion had already. Mercedes Benz 4S store yesterday, Yi Chen had been thinking about her. The salesperson at the forest store told Ji Chen that Suna was looking for a job, but the key was that this girl was doing well at Volkswagen, so why would she switch to Mercedes Benz? There was only one possibility, she was fired. Suna was just a new salesperson, even if she lacked experience, as long as she was diligent and hardworking, she wouldn't have been fired. 
Yi Chen felt responsible for this, if he hadn't let Suna stand out in the first place, she wouldn't have been targeted by the senior staff. A real man should take responsibility, so Yi Chen picked up his phone and sent Suna a WeChat message, inviting her out for a meal. After receiving Yi Chen's WeChat message, Suna pondered for a long time. She didn't know what Yi Chen meant, as the message only mentioned having a meal. But Suna had gone out to eat with a big boss before. Before meeting Yi Chen, she almost sold a car to a customer who wanted to buy a car at night and invited her out for a meal to discuss car insurance. Suna, who was inexperienced, went alone, but the man started making advances before the food even arrived. So Suna was very disgusted with this kind of thing. She felt that Yi Chen and those unscrupulous people were the same, all wanting to exploit her. But she was not that kind of person, if she wanted to sell her body for shortcuts, she would have done so long ago. These days, a scene kept echoing in Suna's mind. It was at Mirror Lake residence, Yi Chen grabbed her arm, stood in front of her like an impenetrable and unbreakable wall, and said to the salesperson who looked down on her, she is mine. When did she become his person, Suna thought. But she was very happy in her heart, besides her family, no one had ever protected her like this. Suna was very conflicted, whether to go or not was against her original graduated and started working, I understand, Yi Chen chuckled twice, although in terms of education, Suna was a year older than him. You just said I bought a 1.5 million car from you, and you want to treat me to a meal, right? Yi Chen changed the topic and asked. Suna nodded beside him and whispered, yes, but I can't afford something too expensive, my salary for this month hasn't been paid yet, they said it will be delayed. Yi Chen raised his mouth, he didn't expect Suna to come up with such an excuse, so he asked, does the Volkswagen Forest store delay salary payments? Yes, yes. Suna was already lying, and being questioned by Yi Chen made her even more nervous. Yi Chen didn't beat around the bush and changed his tone, asking, then why are you looking for a job at the Mercedes 4S store? You? Suna was surprised, she turned around in a panic and met Yi Chen's gaze. How did you know? Are you following me? Suna stared at Yi Chen with wide eyes, then realized and looked around, only to find out that it wasn't Yi Chen who bought the Volkswagen Passat from her, so she quickly changed her tune, oh, you changed cars, G-Class AMG, Mercedes. Yi Chen nodded and continued, you didn't even tell me when you were fired. I wasn't fired, I left on my own. I felt the atmosphere there was not good, so I wanted a change of environment. Oh, really? Yi Chen's question made Suna silent. Anyway, the effect was a ch Chen went to such lengths just to hire her as an assistant. She needed to understand the difference between this and being kept. After some contemplation, Suna asked why Yi Chen wanted her as his assistant. Yi Chen explained that he needed help with trivial matters and preferred having an attractive woman working for him. Suna was unsure if Yi Chen was serious or not, but she couldn't deny that the offer was overwhelming. Yi Chen continued eating while Suna pondered over his proposal. Yi Chen then explained that he liked attractive women and having one as an assistant would be ideal. Suna was unsure how to react and asked if he wanted to keep her. Yi Chen's response left Suna embarrassed. She couldn't understand why he suddenly accused her of always thinking about being kept. Yi Chen clarified his intentions, and the conversation took a more serious turn. Please be my assistant. I have seriously considered and investigated it. Your major is in exhibition planning, which far exceeds the typical secretary assistant role. Although you meet my standards for a beautiful vase, what I want is not just a pretty vase who only knows how to answer calls, make calls, and keep schedules all day. It has to be said that Yi Chin is indeed persuasive. At least after he said that, Suna began to consider it, because what he said seemed to make sense. Women like men who are serious, especially when combined with a wealthy attribute, it becomes even more perfect. Office location 4 Waves of Flowers A 60 million villa is for research and development work and accommodation? And you have to find a large flat on the busiest street in the city for the office? Suna couldn't figure out what Yi Chen's plan was. Tens of millions were spent, and there wasn't even an office location yet. Is this entrepreneurship or just throwing money away? However, Suna didn't know that there were even more surprises to come. This was just the beginning. 
After dinner, Yi Chen actually had the restaurant manager bring another bottle of Romani Conti and handed it to Suna. I. I can't accept this. Suna had never received such a valuable gift before, even though the previous meal was already considered expensive. Just take it, you can always lose it anyway. Yi Chen didn't take it seriously at all. When they got back to the car, he continued, I just thought about it. You just started working here, so giving you a house wouldn't be appropriate. So while you're looking for a large flat, also pick a room you like in a nearby apartment, rent it for a year, consider it, um, a work benefit. Yi Chen said it lightly, but Suna felt strange. She felt like she was being taken care of, but most of the time Yi Chen seemed serious, and so far he hadn't crossed any boundaries. After driving for a while, Yi Chen said, it's too late, I don't feel comfortable letting you go back alone. How about staying in a hotel with me tonight? It started, it started. Suna immediately became alert. Staying in a hotel, this was no longer a hint, it was a clear invitation. Just as she was about to refuse the job, Yi Chen also realized that what he had just said seemed like he was trying to trick a young girl into going to bed, so he quickly changed his tune and said, I didn't mean that, of course I'll arrange a separate room for you. But you should go back and pack your things tonight, as I'll need you to start work officially tomorrow. And you know about the assistant role, it's not a 9 to 5 job, can you be on call 24 hours a day? When Yi Chen was serious, he didn't seem like a scoundrel at all, but rather handsome and charming, which made Suna quickly forget about the suggestion to stay in a hotel. No problem, boss, I can do it. Suna raised her small fist. A million dollar salary with no ceiling, even if it meant being on call for 25 hours a day, she was full of energy now. Tonight was a turning point for her, she needed to relax and maybe have a drink, maybe even finish the bottle of Romani Conti worth 170,000 in her hand. After dropping Suna off at home, Yi Chen returned to the Baiyanjian Hotel and called Zhang Wang. Boss, I'm here. Yi Chen played with a bottle of wine at the bar, and after hearing Zhang Wang's voice on the phone, he said, Tonight, Mr. Bai from the Bai Group sent me a bottle of wine. Boss, it seems that all the major groups have noticed you. Besides the Bai Group, other forces will probably come looking for you. Zhang Wang analyzed, but Yi Chen didn't pay attention at all. He yawned and said, Tell me something I don't know. Well. Zhang Guang remained silent on the phone for a while, then said very cautiously, Boss, you need to be careful with Bai Lan, this woman is not simple. Hearing Zhang Guang's words, Yi Chen became interested. Oh? Is this by whom I have never met a woman? Zhang Guang responded with a hint of a headache. Boss, don't underestimate her. This Bai Lan is not simple. She took the initiative to find you this time, it must be because she blames you for messing with her cake. I messed with her cake? Yi Chen raised his eyebrows, starting to find it interesting. Over the phone, Zhang Guang nodded, yes, boss, before you calculated against the Li family, the Bai family had already planned to take over the Li family. At the beginning of the year, I even handled a lawsuit they filed against the Li family for illegal construction. So, she was late to the game herself? And now she blames me for interfering? Yi Chen asked. Zhang Wang said, not exactly. You did interfere, which was beneficial for the overall situation in Zhanghai. It made the major groups look good. But the Bai family is more sensitive. They should be the first to know about your interference, so this bottle of wine. Zhang Guang fell silent for a while before finally saying, I think this bottle of wine is a gesture of goodwill hoping that you will stand with the Bai family. Undoubtedly, even if the Li family did not show signs of decline, the Bai family was also a top presence in Zhanghai and could not be easily shaken. Just starting out, with a big brother backing you up and asking you to stand by his side, naturally, this was good. However, Yi Chen was not one to be subordinate to others. A man should be able to bend and stretch. Two years ago, he could endure it, but now that he had money, he had to be the master. But then again, Yi Chen was living in a five-star hotel under the Bai family's umbrella. Strictly speaking, he was indeed subordinate. However, he had paid for the presidential suite, over six million a year, so the wording could be changed to subordinate to the wealthy. Thinking this way, Yi Chen felt more at ease. But one thing led to another, 
This did not mean that Ji Chen would actually take sides. If he had to choose a side, it would be if the Bai family stood by him, then he would consider it feasible. But she doesn't really take me seriously, does she? She probably thinks I just got lucky. Yi Chen's words were very realistic, making it difficult for Zhang Guang to respond. After all, admitting it would be like saying, yes, boss, the Bai family looks down on you, doesn't take you seriously, just giving you some benefits to get rid of you. Not admitting it, Yi Chen's words were also true. After much thought, Zhang Guang came up with a perfect response. He cleverly replied, Boss, even though the Bai family and other real estate giants are working behind the scenes, luck is also part of strength. Without this strength, why would the heavens stand by our side? Yi Chen smiled, finding the response smooth. You know how to talk. What, are you religious? Even the heavens are helping me out. Zhang Guang also laughed along, saying, I'm not religious, but I believe in man's ability to overcome fate. Man's ability to overcome fate is true, but the heavens must also stand by my side. Yi Chen didn't know why he suddenly felt so heroic. He had been drinking tonight, but he had also eaten, so he wasn't drunk to this extent. Later, Yi Chen asked Zhang Guang to investigate the recent movements of the Bai family. After all, with Li Zhengda's arrest, the projects the Li family was working on had to be put on hold. Even if Li Xiaoqing was released, the transfer of shares would take two days. If the various real estate players in Zhanghai wanted to make a move, they should start moving their arms and legs in these two days. Then Yi Chen gave Zhang Guang Suna's contact information, saying she was the new assistant and that they should coordinate in the future. After giving the instructions, Yi Chen hung up the phone. Now he could enjoy a five-star sleep. After all, living in the moment, enjoying life, in case he clashed with the Bai family, whether he could stay in this hotel was another matter. The next day, before Yi Chen woke up, Su Na's call came in. B boss, lawyer Zhang Wang has already contacted me. I'm waiting for you in the lobby below Bai Yun room. Yi Chen was still half asleep, but hearing Su Na's voice made him feel refreshed instantly, and he became much more alert. Don't be nervous on your first day at work, comrade Suna. Wait a moment, I'll have Xiao Gua come pick you up. After saying that, Yi Chen hung up and used the hotel phone to inform Guo Wanda to pick up Suna. By the time Yi Chen finished showering and came out, Guo Wanda had already brought Suna. However, when Suna saw Yi Chen, her face instantly blushed. Yi Chen had just come out of the shower, wrapped in a towel, bare chested. Although he didn't have much muscle, there was no excess fat either. Plus, the regenerative water from the treasure basin gave Yi Chen's skin an attractive wheat color, shining like a dazzling spot in the morning sun through the window. Don't be nervous, I'm not going to eat you. Have you packed your things? Yi Chen asked. At that moment, Wu Wanda also had the restaurant server bring Yi Chen's breakfast. Suna nodded quietly and said, I've packed everything, boss. Today, Suna was wearing a black professional suit, but she didn't exude the same vibrant energy as before, instead, she seemed a bit awkward. Speak louder, from now on, you represent wave after wave. You represent me. Your task today is to finalize the office space for me and find a place for yourself, both tasks must be done well. Suna quickly nodded, even jotting down notes. Then Yi Chen transferred 10 million to Suna's account. When Suna saw the 10 million deposited into her bank account, she was stunned. Boss, this is, this is too much. I? Suna had never seen so much money in her life. 10 million transferred directly to her account, wasn't he afraid she would run away? What's too much? Just a downtown office building, a floor for 10 million might not even be enough to buy. I want you to go and pay the deposit first. Otherwise, why would anyone trust you? Who knows about wave after wave outside? Money talks, you know? Yi Chen said. Suna realized that Yi Chen was right. Wave after wave was not yet a well-known company, and to gain trust, they needed to show sufficient liquidity by paying the deposit. I understand, boss. Good, I'll give you the morning to do it. I have other things to do in the afternoon, go ahead. Suna readily agreed, and Yi Chen reminded her to consult Zhang Guang immediately if she encountered any contract issues, 
as they had paid 20 million for his services and needed to make it worthwhile. After Suna left, Yi Chen glanced at the balance in his account. No wonder they say money doesn't last, now there's only over 30 million left. 36.77 million, still a lot to do. Yi Chen's goal was simple, to make a profit before finalizing the deal with Yang Ditong. With the treasure basin, even if they spent more than they earned for a lifetime, it wouldn't be a problem. But this business model had to take off, Yi Chen needed to suck the blood of capitalists. Fortunately, Yi Chen's vision was sound, and Suna's efficiency was indeed high. She completed the tasks Yi Chen assigned in the morning. The new city district was a key development area for China Ocean, with the CBD located there. However, it was difficult to find a place near the CBD, let alone by a hole. Floor of an office building. So Suna settled for a nearby building called the Pacific Building, about two kilometers from the CBD, where she found a floor for sale that used to belong to a large company in new media operations, priced at 13 million. Suna paid a 1 million deposit, and after Yi Chen came to inspect it, he directly bought it. With over 500 square meters of actual usable space, it was enough for the future business development of wave after wave. Before finding a larger building, Yi Chen believed that the headquarters of the wave group could be located here. After buying the entire floor of the office building, Yi Chen asked Suna if she had found a place to live. I found one, Bodhisattva. In this era of developed internet, such actions can quickly generate a wave of popularity, maybe even trend on hot searches. With widespread discussion topics, advertising later will be much more effective. Facing the urban white-collar workers lining up, Suna, as a woman, naturally could relate to them in terms of skin care. The 100 trial samples were quickly distributed, along with survey questionnaires, skin allergy insurance, and contracts. After the distribution, there were voices of dissatisfaction from those who didn't receive samples. Suna felt a bit embarrassed, as she could only give personal skincare advice. Yi Chen didn't see this as a problem, but rather a good response. He took the microphone and said, Hello everyone, please listen to me for a moment. I am the founder of Wave of Blossoms. I am happy to see your enthusiasm, but the trial samples are limited. For those who didn't get one, don't be disheartened. Our office is on the 33rd floor of the Pacific Building. Once the office is ready, we will contact you to collect the samples. Hearing that the company was located there, the dissatisfied crowd quieted down and started registering. Suna was busy writing down registrations. This busy state continued until evening. When Yi Chen and Suna were closing, some people were still demanding to register. Suna, holding the thick register, looked worried. Yi Chen nonchalantly said, Of course, we will give them. How much is it in total? Just a few million. We can't lose sight of the bigger picture. This is much more effective than advertising on TV. Their salaries are not low, so even if we give them cash, it's worth it. As long as they are satisfied with the samples, they become potential customers. Suna admired Yi Chen's vision. She never thought of this approach, always focusing on budget constraints. Back in the car, Yi Chen handed two trial samples to Suna. Surprised, Suna took them without hesitation. Yi Chen said, the product speaks for itself. You'll understand why I promote it this way. Yi Chen winked mysteriously, leaving Suna pleasantly surprised. Later, Yi Chen accompanied Suna to the apartment she had seen in the morning, rented it directly for a year, and then took Suna to bring her luggage over. It was already past 10 o'clock in the evening when they finished, and they hadn't eaten yet. There's Wanda Golden Street nearby, let's go there for some spicy hot pot? Su Na wiped the sweat off her forehead. Today had exhausted her, but at the same time, she felt fulfilled. After graduating for so long, she hadn't found a job that could fill her entire day. Sales were always about talking, but working under Yi Chen, Su Na felt a sense of personal involvement. The waves were still too young, and everything she did now was pushing the waves to monopolize the position of a major brand in the future. So even without a million dollar salary, Su Na was willing to work with Yi Chen. However, Yi Chen's attention was not on this. He quickly figured out the trial version he had been working on for half a day, but promoting it outside today had exhausted him. 
When he heard Suna say she wanted to treat him to spicy hot pot, his mind immediately went to the overused joke online. Spicy hot pot, 7 yuan, 13 times, he he. However, Suna definitely didn't mean it that way. If she knew Yi Chen was thinking like that, she would have kicked him a long time ago. During this time, Yi Chen had grown tired of all kinds of delicacies, and he even felt like his face had gotten rounder. This was normal. In the past two years, he had gone without meals, leading to malnutrition. He had surgery recently, and although he should have been weak, the regenerative water from the treasure basin made him feel rejuvenated. Now he was full of energy every day, and with all the good food and drinks, it would be strange not to gain weight. Alright, let's go, spicy hot pot. Although it was Wanda Golden Street, the hygiene conditions were just average. Having eaten in five-star hotels too often, Yichen even felt like he was in a fly-infested place. Are you not used to eating here? Suna noticed Yi Chen's expression and asked softly. Yi Chen quickly shook his head, no, it's just a bit surreal. Even though it was a simple place, he couldn't afford to eat at such places before. So Yi Chen wasn't picky. He had gotten used to a tough life, so he took this wealthy lifestyle casually, without any particular requirements. By the way, did the manager of that forest store dismiss you because of the salesperson Feng Jun? Yi Chen asked casually while eating spicy hot pot. Suna didn't know what Yi Chen meant by bringing this up, and she forgot to chew her food. Yes, maybe, the boss, the past is in the past. In the past? Yi Chen put down his chopsticks, he didn't think so. How can you say the past is the past? From now on, you are mine, and my people are not allowed to be bullied by others. Yi Chen said seriously, making Suna blush. Who belongs to you? Why are you so unserious all the time? Do you have a boyfriend? Yi Chen asked. This made Su Na even more shy. She thought Yi Chen was too direct, asking if she had a boyfriend, but she instinctively shook her head. She really didn't have one. Well then, Yi Chen continued, I won't flirt with a decent lady. Then, how am I yours? Su Na tried to argue back. But Yi Chen, being shameless, couldn't be outwitted by a young girl. You are my employee, so you are mine. Being your employee doesn't mean. All right, all right, let's not talk about this. Yi Chen interrupted Su Na and said, I don't want you to think, I want you to listen to me. Although my current capital can't acquire car companies like Volkswagen, don't even think about it if a sales champion and a store manager want to bully you. Yi Chen still has a good sense of self-awareness. It's impossible to acquire Volkswagen, after all, the country doesn't allow it. Besides, even if it were allowed, he currently can't come up with that much money. You see, Volkswagen's market value is around 70 to 80 billion euros, which is nearly 600 billion yuan. What does 600 billion mean? That's like 6,000 small goals, a long and arduous journey. On the other hand, it's normal for men to talk big. Although he spent over 10 million in a day with Yi Chen, Suna still felt that Yi Chen's words were just to make her happy. So after a few digressions, she put this matter aside. But Yi Chen didn't forget about it. After having spicy hot pot, he sent Suna back to the newly rented apartment. Back in Bianjian, after browsing some information online, Yi Chen called Zhang Wang to inquire about the behind the scenes owner of the Volkswagen 4S store in the new city area. He wanted to acquire a forest store to play around. Zhang Guang felt caught off guard by Yi Chen's sudden change in direction. Boss, are you planning to? Yi Chen lay on top of the entire night view of Zhanghai City. Before making this call, he seemed relaxed and didn't take the acquisition of the Volkswagen 4S store in the new city area seriously, just casually saying, have you heard of playing with fire and teasing the lords? Legend has it that during the Western Zhou period, King Yu of Zhou ignited a beacon fire for the love of his concubine Bao Si, playing a prank on the lords, ultimately losing credibility and being attacked by the Chuanrong, leading to the destruction of the state. Although according to historical records, this nearly 2,000-year-old story never happened, over the centuries, the story of playing with fire and teasing the lords has been passed down as if it were a divine decree, as if all good men in the world should act this way. So, if you ask what Yi Chen's purpose is in acquiring the Volkswagen 4S store in the new city area, 
saying it's to play with fire wouldn't be wrong. He indeed wanted to let Suna vent her anger. But to say it's solely for Suna's sake, that's not entirely true. Yi Chen had completely let go of these so-called love affairs two years ago. At that time, he just wanted to pay off his debts. Now that his debts are cleared, he should theoretically return to a normal life. But with the treasure bowl in hand, Yi Chen is an ambitious person. If a man doesn't love a woman, he should love a kingdom. The vast and beautiful scenery of thousands of miles is the only enchanting beauty of a kingdom. Yi Chen wants this kingdom of thousands of miles to build a solid commercial empire. Acquiring the Volkswagen 4S store in the new city area is just a small act of caprice. Moreover, he knows that Feng Jun, the person behind it, used to look down on him. Now that he has the ability, a small punishment and letting Su Na vent her anger, what's wrong with that? After thinking so much, Yi Chen was moved by his broad-mindedness on one hand, and scared by the many reasons he found on the other hand. In the end, he just wanted to make Su Na a little happier. Boss? On the phone, Zhang Guang waited a long time for Yi Chen's response. Market price, add 10 million as a premium. Yi Chen came back to his senses, you handle this matter for me. Although Zhang Guang is Yi Chen's personal lawyer and the chief legal officer of the company, currently Yi Chen doesn't have any lawsuits to deal with. So Zhang Guang's current position is more like an assistant plus. After all, his connections are quite extensive, so Yi Chen trusts him with these business contract matters. Zhang Guang has no complaints, with an annual salary of 20 million, most of his expenses are reimbursed when he goes out. What is there to be dissatisfied about? Don't mention running errands, he would even give up his career as a lawyer to do manual labor, as long as he doesn't compromise his integrity, he's fine. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chen glanced at his balance, still over 23 million. This money is really not easy to spend, but the thought of the transaction with Yang Datong in a few days and the more than 2 billion that can be credited, Yi Chen instantly felt confident. The remaining money needed for purchasing research and development equipment is not much, at most a few million. The biggest expense is the employee salaries, especially since he hasn't discussed salaries with Wu Yue yet. Wu is good at negotiating, but his friends, Yi Chen feels that giving too much is not good, and giving too little is also not good. As for the acquisition of the forest dealership in the new city district, Yi Chen did some calculations. When the owner joined, the joining fee was definitely around 10 to 15 million. Adding up the land, decoration, vehicle costs, after sales service, insurance, and all departments, it would cost him around 20 million. Adding a normal business premium and a final premium of 10 million, he could easily acquire it for 50 million. After all, the location and the car models of that forest dealership are there, not high end. For the behind the scenes owner, acquisition is the most cost effective, he has made enough money, achieved his goal, who wouldn't want that? Before Yi Chen could even plan, a call came in, it was from Yang Datong. Did he arrange the funds? Yi Chen pressed the answer button, waiting for good news from Yang Datong. But unexpectedly, instead of good news, bad news came. Ye buddy, I'm afraid I can't, take this batch. The voice on the phone was anxious, and Yi Chen frowned. He never thought there would be a problem on Yang Datong's side. Previously, Yang Datong gave him a stable feeling, but now it seems that even the most stable person can have problems. What do you mean? Yi Chen asked. I just can't take it, buddy, I'm sorry. After saying that, Yang Datong hung up the phone. Hearing his last words, it seemed like he was eager to cut ties with Yi Chen. This left Yi Chen puzzled, what's going on? The market price for this purity of gold is around 408 to 410, and he offered 375, and Yang Datong refused? This is like picking up money, Yi Chen really couldn't understand, has Yang Datong lost his mind? Initially, Yi Chen wanted to call and ask what was going on, but he decided against it. He didn't want Yang Datong to think he was in a hurry to sell this batch of gold. Who knows if Yang Datong's recent actions were a normal tactic to lower the price or if someone was interfering. If it's the latter, Yi Chen felt he wouldn't be able to sleep tonight. In fact, he did have trouble sleeping that night. Since moving into the presidential suite at the Bayanjian Hotel, every night Yi Chen felt like he was sleeping on a pile of money, carefree. This world is made to serve the wealthy, what could make you worry? 
But Yang Datong suddenly cancelling the transaction, on one hand, his liquidity chain might break, on the other hand, it made him feel like someone was targeting him. The Bai Group? Jiangan Industries? Currently, the only two groups Yi Chen knew capable of this were these two. One is a local company in Zhanghai, and the other is a cross-provincial company based in Kyoto, which is on a completely different level from Zhanghai. Yi Chen wasn't afraid, but he didn't like this feeling. That night, Yi Chen used alcohol to put himself to sleep. Just over a month after becoming wealthy, he finally felt challenged. Suna had a key card to the Yi Chen presidential suite. Early the next morning, when she opened the door, she was overwhelmed by the strong smell of alcohol. Yi Chen was like an emperor on the streets of Yi Chen, lying disheveled on the luxurious sofa. The noise of the door opening woke him up, he opened his eyes and saw Suna. Have you been drinking? What's going on? Why are you drinking so much? It's suffocating. Suna quickly helped Yi Chen up, brought him a cup of hot water, and even brought a hot towel. Waking up from a hangover, Yi Chen had a terrible headache. He took the hot towel and joked, Oh, you're pretty good at taking care of people. Who else would take care of you, you drunkard? Suna twisted Yi Chen's arm impatiently, Something warm is always good, do you want to go to bed for a while? Yi Chen shook his head, wiped his face, and asked Suna to change the hot water to black coffee. Is there something bothering you? Suna asked cautiously as she handed the black coffee to Yi Chen. Yi Chen shook his head. In fact, he didn't have any problems, he just thought a lot last night. About Yang Datong, the gold cannot go through him, there are many other channels. This was not the reason why he stayed up late last night, drinking until dawn. How was the response to the event at the Pacific Building yesterday? Yi Chen asked, picking up the black coffee and walking to the window. He didn't want Suna to see his disheveled appearance, and the bitterness in his mouth made him completely awake. Fortunately, there was good news. Suna's face lit up when he mentioned it. She hurriedly took out her phone and opened the hot search on Weibo. Look, our event from yesterday is already trending. Wave a flower, a sky-high trial pack, free trial pack distribution, also giving away 10,000 yuan in cash, the founder of Wave a Flower is so handsome, among the top 10 hot searches on Weibo, three were about Wave a Flower. Undoubtedly, this was a successful plan. Without the help of any online influencers, achieving such a high traffic effect far exceeded Yi Chen's expectations. He had originally thought that becoming popular in some local WeChat circles in Zhanghai City would be good enough, and the word would spread from there. But now it seemed that he had underestimated the speed of information dissemination in the internet age. Clicking on one of the hot searches, all the discussions were about the promotional event he and Suna held at the Pacific Building yesterday. Even the last hot search was about many girls saying he was handsome. Who's handsome? Yi Chen couldn't help but wonder, was the money in his hand handsome? As he scrolled down, not only were they saying he was handsome, but even his elementary school classmates came out, saying that he had shown remarkable business acumen since elementary school. And was a rare business genius. Surprisingly, some people believed these obviously fabricated stories, and there were many comments below, gaining him a new group of fans. After reading the elementary school version, there was also a university version. This blogger claimed to be Yi Chen's university classmate saying that Yi Chen used to help deliver goods for the school's small shops and made his first bucket of gold by profiting from the price difference. These clichés, which had long been overused, were still believed by some. In addition to the elementary and university versions, there were many other versions. Unknowingly, Yi Chen had become a legendary figure, and all his dark history seemed to have disappeared overnight. Online discussions about him were almost all positive. Yi Chen couldn't help but sigh. People in the internet age were forgetful, just like fish with only 7 seconds of memory. Boss, next, we can fully utilize this wide topic of discussion and market our brand well to make it known. Suna took back her phone, her face looking somewhat unnatural. She didn't know what happened, but just now when she read those short stories about Yi Chen, she was quite happy. But there were always some immature girls shouting on Weibo, oh, this person is so handsome. I want to marry him. When Suna saw this, she felt strange in her heart, as if she had seen a new dress in a store, hadn't made up her mind to buy it, and someone else bought it first. 
That feeling was hard to describe. Yi Chen naturally didn't know what Sunu was thinking. Right now, all he could think about was how to use these hot searches to make the Wave of Flower brand more prominent. But before he could give any instructions, Suna's expression turned sour. She nervously handed her phone to Yi Chen. It's not good, our hot search has been taken down. Yi Chen frowned and quickly clicked on the hot search, refreshing it several times. Just a moment ago, three hot searches that were in the top 10 disappeared directly, dropping to beyond 100. Could it be implying that we need to pay? Suna whispered, I've heard before that Weibo removes some hot searches and replaces the rankings with the moneyed sponsors. Not only had Suna heard of it, Yi Chen had too. These unwritten rules of the internet were like a greedy and insatiable vampire. If we lose the hot search, the discussion topic will decrease, Suna expressed concern, but Yi Chen, after some thought, seemed indifferent. Let them remove it, it's just that no fresh blood is flowing in, this topic is not against the rules, so they can't delete us. Removing a hot search doesn't mean deleting a topic, Weibo still relies on it to make money, so even if there are shady dealings, they wouldn't dare to be so obvious. So how do they do it? It's simple, just lower the heat of this topic in the background, and naturally it will drop out of the rankings. Sure of one thing, she wasn't being fired. At that moment, she also put aside the matter of the hot search being removed, full of enthusiasm, and immersed herself in building the brand of Langhua Yiduaduo. Today, the two of them came to the university town in Zhanghai City, some say that to see if a city is developed, you have to look at the number of universities in that city. In a sense, universities have always been like cradles that deliver fresh blood to society, and the university city in Zhanghai City consists of several institutions of higher learning, including Zhanghai University, which was Yi Chen's former school. Since the last farewell at the Bayanjian Hotel, the atmosphere in the class group has taken a sudden turn, with discussions about Li Xiaoqing happening almost every day. Those who used to flatter and fawn over him have now become fans of Yi Chen, or little fanboys and fangirls. Of course, Yi Chen is indifferent to this behavior. He has never needed fanboys or fangirls, let alone a group of flatterers. He seeks no credit, only to avoid blame, that is Yi Chen's attitude. So, upon arriving at the university city, Yi Chen immediately contacted Wu Yue to bring his friends over. Today, he has an interview and wants to discuss salary as well. Wu Yue did not expect Yi Chen's progress to be so fast. That day at the Bayanjian Hotel, Yi Chen left early and left things for him to handle, allowing him to experience being surrounded by a crowd. However, Wu Yue is well aware that these people are flattering him because Yi Chen is now successful. If it were in the past, who would remember Yi Chen, who would remember him, Wu Yue? They would only remember the pitiful bootlicker who was publicly humiliated by the Black Tiger in front of almost the entire school, and had his phone smashed by Su Xiaoya. Yi Chen no longer needs to prove himself to them, but Wu Yue cannot swallow this humiliation. While Yi Chen is constructing his business blueprint, Wu Yue is trying to follow the path of ordinary people's success. So at this moment, in a coffee shop in the university city of Zhanghai City, in a corner booth, sit several young people. On one side are Yi Chen and Suna. On the other side is Wu Yue and his friends from the laboratory. Undoubtedly, among them, Suna is the most eye-catching. Dressed in black professional attire, with delicate and elegant makeup, complemented by bright red lipstick, she looks like a businesswoman, which also elevates Yi Chen's image. After all, Yi Chen is dressed in casual clothes, looking unkempt, making it hard to associate him with the workplace. Wu Yue's friends are even more awkward, they are academic achievers, but the introverted type, only interested in various data in the laboratory. Honestly, Yi Chen doesn't believe it. He thinks the world is so big, with so many temptations, how could someone only like the boring data in the laboratory? But Wu Yue says they really are like that, judging from their awkward personalities, it seems to be true. Yi Chen breaks the silence first, or else they would have finished their coffee for the second round. Wu Yue is my brother, and he should have told you why he called you here. On the way here, based on Yi Chen's description, Suna wrote a basic introduction about the Wave Blossom toner, which had already been printed out several times before their arrival. With Yi Chen's signal, he distributed them. You should all know what I do, and this should be your expertise, so I need your help to research something that can be explained to the general consumers and the patent office. 
For now, I'll call it Wei Blossom Essence, is that okay? Only Wu Yue nodded among the group. The others are a bit shy, Wu Yue said on behalf of the others. But before coming here, we researched that among several plant-based skincare ingredients, aloe vera and green tea are relatively gentle and contain effective skincare components. So we discussed and decided to start with these two ingredients. Then let's go with aloe vera, Yi Chen made the decision directly. I see that aloe vera gel is selling well. Can you come up with some tricks for me on aloe vera? I'm not asking you to win a Nobel Prize for me, of course I don't deny your abilities, but my requirement is that you must come up with a 1.0 version of the aloe vera essence in two weeks. After that, you can research however you want, I will invest money for your research, is that okay? No problem. To Yi Chen's surprise, this time it wasn't Wu Yue who answered him, but Wu Yue's friends. These introverted academic geniuses all brightened up at the mention of investing money for research, and they all agreed. Wu Yue, on the other hand, felt a bit embarrassed. He felt that he had been too passive and now he needed to do something more prestigious, but these introverted academic geniuses were not the type to seek the limelight. Yi Chen saw his thoughts and gave him a look to signal him to keep quiet. In Yi Chen's view, being introverted was not a bad thing. The world needs businessmen who quietly make a fortune and mad scientists who quietly conduct research. Clearly, Wu Yue's friends belonged to the latter category. Yi Chen didn't dare to claim that he had a keen eye for people, but he faintly felt that these people could achieve great things. If he invested in them appropriately, they might become a hidden wealth in the future. With that in mind, Yi Chen immediately agreed. All right, one week from now, you will be my employees. We will sign labor contracts then. The workplace will be in a villa near Jingbo Lake in the suburbs. One building for research, one for living, and meals will be provided there. As for salary, an annual salary of 500,000, with opportunities for advancement, is that okay? 500,000? Even these introverted academic geniuses were surprised when Yi Chen mentioned an annual salary of 500,000. They found it somewhat unbelievable. Are you buying groceries? You don't need that much, Wu Yue even wanted to save money for Yi Chen. Yi Chen rolled his eyes and continued, 500,000 is just the base salary. If you make some progress with this aloe vera essence, I will increase your salary. As the saying goes, with great rewards come great efforts. After finalizing the salary for Wu Yue's friends, Yi Chen pulled Wu Yue aside. Chen Gu, is there something else? Wu Yue asked. Yi Chen nodded and said, I kept you here to tell you that your annual salary is 5 million. Don't ask me why, and don't refuse. I'm not measuring our relationship with money, but I want to measure your contribution to this research center with money. Do you understand what I mean? As Yi Chen said, Wu Yue was about to speak, but Yi Chen cut him off. Wu Yue also understood why Yi Chen did all this. Repaying kindness is good, but isn't this going too far? Chen Gu, I. Wu Yue left the cafe without saying much. All the words were stuck in his throat. He left with tears in his eyes, unsure of what he could do to deserve a 5 million annual salary. Do you two have a deep relationship? After Wu Yue left, Suna asked quietly. Yi Chen didn't give a direct answer, just teasingly asked, Why, envious that his salary is higher than yours? No way. Suna quickly denied, I'm just curious why you care so much about them. I care about you too. Hey, what are you saying? Hey, don't hate me, call me boss. You told me not to call you boss. Bantering with Su Na was quite fun, at least it temporarily made Ji Chen forget that his bank account was running low. Wu Yue had already provided him with a list of equipment needed for the research lab. After a rough calculation, it would cost around 3 million, which wasn't too expensive. Wu Yue had tried to include more precise instruments as pre Yi Chen's request. Y Yi Chen handed the list to Su Na and transferred 5 million to her account with 1 million being in advance on her annual salary and the remaining 4 million for ordering equipment, leaving a few hundred thousand for her travel expenses. With this, there was only a little over 18 million left in the account, and to be honest, Yi Chen was starting to feel anxious. However, when Suna found out that 1 million of that amount was in advance on her annual salary, 
she was overjoyed and even asked Yi Chen to pinch her to see if she was dreaming. Yi Chen, of course, didn't hold back and pinched her cheek, which actually felt quite good. Hey, be gentle, that hurts, Su Na exclaimed. Yi Chen laughed and said, if it hurts, how do you know if you're dreaming? Although he was smiling, Yi Chen was still considering what his next steps should be. He knew that Yang Datong's side must have been blocked, and he was well aware of Yang Datong's character, he would take risks for even a small profit. But since he had decisively cancelled the deal and hung up the phone in a hurry, there was a feeling of wanting to distance himself, which made Yi Chen feel that it wasn't a channel problem, but that someone was coercing Yang Datong. This was inevitable, as businessmen are profit-driven, and Yang Datong wouldn't give up the profit margin brought by over 1,300 pounds of gold. Because he had something on his mind, the promotion and distribution at the university city of Zhanghai, as well as the distribution of trial products, were all handled by Suna. At this point, Suna demonstrated her professionalism in her field of study, thinking of things before Yi Chin did and even considering things he hadn't thought of. Overall, the promotion at the university city, although Yi Chen was distracted, was well executed thanks to Su Na's efforts. After distributing 100 trial bottles, establishing user profiles, and registering over 200 trial users, Yi Chen roughly calculated that with all the reservations and the 200 trial bottles distributed, there were already over 700 people signed up for the trial. This expense was not insignificant, but the excitement generated by the live traffic was more intense than what promoters could achieve. Therefore, Yi Chen decided to abandon the online distribution of trial products and instead have the reserved trial users pick up the products at the Pacific Building in a couple of days, while he would handle all the trial products with the treasure bowl. This treasure bowl could completely replace the factory and was faster than a mechanical production line. However, Yi Chen's mind was not focused on this, handling the trial products was just a matter of minutes, and he was now thinking about how to expand the channel for precious metal shipments. So, after returning to Baiyun Room that night, Yi Chen spent five minutes to handle 500 trial bottles, but he spent a lot of effort thinking about what his next steps should be. If you were to ask Yi Chen if he regretted spending so much money, he truly didn't regret it, as hiding and hoarding was not in his nature. After much thought, Yi Chen decided to try his luck at the Gemstone Street. Guo Wanda had mentioned this place to him some time ago, but at that time, Yang Datong proposed a collaboration, so it was naturally overlooked. However, Yi Chen wasn't particularly interested in gemstone gambling, he was there to seek a way to make money. Gemstone Street was located in the Shangjia district, originally the city center of Zhanghai, which was later replaced by the new city district. When Yi Chen arrived at Gemstone Street, it was just after 8 p.m., which was the bustling time for the street. In fact, this place was similar to a casino, with fortunes changing with a single bet, and the difference between immense wealth and losing everything was just a single bet away. Another characteristic of Gemstone Street was that there were more spectators than actual gamblers, although each shop had around 20 to 30 people gathered outside, they were all focused on one person. Yi Chen entered a jade and gemstone shop, bought two stones at random, had them cut, but nothing came out of them. However, these two stones cost over 120,000, which Yi Chen didn't take seriously, so he paid and left tens of thousands, just to drizzle, what he lacks now is not these small amounts of money, but large sums, at least in the unit of billions. Just as Yi Chen was about to leave to check out other shops, a man in Tang suit with a black hat grabbed his arm. Yi Chen didn't like others touching him, so he subconsciously tried to shake him off. Yi buddy, it's me. The man in Tang suit took off his hat, revealing himself to be Yang Datong. Yi Chen frowned, to be honest, he didn't have much goodwill towards Yang Datong now. He didn't like being stood up, especially in such a large transaction. He trusted Yang Datong, that's why he agreed to do business with him, but he didn't expect Yang Datong to betray him. Boss Yang, business is booming, huh? Yi Chen glanced at him and said, How come you have time to come here to play? Oh Yi buddy, don't make fun of me. Yang Datong seemed embarrassed, put his hat back on, and said, this is not the place to talk, buddy, come with me. Although reluctant, Yi Chen had to admit that he was curious about what Yan Datong had to say. The two found a tea house, there were quite a few tea houses on the gambling street, although they were small, they at least provided a place to rest. After sitting down, Yi Chen drank a glass of water. Boss Yang, what's the matter this time? Hey, my Yi buddy, I was wrong, I had to make that call. 
someone was watching nearby. With these words, Yang Datong looked somewhat embarrassed. Had to make the call? Someone was watching? Yi Chen was shocked, he didn't expect someone was targeting him, even reaching out to Yang Datong. Instead of confronting him directly, they started from Yang Datong, Yi Chen felt that the mastermind behind this had some tricks up their sleeve. What was this? This was a systematic squeeze to break down one by one. Next, Yi Chen could even guess that his entrepreneurial career would be extremely difficult. Yang Datong quickly nodded and explained, I'm innocent, buddy, you haven't forgotten about me even with such a big task, how could I abandon you? Oh, so? Yi Chen remained aloof, he didn't want to get closer to Yang Datong now, so, if you still want to sell this batch of goods, although Yang can't handle it, I can introduce you to someone absolutely reliable. Yi Chen didn't show immediate interest, although what Yang Datong said was tempting, he did need an influx of funds now. But he was equally curious about who was threatening Yang Datong, making him so cautious, sitting face to face and still not daring to tell the truth. Seeing Yi Chen silent, Yang Datong knew he couldn't keep the suspense going, so he directly said, Li Xiehong, Mr. Li, if he's willing to take over this batch of gold, the jewelry stores under the association will be eager to have it. Li Xiehong? Yi Chen certainly remembered this name, he was quite impressed with Mr. Li at the time, protecting himself without even knowing each other. On the other hand, Yang Datong quickly nodded and explained, Mr. Li is the chief appraiser of our association, highly respected, so even Jiangan Industries has to give him some face. After speaking, Yang Datong seemed to realize he had said too much and quickly shut his mouth. But those four words just now were caught by Yi Chen. Jiangan Industries Calling Yang Datong to cancel the transaction was Jiangan Industries, otherwise Yang Datong wouldn't have mentioned it. So, by the same token, if Jiangan Industries threatened Yang Datong to cancel the transaction, then the hot topic on Weibo must be related to them. The problem is, Jiangan Industries is such a large group, from the capital, how could they be involved in such shady dealings? Yi Lao Di, do you trust me, I really? Yang Datong explained a lot, about his own difficulties, but Yi Chen had already heard enough of this. After drinking tea, Yang Datong probably wanted to apologize to Yi Chen, so he took the initiative to buy tea for him. Walking on the gambling street, Yi Chen walked in front, with Yang Datong following behind. After walking back and forth twice, Yi Chen had had enough of Yang Datong, so he said, All right, I'll trust you this time. Arrange for me to meet Mr. Li tomorrow, so I can thank him in person. Thank him? Yang Datong clearly didn't understand what Yi Chen was thanking him for, as he was only thinking about money. Yi Chen rolled his eyes, didn't explain, left Yang Datong alone, and left the gambling street. It's not that Yi Chen is heartless, but Yang Datong doesn't trust him. This is human nature, after all, compared to Jiang Gan Industrial, his strength may still be lacking compared to the Li group. The gap in strength cannot be filled with benefits, so Yi Chen doesn't blame Yang Datong. After all, Yang Datong had done his best, and tonight he also showed him a clear path. Just one thing. Since Jiang Gan Industrial's methods are so terrifying that they stared Yang Datong into cancelling the deal, is it possible that this path with Li Xiehong was also arranged by Jiang Gan Industrial? Yi Chen didn't dare to think further, it was like a dead end, the more he thought about it, the more wrong it felt. Back at Bianjian, Yi Chen contacted Zhang Guang immediately. Yang Datong probably contacted Zhang Guang, so before Yi Chen could speak, Zhang Guang said, Boss, Yang Datong just contacted me. Hmm. I know. Yi Chen seemed relatively indifferent and didn't ask. But Zhang Guang was working for Yi Chen, he couldn't neglect it, so he quickly explained, Yang Datong sent an address, saying that Mr. Li Xiehong will be waiting for us there. Seeing that Zhang Guang also referred to Li Xiehong as Mr., Zhang Guang curiously asked, How much do you know about this Li Xiehong? On the phone, Zhang Guang thought for a moment before saying, he is a highly respected person, some say he is the balance of the Zhang Hai Jade Association. Balance? Yes, the kind that can balance a bowl of water. Zhang Guang continued, actually, I don't know much about the Jade Association, it's all about rich people playing. It is said that every year there are hundreds of millions or even billions of auction items coming out, not just one, just the management fees alone, the Jade Association can make a lot of money. Spending tens of billions on a small item, Zhang Guang really couldn't afford that kind of scale. 
However, compared to that, the entry threshold for the Jade Association is really low, you can enter with a consumption of 5 million, and even like Yang Datong, do a favor, and get in directly. It seems that the Jade Association really accepts everyone, but after all, it is not a charity organization, and a small profit is still a profit. After understanding, Yi Chen hung up the phone. Before hanging up, Zhang Wang said he had contacted the owner of the new city district Volkswagen 4S store, and that person did have intentions to sell, Zhang Wang offered 45 million, and the owner was hesitant. Yi Chen couldn't come up with that much money now, so he asked Zhang Wang to wait a bit, so that the owner of the 4S store wouldn't raise the price, he didn't want to be taken advantage of. After hanging up the phone, Yi Chen looked at the hot search on Weibo again. To his surprise, the hot search was back up. Although the ranking was low, in the top 10 hot searches, the 6th and 9th positions were about the hot search for wave by wave. At the same time, in the hot search topics related to wave by wave, some people also found that Weibo had removed the hot search, and many people were criticizing the official behavior. Yi Chen was not in a hurry at all, he wouldn't look for someone to boost traffic, letting public opinion ferment was also a form of traffic. Suna naturally saw that Wave by Wave had returned to the hot search list and specifically sent a message to Yi Chen on WeChat to share the good news. She also took a few screenshots of user feedback, many people added Suna on WeChat, saying that although they had only used it for two days, they could clearly feel that their skin didn't feel heavy, it was light, better than the water and milk on the market. Why Yi Chen asked Suna how she felt about using it. Her skin was originally good, without many pimples, and she was at a youthful age. When Yi Chen asked, she said it felt okay, not burdensome, and felt natural on her face. It's obvious, considering the trial product only contains mineral water, glycerin, lemon juice, and the regenerative water from the treasure basin, without adding anything else. So Yi Chen also made a request to Wu Yowei's research and development team, that the Wave Essence 1.0 may not have an effect, but it must be natural, without adding various random things. Some may think that Yi Chen spending hundreds of millions to package Wu Youwei's research and development team is a waste of money. But each wave needs cover, any product launched for sale must withstand scrutiny, and this research and development team is his cover. In the end, this is a long-term investment, just not profitable at the moment. Yan Datong gave Zhang Wang's address at a tea house in Shangjie district. The next day, Yi Chen got up early and rushed over at the agreed time. Yi Chen hadn't seen Li Xie Hong for a while, after all, they only met once and had no emotional need to keep in touch, but he was truly grateful to Li Xie Hong. At Li Xie Hong's position and age, there was no need to be friendly to strangers. After a while, Li Xie Hong's spirit was still strong, with a healthy complexion, not at all like an old man with silver hair. Sir, sorry to keep you waiting. After arriving at the private room in the tea house, Yi Chen apologized first. No problem. Li Xiahan smiled and gestured for Yi Chen to sit. Yi Chen was not one to beat around the bush, especially in front of the experienced Li Xiahan, who was almost cunning at his age, so he got straight to the point. Sir, I heard from Yang Datong that you have a good channel. Li Xiahan also didn't beat around the bush and straightforwardly admitted. Datong was pressured by someone behind him, so he didn't dare to do business with you. This old man is curious. How did you attract Jiangon Industries? It seems that Jiangon Industries is no longer a secret. Yi Chen shrugged helplessly and said, Mr. Li, to be honest, I'm not sure why, but if I were in charge of Jiangon Industries, I would suppress myself too. Yi Chen didn't elaborate, he believed that Li Xiehong asked not because he really didn't understand, but to hear how he would respond. After all, in business, who doesn't understand the need to crush competitors from the start? Hearing Yi Chen's words, Li Xiehong nodded with a smile. Well, well, if you were to target yourself, let's get back to the point. If you want to buy a batch of goods from me, it's not impossible, but I have a request. When asking for a favor, there is always a price to pay. Although Yi Chen didn't come to ask for a favor from Li Xiehong, just to see if there was any way, Li Xiehong was much older, so making a request was not excessive. Yi Chen believed that Li Xiehong wouldn't take a huge profit margin like Yang Datong. So he nodded slightly. No problem, sir, go ahead. I know you withdrew the charges against the child from the Li family. If you can refrain from targeting the Li group in the future, then, you can take as much goods from me as you want. Li group? 
Sir, you. Yi Chen widened his eyes, looking at Li Xiehong in disbelief. He had never associated Li Xiehong with the Li group, especially since the father and son of the Li family were narrow-minded. Compared to the elderly Li Xiehong, the difference was not just a few dimensions. I'm ashamed to say, Li Zhangda is my brother's son. He came to me the other day, hoping I could help him out. I couldn't turn him down, and after some investigation, I found out that a lot has happened in Zhanghai recently, and the person at the center of these events is you. When Li Xiehong said these words, there was no emotion, as if he was reciting a book, even when his younger brother came to ask him for a favor, there was no emotion at all. Yi Chen was relieved that they were not related, otherwise he would have lost face. In fact, Yi Chen is a simple person, you treat me well, I will treat you even better, if you dare to scheme against me, you will never have a good life. Clearly, Li Xiehong had shown kindness to him before, while Li Xiaoqing had plotted against him. If it weren't for his luck, he would have died in that car accident long ago. Even if he had miraculously survived, without the rejuvenating water from the treasure basin, he would still be disabled. Yi Chen had no interest in the Li family's genealogy, he only knew that Li Xiehong was an old man he respected, and that was it. There could be another way out, but Yi Chen would seek revenge. Hatred could be set aside, but before that, he needed to make Li Xiaoqing pay a sufficient price. As the saying goes, if there are no difficulties, create them. Although Li Xiaoqing was the sole heir of the future Li group, he was still in his rebellious age, receiving hundreds of thousands of pocket money every month, living the life of a second-generation rich kid. Even if he were caught now, the fall wouldn't be too great. Or perhaps the fall wasn't significant enough to satisfy Yi Chen, which was why he withdrew the charges and had Li Zhengda transfer all the shares of the Li group to him. Yi Chen would raise him high, then wait for the right moment to bring him down to nothing, and finally send him to prison. If you were to ask why Yi Chen did this for just a Li Xiaoqing, was it really worth it? Clearly not, but also clearly yes. Firstly, Yi Chen would never forget what happened two years ago, it was a man's humiliation. But now, Li Xiaoqing had almost turned Yi Chen into a cripple, or even a dead man. This was no longer just about humiliation, it was about life. So, after Li Xiaoqing finished speaking, Yi Chen stood up decisively. Mr. Li, thank you for the tea. I'm afraid our deal. Yi Chen didn't finish his sentence, they were all adults and understood each other. Young Yi, don't be so quick to refuse this old man. You haven't heard my other conditions yet, how do you know you won't agree? Li Xiehong was indeed cunning, leaving room for negotiation in everything, even for himself. Yi Chen didn't sit down, just said lightly, I'm listening. My brother just wants to preserve the Li family's foundation. Give him a way out, and you can propose any other conditions. I, Li Xiehong, still have some say in Zhanghai. What did this mean? An empty promise? A. Favor in return? Yi Chen smiled helplessly and asked, Sir, do you think telling me this is useful? I dropped the charges against Li Xiaoqing and had Li Zhangda transfer the shares that was already giving him a way out. How he proceeds from here is up to him. I, Yi Chen, don't have the ability to compete with the wolves and tigers of Zhanghai, do I? No beating around the bush, don't even think about it. Li Xiehong's face darkened, no one had ever rejected him like this in Zhanghai. Thinking about this, Li Xiehong sighed. He didn't expect to end up on opposite sides. He looked at Yi Chen and slowly spoke, those goods of yours, are they clean? This was a blatant threat. Yi Chen had just been about to leave, but now he was stuck in his seat. As the saying goes, an old ginger is spicier. Leave room for both offense and defense. Sir, saying that isn't very meaningful. In the Jianghu, one must face danger. Revealing a small weakness was no big deal, especially when that weakness couldn't threaten Yi Chen at all. You have your schemes, and I have my smoke bombs. Why Yi Chen thought so, so he returned to his position and made Li Xiehong feel that he had already restrained himself. Yi kid, my judgment of people is never and to be honest, the whole precious metal matter was a blow to Li Xiehong's reputation. In Yi Chen's view, Li Xiehong didn't need to set this as a condition because currently, the biggest threat to the Li family group is not him, but the looming threat from the Bai family group, Zhanggan Industries, and a large group of real estate tycoons in Zhanghai City. 
they could easily drag the Li family group into a quagmire, burying them forever. Yi Chen was just stirring up trouble, and Liang Shouchuan was just a lever that Yi Chen happened to use, leading other forces to corner the Li family group. These forces quickly noticed him and either showed goodwill or exerted pressure. So today, Yi Chen felt like he had the upper hand, using Li Xiehan to solve the funding issue perfectly and through legitimate channels. Even if Wang Zhang wanted to investigate, he would have to think twice. Li Xiehan's overly friendly invitation to dinner felt like a trap to Yi Chen, giving him a bad feeling. The restaurant was carefully chosen, a private club-like establishment that seemed to only serve members. Although it didn't have any star ratings, compared to the Baiyunjian Grand Hotel, it was decent. As they sat down, only Yi Chen and Li Xiehong were present, and before the food arrived, Li Xiehong took the opportunity to say, Yi kid, let's wait a bit longer, someone else is coming. Yi Chen already felt something was off, knowing that Li Xiehong's invitation to dinner was likely for another purpose. Recalling the previous transaction where Li Xiehong requested leniency for the Li family group, Yi Chen stood up, indicating he was ready to leave. Hey, Yi kid, you. 281,563,495.35, exactly 281 million. This string of dazzling numbers made Yi Chen's originally sleepy eyes instantly alert. It was a beautiful day, and this money was not disgusting at all. In the past, let alone 100 million, even if someone gave Yi Chen 10,000, he felt he could live for a year. With 10,000 a year, over 800 a month, his old house only needed to pay for water and electricity, buying groceries and cooking daily didn't cost much, and he had more than enough with 800. Now he had over 2.81 billion. Blossom suddenly became a hot topic, sparking nationwide discussions. People were amazed by this crazy promotional behavior. How confident must one be to not only give away free trial samples and 1,000 yuan and back, just smile through the rearview mirror? We're going to get you a car. Get a car? Suna didn't react for a moment and quickly said, I don't need a car. The apartment is very close to where I work, just one subway stop away. Indeed, Suna's rented apartment was right below the subway station, and the next stop was the Pacific building. But Yi Chen just smiled and didn't say anything. Suna knew Yi Chen's temper and could only wait and see what her boss was up to. But when the car stopped at the Volkswagen 4S store in the new city district, Suna's expression changed. Why, why are we here? Didn't I say we're here to get you a car? Yi Chen turned his head, reached over, and opened the car door on Suna's right. Let's go, see what's new at Volkswagen. Since Yi Chen's car was parked right in front of the 4S store, everyone could recognize the Mercedes-Benz G-Class. The salespeople inside rushed over, knowing this was a big client. Suna followed behind Yi Chen, unsure whether to go in or not. This wasn't a good place. Suna had once doubted her own abilities, wondering why she was failing in her career. Even if she did well, she couldn't get her boss's appreciation, and her colleagues were excluding her. Can I not go in? Before she could finish her sentence, Suna saw that Yi Chen had already entered, so she had no choice but to follow suit. The first sales manager to greet them was Feng Jun, his face full of joy. But when he saw that it was Yi Chen, the joy froze. Oh! An old acquaintance. Yi Chen chuckled, as if he had completely forgotten how Feng Jun had mocked him before and treated Suna. Mr. Yi, hello! Feng Jun awkwardly greeted, and some of the other salespeople recognized Yi Chen as well, but they didn't approach, waiting to see Feng Jun's reaction. They knew Yi Chen's power. Without batting an eye, he could buy a car worth 1.5 million, making him a big client in their eyes. Yi Chen looked around and, as he learned more about the car models, he realized that this Volkswagen 4S store seemed relatively low-end, with no high-end models. The most expensive car was only 6 or 700,000, and the 1.5 million Bentley was their flagship model. However, this sense of inferiority was based on his current capital. Buying this store was just a small act of caprice. Yi Chen didn't expect to make money from it, as long as he didn't lose money, it was fine. So he was quite satisfied with his investment this time and said, I'm here to buy a car. You should give me a discount this time. Of course, Mr. Yi, you are our VIP customer. We will definitely. 
What are you doing here? Didn't the manager already fire you? Feng Jun's words suddenly changed tone halfway through, becoming stern, and his second half was directed at Suna standing behind Yi Chen. At this moment, Suna was a distance away from Yi Chen, not seeming to have come with him, and she was wearing an office lady uniform similar to the one at this 4S store. Yi Chen turned around and looked at Feng Jun, curiously asking, Oh? Isn't this the girl who sold me the car that day? What's going on with you guys? Listening to Yi Chen speak, Feng Jun also realized that he had just lost his temper, so he quickly bowed slightly and explained, Mr. Yi, you are not aware that some time ago, we had already dismissed her. She violated the rules here. Oh? Violated the rules, let me hear about it. What rules did she break that made me curious? Yi Chen said with a smile, but he didn't look like he was joking at all, putting Feng Jun in a difficult position. Well. Mr. Yi, why don't we take a look at the car first? You bought a Hui Tang last time, and this time you came in a G-Class AMG. Are you looking to change to a different level of car? Feng Jun skillfully shifted the topic, and Yi Chen smiled and followed his lead, saying, Oh, just buy a car for commuting, perfect for my employees to use for work. The boss personally choosing a car for the employees, what kind of treatment is this? Feng Jun's heart trembled a bit, but he still smiled and said he would introduce the cars to Yi Chen. At the same time, he called a security guard and pointed at Suna, saying, Go, kick her out. Don't delay our customers from viewing the cars. The security guards, fierce and evil looking, followed Feng Jun's orders, knowing that Su Na, who was fired a few days ago, was not a customer here to buy a car. Without any hesitation, they moved to drive Su Na away. Wait a minute. Just as Su Na was feeling embarrassed, Yi Chen stopped the security guards. You guys can go down first. Several big men being rough with a young girl, it would be embarrassing if it got out. Yi Chen looked at Feng Jun and didn't show any intention of looking at the cars now, bluntly asking, By the way, I'm just curious, what rule did she break here? Well, well. The reason that started it all was originally Feng Jun trying to threaten the store manager, so he hesitated for a long time and couldn't come up with a reason. Mr. Yi. Don't rush to call me Mr. Yi, first clarify the topic. What rule did this girl break here to get fired? At this point, Yi Chen's protection was already evident, and Feng Jun also realized that Su Na had come with Yi Chen. Can't say, right? Yi Chen smiled and suddenly raised his voice, because she doesn't fit in with your employee. Culture, is that it? Yi Chen's voice was so loud that it attracted the customers and other salespeople in the 4S store, who stood not far away, wanting to see what was happening. The 4S store was spacious, so it didn't feel awkward. At this moment, Feng Jun became the one feeling embarrassed, while Suna still kept her head down. She hadn't figured out Yi Chen's intentions yet. She understood that Yi Chen wanted to help her, but this was someone else's territory. If things escalated. Besides, Suna had heard that the owner of this store used to be someone influential in the industry. If. Just as Suna was worried that their situation today was unfavorable, Yi Chen suddenly got angry again. Can anyone explain to me what it means to not fit in with the employee culture of this store? Who can tell me what employee culture is? Feng Jun's face looked very unpleasant, so he had to say with a stiff face, Mr. Yi, this was the manager's decision at the time, saying that she didn't fit in with our environment. Didn't fit in? Yi Chen asked, I'm even more curious now, who exactly does she not fit in with? Is it you, Feng Jun? Yi Chen directly pointed the finger at Feng Jun, not mentioning anything about buying a car, which also angered Feng Jun. Last time, he threatened the store manager that if Su Na wasn't fired, he would leave, which gave him a taste of victory. Now he decided not to tolerate it anymore and withdrew the flattering expression. Mr. Yi, this is an internal matter for us. If you have any questions, please contact our manager. If you are not here to buy a car, please leave. With that, Feng Jun directly instructed the security guard, saying, Escort this gentleman out. I think he's here to cause trouble, and her, he he, a troublemaker. Who, who are you calling a troublemaker? Suna didn't expect Feng Jun to once again target her. Feng Jun sneered twice and then said, Of course I'm talking about you. Do you think being fired is bullying you? 
Have you ever thought about what you've done? What, what have I done? Explain it to me. Suna argued, even her face turning red with frustration. Despite her professionalism and eloquence, when faced with someone like Feng Jun, she could only back down. Feng Jun seemed pleased with himself. This was his territory, and he was convinced that Qi Qin wasn't here to buy a car but was just accompanying Su Na to vent her anger. Clearly, he wouldn't let Qi Qin's plan succeed. What else could it be? Don't you have any sense? The rules in the store clearly state that employees are not allowed to have relationships with customers. And you? Thinking that by getting close to a big boss, we would be afraid of you? Feng Jun glanced at Yi Chen and his eyes were full of disdain, thinking, even if you're rich, so what? This is my place. He must be that big boss, right? Ah, your taste is really bad. Instead of finding someone wealthy, you think causing trouble will make you feel better? Ha, if he's so rich, why doesn't he arrange a job for you? It's really laughable. You, you're talking nonsense. Su Na was furious. She didn't expect Feng Jun to be so insulting. Yi Chen, on the other hand, remained calm. He stood by the front desk, watching Feng Jun's performance, almost laughing out loud. But it had to be said that Feng Jun had indeed stirred up public opinion on the scene. The onlookers and salespeople who didn't understand the situation started gossiping, pointing fingers at Su Na. Had enough? Yi Chen looked at Feng Jun with a playful expression, leaning against the front desk. Have you said enough? Both of you need to leave. This store doesn't welcome people like you, a pair of scoundrels. Feng Jun became more and more enthusiastic as he spoke, ordering the security guard to escort the two out. At this moment, the store manager of the forest shop finally arrived, somewhat belatedly. After learning about the situation, he glared at Feng Jun with disdain. This guy relied on being the sales champion in the store and always used it as leverage, but for the sake of performance, he had no choice but to fire Su Na. He was also familiar with Yi Chen's face. Wasn't he the boss who came last time to buy that 1.5 million black Bentley? So he couldn't afford to be negligent and stepped forward to mediate. Mr. Yi, let me explain. Su Na has already been fired by me. If you're here to buy a car, we welcome you anytime. But the current situation is a bit messy and inappropriate. A bit inappropriate? Yi Chen smiled. What's inappropriate? Why don't you, as the manager, explain to me what not in line with the culture of our store employees means? With that, Yi Chen picked up a promotional booklet he had been playing with on the front desk and threw it directly at the store manager's face. Why don't I see anything about employee culture in this? The booklet hit the manager's face, and he was also angered. Feng Jun was the first to rush forward, pointing at Yi Chen. Okay, don't go, I'll call the police right now. How dare you hit someone? 